and stop asking for relationship advice from lonely, unhappy, dissatisfied, miserable black women. Why are sisters getting relationship advice from lonely ass black women? Okay, my brother? Black men go through a lot. We go through a lot. I empathize with my brothers. So I'm not, you know, uh, being accusatory here. I'm not degrading you. I am, black men have it hard. We have it hard. We're the only men in America whose women do not have to respect them. We're the only men in, the, in, in, in America whose women out-earn them. We're the only men in America whose women out-educate them. We're the only men in, in, in America whose women collectively have more wealth and capital than we do. We're the only men in America who are not allowed to be men. Hey, listen, no one stops you from being a man. Umar, you don't even have a job. So any woman that you're dealing with, including the one that ran up on you on that stage, she's making more money. She's out earning you. Oh, yes, I have the receipt. We're not going to get into it with the woman that ran up onto the stage. But Umar, you talking about how we have it hard as black men. Womp, womp, as my kids say, womp, 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 womp. We have it so bad, and the women, the black women, don't disrespect us. They out earn us. You ain't even got a job. What are you talking about, Tommy? We ain't gonna get into the woman that ran up on you, though. <laughs> we not gonna get into that tonight. Let's, go. you know what? Um, let's just go to the intro. All right, all right, everyone. Quick press that. Thank y'all so much for tuning on in. I, I'm feeling a little under the weather, and I, I, I made a promise we we're gonna get together for the five-year anniversary. That was yesterday. So we're gonna get it. Let's go. FD MG is coming. FD MG is coming. FD MG is coming. It's coming. FD MG is coming. It's coming, FDMG, it's coming, 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 it's coming. MG is coming, thought his personality be twerking, it's twerking. Mm. All right, y'all, thank y'all so much for tuning on in. Everyone in the Cookie Crush chat, you guys are undefeated. We got a little different setup here today because uh, um, this is probably going to be a, a longer live stream. So I've set up inside of the our little cubby. Me and my wife's our little cubby. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> that way, that way the, the family they can hang out downstairs and have a good old time with the food and the TV and all that other stuff. Okay. Uh, thank you all so much for tuning on in. Cook Chat. Like as I said, it said in the oh, uh, uh thank you, whole Southern Cooks, for tuning on. Everyone else, too, thank you for being here. I'll give some more shout-outs a little bit later on. What's up, brother Jose's in the building? <laughs> good to see you. Uh, Jesus Price is in the building and Kim, Kim, thank you so much. There is a poll up right now. Uh, how's it going, Maya and uh, Dr. J. Kelly and, and everyone else? I'll, I'll give some more shouts a little bit later on. Uh, Antonio Barnes in the building. What's up, man? So you have the review. Uh, you have to review uh, that video Lennon of uh, Jermaine Shoemaker extraterrestrial when he was eight. Yeah, everyone's been talking about it. People send me a uh, cash app to cover. I'll cover it. We ain't going to get into that today, though, because we got to stay on task here. We'll probably do a separate show. I'll probably do a, uh, a member video to talk about it. And then at some point, I'll do a separate show where we get together, uh, everyone uh, everyone all together. Um, hope you're doing all right, Antonio. Good to have you here because it, it is the five-year anniversary. Can you believe this? Five years. I was going to say something else, but I, I've been feeling under the weather. I wanted to live stream yesterday, but I, I just, and I wanted to do it on Monday too. I just couldn't do it. And, and even right now, I probably shouldn't be, but I made a promise that I'm here and we're going to get through this. We got a lot to get through. Okay. So that's why I want to thank you, Antonio, because Antonio, he knows the history. Um, there are people who, uh, don't know much about the, the Umar Johnson school scam. 
There are people who don't know anything about it. There are people who know a little bit about it. There's people who know a lot about it. There's also people who have researched extensively and they know the whole history, like they're experts. And Antonio is one of those people. It's, it's about a handful of us uh, that really know the history. And what I've been outlining over the last couple of weeks, maybe last three weeks or so, is just everything building up to um, the anniversary, which is today. Interesting enough, Umar is not up there on the anniversary. You would think that he would be up there after five years teaching some classes. That's a long time. Can you all believe this cookie crush hat? Five years have passed since simply since he purchased these trap bandos. I put a receipt up there uh, yesterday to show, and I'll show it again during this live stream. I accidentally deleted it. I messed up. I was trying to post something under there, and then I posted this link to this show so that people could come over to this show. And then I went back and clicked to delete that to go put something. I didn't delete the whole thing. But I'll show that receipt again uh, uh, for everyone. Uh, and I was the first person to release that particular receipt to share with everyone. Um, and I remember it like it was five years ago. <laughs> Antonio remembers it, too, like it was five years ago. OK, thank you for being Antonio. Uh, anybody else remember that? He he made he did the school announcement. I think that was on the ninth, though, when he did the school announcement, if my memory serves me right. But it may have been the seven. But he's actually signed the paperwork on the sixth, which was yesterday. OK. And I have that receipt. I'll, I'll show it to you all in, in just a minute. But uh, here we are five years later and there's still no school. Literally, there's no functional school. That's a long time. That's what I've been telling people. It's a long con. If you think about it, that's a half a decade. That's a long time. There's a lot that can take place in a half a decade. And then we can go back to 2010 when Umar said that the school was going to open in 2013. Well, that's over 14 years ago. OK, so this has been going on for such a very long time. And here we are five years later. And yeah, it, it's been five years, you know, and it's gone by just like that. You know, it's gone by just like that. Uh, Aisha says Athens will officially land on Earth before. But <laughs> so, well, that's going to take a long time anyway, too. That's going to take a long time. Uh, there are people who still believe that this uh, school is going to open. There are people who still believe it. In fact, Umar posted on his Instagram page, and I have a screenshot of it. Do I have it here? Here, here is the, uh, the th and thanks, Aisha uh, Beans, for the super chat. Here is the thumbnail for this, this live stream right here. Five years later, FDMG is still not open. And, and you look at the condition of these abandoned buildings five years. I'm getting ahead of myself. I, I talked about this. Uh, this is uh, Umar posted this on his Facebook page. Let, also, anyway, let me know uh, how is the audio and the video quality because it's showing that that it's, it's uh, I can actually look. Oh no, it looks fine. Uh, prom, this is from Umar Dula's, uh Facebook page, January 6, thousand ten. Promises in two thousand ten to begin laying the groundwork for the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Pan African School for Black Boys, specializing in learning disabilities and disruptive behavior disorders. I'm gonna have to go give me some tea in a minute. Y'all just hold on. Uh, let, let me get through this. Uh, this will be a private school. And yes, you will pay in order for your son to attend. The grand opening was set for September 11th, 2013. OK, so this has been going on for such a long time. I also brought people up to speed with uh, the uh, St. Paul school scam. OK, that was in 2014 where he started collecting donations specifically for the St. Paul school scam. Uh, nothing ever came out of that. What he ended up doing is he finagled that into the Wilmington school scam. He he ran the, the St. Paul school scam for maybe about two years and 10 months, something like that. Uh, he set up a GoFundMe, collected. He raised well over four hundred thousand dollars, which was then four hundred thousand dollars was the purchase price for these properties, too, by the way. Um, he also had collected a, at least one hundred and I think he said one hundred twenty five thousand dollars just on, on PayPal. Uh, at that time, he had collected well over a million dollars. And here we are all these years later. And uh, he still hasn't uh, opened up a school. But the point is that he finagled this school scam into the Wilmington school scam. He spent about maybe three years wandering around the country looking for a new building. And he would I already explain this. I want to get to go check out the archive uh, when you get a minute. Uh, in fact, here is a receipt right here from the Dr. Umar's FDMG RBG International Academy. The name has changed over the years, too. At this point, he had raised four hundred thousand. $130. The goal was $4 million. He started off with the goal of $2 million, but then when the money started coming in, he changed it up to $4 million. Uh, this got up to in and around $412,000, $414,000. Okay, that's the purchase price was $400,000. Where, where's the rest of the money at? Okay, I'm just going to go through this real quick. I'm not going to rehash everything because I've been uh, trying to build up to today. I want to show you all something too, by the way. Here is, here is a picture, a screenshot of Umar when he did the school promo video in 2019. It was actually recorded in uh, October or yeah, October of 2018. 
Okay, and 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 we won't, probably won't be able to get to this video today. We'll probably get to this video tomorrow. Okay, because I want to do back to back Memphis. I want to get to the main video today, which is the uh, school announcement video. But I want, want y'all to look at this right here, 2019, and then I want to show you a picture from 2023. You see this? I believe this is from October. This is from um, uh, Reverend Jerry Juice. It's a screenshot when he went up there. Look at this, 2019, 2023. I'm going to do it one more time, one more again. 2019, he purchased it, 2023. And he's still collecting money for the school that does not exist. Yeah, let's let's be real about it. It looks worse. <laughs> That's y'all principle. Again, I, I, I'm just showing it to you. I, I'm not saying one way or the other. Y'all look at it yourself and y'all tell me. Okay, y'all just y'all go ahead and tell me. <laughs> the, the poll, yeah, there is a poll for when this this trap's going app open up again. If it looked like this in 2019 and it looked like this in 2023, when do we expect this thing to open? <laughs> This thing ain't gonna open, it's gonna fall down. <laughs> I don't know, Whitty. This guy, he, he's he's out, he's so out there. How's it going, Aki? Hey, what's up, Naeem? It's 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 sad. It done turned into a trap. <laughs> it sure do. I don't mean to laugh, but come on. The receipt is the receipt. Let me go one more time. 2019. Okay, that's when he purchased it. He has that video he had on the penguin suit. All right, in 2023. This is and this is at the end of 2023. All right, yeah, yeah, 2019, a little mold, 2013, a lot more mold. <laughs> he don't even care though, he don't care. It's still boarded up too, anyway. Okay, let me get to some of, some of these super chats. Thanks again, Aisha, for the super chat. I appreciate it. What's up, Black Wolf? How you doing? It says five years, no black boys, bike club, no black boys, soccer team. No black boy basketball team, no gun club, not even brand new paint for the abandoned buildings. And th these are all statements of facts. Facts. I'm losing my voice already. Five years, and he hasn't done anything up there for the community. He threw two parties. And really, that was for his show because he wanted to do a, a the... Uh, the fake uh, marriage ceremonies. That's really what that was all about. It's just get people there so he can act like he's, you know, losing the progress, the illusion of progress. But then he wanted people to be there, even though most people left by that time, so they could see that fake wedding with them women who had on them dollar store dresses, drapes. Y'all remember that? <laughs> In five years, it's been sus. It's been so much mess. The, I was thinking about the blueprints. Then he got into that one room. He had the white, the white uh, locksmith come and open it up. You know, then the HVAC saga, it just goes on and on and on. Anyway, um, no uh, black boys uh, bike club, no black boys soccer team. And that's not difficult to organize. There, There is a YMCA right next door. He could have organized with that. He's raised millions of dollars, $400,000 to purchase the property. Where's the rest of the money? I mean, he's put things in here, there, there. But I mean, come on, he should, he should be sitting on uh, at least a million dollars, at least. But he can't find the means. And here's the other thing I want to mention. It's the it's the five year anniversary, but he's nowhere to be found up there. He's all over the place. In fact, he hasn't live streamed up there in over six weeks. Somebody make that make sense. Going into the five year anniversary, Umar has not live streamed up there in six. It's over six weeks in over six weeks. But, you know, I have receipts that show that he has this pattern that in and around the anniversary, he's nowhere to be found with the exception of one year. But over the five years, he's over, he's around traveling. That's why that's what he's doing right now, because he tries to get out of the cold up there in Wilmington and Philadelphia. I've already told people. And right now is the time he tries to get as many speaking engagements. It's not about opening up a school. It's basically a vacation time because he doesn't have, doesn't have to deal with the cold. There's still no HVAC unit up there. Right. So he can't sleep in there. It's too cold. So what does he do? He, he begs people profusely. Then he's traveling here and there, here and everywhere during this time. We're getting into February. It starts to get really, really cold, starts snowing a whole lot. Well, it's also Black History Month, so it's a perfect it's a per perfect scheme for him. At some point, he's going to return back to the trap bandos, but right now is not the time.
no gun club not not even brand new paint on the battle i want to say one other thing too black because someone had mentioned this they saw the video where we talked about paint day and they said well if they're not using professional painters how are they going to get the top of the building well they never finished he had random people well it's not random it's his loyal donors come out there to paint they pay him to paint i saw one person painting horizontally like this going up the wall i said okay they never finished painting those buildings five years later thanks black wolf for a super chat uh oh reverend jerry juice no he did a video I'm, i should show it i'll probably show a little bit later on brian yeah uh you, you might have missed those uh, we did a couple of episodes to talk about that but he lives out there and he went up there and he took video of the condition this was i think it was in october no 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 it wasn't in october november it might have been in december yeah i think it was in december i, I can pull it up but anyway he he actually showed what it looked like and umar talking about renovations were done it looks horrible up there yeah, I wonder what it looks like now. You know, who knows? Uh, thanks, Brian Tisdale, uh, for the, the super chat. Uh, Sigmund says, uh, the black mold has gone, has done growth. It sure has. It's all over the place. And not just that side of the street, but also on the other side. This The, the picture that I showed, this is actually, I, yeah, this is the larger building. Okay, he hasn't even been in there in over four years live streaming, so I don't know what's going on in there. He's completely abandoned this abandoned building. But if you go back to 2019 and look what it looked like, it's not bad. You know, and then look at it uh, in 2023, uh, uh, the end of 2023. Look at this. The black mold has grown. And it's all look, it's all over the, the steps. It's all over the sidewalk, all over the place. The boards, everything. Everything is, is, is back boarded up, too, by the way. People got excited when he took some wind, some boards off, but then he put them back on. Why? Because it's Leo season. <laughs> OK, all right. Thanks, Simon, for the super chat. Kimmy, uh, Kimmy Kim says that was uh, most ratchet dollar. Tr I know it, it really was. And, and one, the second year, the young lady that was standing next, you can tell she didn't want to be there. She looked so uncomfortable. It's just it, it was a tra it was such a travesty. It really was. And then they had little children. I think for the first one, I, yeah, the first one at least, they had children standing there too. I said this is ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. But I guess that he he want to. We want to play little games. And that's really what it is with, with this guy. It's just playing games. Everything is just playing games. You know, he's played, he's played games with people. You Umar Johnson follows who support him on the school scam now for 14 years. But since he purchased these trap banners, he's been playing games with y'all now for five years. Five years later, and, and it ain't even close. It's not even close to be opening up a school. Not even close. Thanks, Kimmy Kim, for the super chat. Okay, we got a lot to get into uh, today. What's up, Vince? Hope you're doing all right uh, today. The dads and globe trotters in, in the building. What's up, Black Lily? Uh, Mother Nature. Yeah, I know. There's about to be some animals that are going to be living in here and everything. This is what just wait. Okay, let me uh let's get going here because there's quite a few things that I want to get to. Uh, let me just show this. This is what Umar posted on his uh Instagram page today. It says, Happy fifth year anniversary, process almost complete. That means absolutely nothing. Because I just showed you a picture of what it looked like up there. Look at it. You see this? You see, Dr. Umar, uh, Dr. Umar's school for for boys, okay, HMG Reaf, uh, HMG Reafricanization Academy, Marcus Gar, oh, Honorable Marcus Garvey Reafrican Reafricanization Academy, Intellectual Insurrection, uh, begins September third. Now it's September third, twenty twenty four. That's when the school gonna open. That, that's what that's what's gonna happen okay but if you look at this picture right here they got the filter on it they got the windows on boarded on this side but that's not what these traps look like <laughs> do i need to pull up the jerry juice video hold on one second let me see if i could find it i have it right here but let me see if i can find it this is from uh october 24th 2023 Remind you, Umar haven't even been up there live streaming. And, and, and there's that video right there. That one ran up on Umar. Most of y'all ain't seen it. Hit the one if you've seen it. Hit the two if you ain't seen it. Uh, HMG is the Honorable Marcus Garvey. I'm, I'm going to assume that 70, but I don't know for sure. <laughs> okay, but we're going to go with that. All right. Let's go and take a look at this real quick. So we're here at FDMG. Can y'all hear this Today audio? is Tuesday, October the 24th. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see how the sidewalk all yellow? Because they, they try to make because the, the paint job is bad. They got to turn that yellow up so it looks like it's painted. <laughs> the grass look green. It's not. <laughs> the trees look cut. They're not. You know what I'm saying? 
The mold is, is is on the on the steps. That's real. That's, <laughs> let me stop. Here we go. Umar stated that the school was renovated and completed. You I'm on foot, it, huh? as you can see. I'm in the, I might show I'm it in the hood. I should know. It has not been renovated. I'm gonna get up here and give you all a tour. Watch the step of FDMG. Ain't no telling what kind of creatures are lurking. I'm giving you guys a tour. This is the back of FDMG, right? The school look renovated to you? Yeah, it is. He Nothing still lies about, about his to this day. He just keeps lying. All he this do is, is the, lie. This is what your kid's going to have behind. Boy, this... Man, I, I, did, I forgot. I don't think we saw this part because we didn't pause it, but it don't look good. Yeah. Is that a Keebler elf over there? What? In the back of them, it's all projects and hood. Look at the back of this, it smells like shit back here. The school has not been renovated. I don't, I don't the understand how it's not been lot. renovated. Oh, there's no way that any, any company is going to insure this. There's no way. The school has not been renovated. Yeah, it sound like he walking through the forest. Look at this shit. <laughs> Boy, this is... He so do. He claims <laughs> that he's renovated this school. This feels from, from the end of October. Again, today is October the 24th. <laughs> That's 2023. October 24th of 2023. Hopefully these dogs don't bite, get out and bite someone's kids. You hear the dogs panting? There's some big dogs, too, I can tell you. <laughs> you can hear them over there. But, uh... All right, so... Let me, uh... All right, let me skip through, because I want to get door. going here. You said the sprinkler system was taken care of, right? That's what... I don't know if you can see it. Spider webs in those windows. Those are the same windows that was here when it was Maurice Moyer Academy. Crack kids getting in there, look like. Same shit, it's all boarded up. He's done nothing. Look at the doors, everything's boarded up. The mailbox isn't even fucking, a yeah, new mailbox mold, is not even on there. Mold all on the, the numbers wood. up there are not even changed. The same numbers. Nothing has changed. And you go on that side of the street, the school's fucked. Now you let Umar tell it, it looked like this. You see the game? He just showed this building just now. He just showed it. But you let Umar tell it today. This is Umar from like 10 hours ago. You let Umar tell it, it looked like this. The process is almost complete. This, 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 it's not, this is an older picture too, but he tried to get that Photoshop going on. This is what it looked like too uh, before uh, uh, Umar purchased it. This is this is what it looked like now. Let's go back to this video. Look, school's fucked over there. Look at that. You want your kids coming out seeing this? This is fucking trash. Yeah, it do look pretty bad. It's this a is warm. all the trash. So we walk on the other side of the street. It's dirty school, man. He hasn't done anything out here. Look yeah, at this shit. Dang, it Still got mess messed up, all man. About the Beer cans out here, more trash, more debris. He doesn't have the money to do it. He doesn't have the know-how to do it. And he doesn't accept the help to get this done. Yeah, but the thing, too, is that he's not even up there. He's traveling all over the place, even back then. Everything's still the same. More your academy. But he hasn't done anything. Just have not been furniture ever. Let me just go enough. back and show you all this real quick. Get in. See, this is my hood. I'm not worried about him. Hey, this is the same um, image that is it's from the same building as this one right here. We want to try to make it look like it's all, all gravy. Well, I tell you. Okay, we need to get going here. Okay, we're already 24 minutes in. Uh, again, everyone, thank you so much for being here. Everyone, the Cook Crush Chat. We got 550 people here already. Uh, it's going to be a longer show. We got quite a bit to get to. There's a couple of things I want to show you all, though, before we get uh, really rolling here with the 
the first video and really it'd be uh, the main video that we get to uh, today. There's a couple of things I want to uh, show you all real quick, just because it's the five year anniversary. Let me just pull up a couple of receipts. Uh, this was from January 28, 2019. And Umar was asking people, if you donated to GoFundMe to gather up your credit card and GoFundMe receipts, as you will be asked to email them, you're going to send him your credit card information. He says, you're going to email them to a particular address in order that we can, who's writing this? In order that we can give you proper credit for your donations at the special donors reception, we will be hosting to don to honor all of those who helped us raise funds. Isn't this a run on sentence? Funds for the FMG East Coast Mother Campus. <laughs> I forgot about that one. <laughs> you said the East Coast Mother Campus family. <laughs> you will be provided with the email address after the Honorable Frederick Douglass 201st Earth Day. I say Earth announcement on February 14, 2019. <laughs> this guy don't stop. He don't stop. Then for the PayPal, it says those who donate in 2014 to the FDMG fundraiser via PayPal should also gather their receipts so they can be emailed. Who's writing this? So that so so that they can be emailed and in for proper credit at the appropriate time. <laughs> we appreciate your sacrifice and want to honor you properly. He ain't honored not one of y'all. He ain't honored not one of y'all this month. There was a time where he was talking about, uh, he, you know, the shoes. <laughs> Don't ask me why. This is from, I know this, I'm being a little petty. This is from August of 2018. There, here's from Frederick Douglass, Marcus Garvey, Leadership Academy, Vans. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Where, I don't know what. I don't know what this one is supposed to be exactly. But we're not going to get it right now. We're not going to get into that right now. Moving right along, of course, you can also pre order your Dr. Umar Prince Ifa Day comic book character for only $15. Not $14.99, but $15. And if that's not enough, get your fresh and if you're fresh and fit and, and very classy Dr. Ubar Johnson FMG pillows. Okay. You can get your pillow today. Okay. Here you go. <laughs> they just sitting on the floor. And here, here, make sure you get this one. Okay. Because this is the FDMG pillow. Okay. You get this one for sure. He was trying to sell these pillows so bad. You know it's bad when you're out there selling pillows. It says, uh, order now. Become a part of the Prince of Pan-Africanism legacy by purchasing your every your very own custom handmade limited collector's edition Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey RBG International Leadership Academy pillow. This large, red, black, and green, beautiful tri-colored plush pillow is soft enough to rest your head upon but so beautiful that you may much rather use it as an eye-catching decorative piece in your professional office, study, or guest room. <laughs> in, in the spring of 2014, Black America's number one school psychologist began raising money for, the, for America's first independent academy for Black boys based upon, oops, I'm sorry, <laughs> based upon the principles of revolutionary Pan-Africanism, nationalism, West African spirituality, international economics, and unapologetically African alpha manhood. It's been three long years of struggle and sabotage, triumph and tragedy, victory and controversy as Dr. Umar marches even closer to re reach realizing his dreams. A real school for young black men to be erected without a single penny from the U.S. government or outside cultures. Become a part of the journey and show your support for the most relevant young black scholar in America today by purchasing this collector's item. A portion of these proceeds will be used to finance Dr. Umar's. What does this say? I can't even see it over here because the thing's in the way. Let me look on my uh, let me look on the screen for my TV. Hold on one second. Because I can't see it because it's this interface is, is in the way. It says, uh, become a part of the journey and show your support for the most relevant young black scholar in America today by purchasing this collector's item. A portion of these proceeds will be used to finance Dr. Umar's travel expenses as he journeys the East Coast and Midwest looking for the very first of many soon to come FDMG academies. You see, I talked about this before. 
So people were donating so that he can find a building at this time. This is before he purchased the building in, in uh, 2019, right? So he was he was doing this for about two and a half, three years, or he was you know traveling all over the place talking about he's looking for a school. Uh, and then finally he lands on oh, and, and real quick, I I said this earlier. Here it is right here. It says uh, get your FMG pillow today, 2017. And uh, does anyone see anything a problem there? Does anyone here see a problem there? Let me know in the chat room. You may not. You may. All right. If you look at one of the, the pillows, it says FDMG. The other one says FMDG. All right. Go ahead and get your purchase yours today, John. <laughs> I just wanted to go down memory lane because these, these are the types of things. And there's so many. I was going to tell you. There's so many other examples of just crazy fools. Eric, thanks so much for tuning on in. Carol, thank you so much. Nigel, uh, photographer, thank you so much for tuning on in. And Ollie's in the building as well. Thank you so much, everybody. What's up, uh, Sporty D? Y'all know that spelling is all over the place. It's all over the <laughs> the Sanford and Son. No, no, no. He was he was Sanford. He was going somewhere. I don't know. Sanford, Florida. Isn't it Sanford, Florida or something like that? It's probably Memphis. Memphis back to back. Uh, I want to just two more. OK, I'm not trying to be too petty, but I just just want to pull up a couple more more receipts right here. It says unapologetically African Nike sold 30 billion dollars worth of sneakers in 2015. 100 million goes to uh, Michael Jordan himself. African-Americans are the leading global purchasers of the Air Jordan sneaker. What is I don't even know if that's true. I don't even know if that's true. Um, uh, global purchase of, of the Air Jordan sneaker. What is Nike and and. Uh, Mike doing for black folk in exchange for their loyalty? Okay, well, well get, watch this though. Umar has some Air Jordans, and this is what he posted on his, and they all beat up. This is what he posted on his Instagram page. Says the only pair of Jordans Dr. Umar ever bought. Grabbed them at Sneaker Villa, Germantown, in Erie when they first came out around 2000, 2001. Only wore them once or twice. You a lie. Look at these. Got this. Uh, come on now. These things are all beat up. You look at the the where it's about the top shoe, they where it's black in the middle of it, and towards the bottom, it's all ripped up right there. You see the white right there. What you talk, he lies all the time. Why you gotta lie about everything? You gotta lie about how these shoes, these shoes been worn and all worn down. Look at them. Can you believe this guy? I, I'm just realizing that he he said that I only wore them once or twice. <laughs> you such this guy's a hashtag lie. Okay, this guy be lying so much, a total waste of money. Been sitting in the closet for over 15 years. <laughs> All right. I can't talk because I got some old shoes. I ain't got no shoes, no 15 year old. I only got three pair anyway. I got to well, my work shoes. I got my, my dress shoes. And then I got me some uh, uh, shoes that I, I, I wear out. They're, they're uh, anyway, they old. Uh, a total waste of money. Been sitting in the closet for over 15 years. I think I will barter off. I, I think I will barter off in Ghana for a few dashikis. So you're going to take these raggedy old shoes that you claim you only wore once or twice. They're 15 years old, looking straight, broke down and funky. And you're going to take them over to Ghana because you're a Pan-Africanist and you're going to sell them to the Africans so that you can get some dashikis. You're going to exploit them people over in Africa like that. You, you ain't got no shame. No shame whatsoever. OK, I just want to show that just to kind of get things revved up for today. All right. OK, so. Let's get to it. We're at the 30 minute mark. We're doing good on time. We got 600 people already. If you all hit the like button, I appreciate it. Let me just check see if I got any uh, other super chats. Uh, thanks again, uh, Sigmund, for super chat. Kimmy, Kimmy, uh, Kimmy, Kim. Thank you so much. Brian says, Cousin Cletus wrote that. Mitch, somebody wrote it. it it's a, it, it amazes me the types of stuff that he writes. It's like if, uh, you got a PhD, that's a PsyD, but you got a PhD. You've been, he had to have been in school for at least 12 years. At least because he just to get the first degree, which is a double major, he said it took him five, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Yeah, it's probably about 11 or 12 years. And yet when he writes and when he talks too, sometimes, you know, and we can all talk like that. When we need to, you know, and I can talk, you know, and articulate and, and all that kind of stuff, too. But there's times where he says things that it's like, what is that? Fifth graders, your grammar. What were you talking about? Uh, it had to be cousin, cousin Cletus. Thanks, thanks, Brian, for the super chat. Sigma says, uh, I want those. Van which ones? Which ones did you want, uh, Sigma? Because I'll order you a pair. <laughs> you can get two for 99. Let me know which one you want. <laughs> you want this one? Which one? You want this one? 
you, if, 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 if we need to do a poll. You want this one? <laughs> I know the Queens, they want this one. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being petty. Let me stop. Let me let me not do that. Okay. All right. <laughs> His quality control on those pillars. Yeah, I know. And I have a picture of him. I, I kid you not. I kid you not. And I could pull it up. I would have to find it. I ain't gonna find it. I could it'd take me a while. Uh, plus my other hard drive is downstairs, making excuses like Umar. Uh, my external hard drive with most of my stuff is on. I forgot to bring it up. I kid you not. There is a picture of Umar. He's in a parking lot selling these. <laughs> Selling these, selling these pillows. Hit the one. If anyone's ever seen that picture, I've shown it. It was years ago, but Umar is literally in a parking lot, and he's holding, he's holding, it's like one, he's holding one, I think, like this, and, and some more inside of a plastic bag. <laughs> I ain't making it up. I can pull it up, but I'll just let y'all co-sign on it because I that way people don't think if they see this for the first time, they'd be like, he's lying. No, I never lie on this guy. I never have. It's just not the <laughs> I don't know if it was the Walmart box. <laughs> see where you want the first one? Let me go see which one was that. I don't mean to be petty, but let me go see which one was out. This one. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, am I being too petty? Let me stop. <laughs> Let me stop. I was supposed to have a real, uh, not a short show, but a real serious show. Okay. So let me, let me get free focus here. Uh, let's thanks for holding hunchback. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> thanks for the super chat though. Let's, let's be nice. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's get going here. <laughs> What did you say? He got a hunchback rat. That's not nice. It's funny, but it's not nice. Okay, <laughs> where are we at? What are we doing? I'm already, I'm already got blown off. Okay, so as most of you guys know, we are at the five year anniversary. Time has gone by so quickly, and uh, I know I haven't been as consistent as I have been in the past with live streaming and stuff. But the truth still remains that there is st there is no school. And for you, Umar Johnson followers who support the school thing, you, you really got to become clear about this, that it's nothing more than a scam. It's called a long con. It's been going on for 14 years. And you can make as many excuses as you want to for why Umar hasn't opened up a school up to this point. But at some point, you're going to have to come to the reality of the situation. The reality of the situation, he has no intention of opening up a school. The longer he allows us to go, the more money he receives. And this is his main source of income. Now, people will, will probably ask, well, and I explain this for members. I'll just do it real, very briefly. Well, why is it that he hasn't, if this is his main source of income, wouldn't he be up there promoting it, and especially on the five-year anniversary to get people to send more money? Yeah, he should be. But right now, he's away. It's basically vacation time. Every single year he does this. And if you really think about it, it's, it's probably about a two and a half, no, about a two month to two and a half period where you rarely see him up there because it gets too cold, maybe even almost three months. And so that's where he's trying to go down south to stay warm. But my point is that if he was serious about opening up a school, he wouldn't do that. He would be up there every single day like a real man would using the money that he, is, he has received to open up this school. And it would have taken place already. You can't say that he didn't have the money because he's collected well over two point five million dollars by now. The purchase price for these trap banners was four hundred thousand dollars. Now, I know on the receipt that I showed, and you know what? I don't even think I have the receipt inside this slideshow. I meant to put it in here. I think I forgot to put it in here. I can always pull it up at a later time. But I showed um, the paperwork uh, that shows uh, the, it's basically, it's it's like a deed, but it's like a, really what is, it's, it's, I think it's called a transfer deed. It says $10 on there. And there was a lot. And I remember when I first revealed that we were jumping on this whole thing would only cost $10, but no, that's not what it was. What it is, is that's more like a deposit. Like it's, it's like in good faith. And then you end up paying the total amount. The total amount on my records, as I indicated inside my the documentary dealing with this topic was $400,000. Well, guess what? He raised over $400,000 on GoFundMe alone. Okay. This got up to like four hundred and. dollars Twelve, four hundred fourteen, four hundred sixteen thousand dollars, somewhere around there. It might have been four hundred twenty thousand. I can't remember exactly right now. So after this, I mean, he's been collecting money now, uh, just specifically for St. Paul school scam, going into the Wilmington school scam. That's a decade now. Well, this was just over a three-year period, and that's just on on GoFundMe. 
See, he's collected well over $2.5 million. So if the purchase price is $400,000, you can't say that $2 million that just he spent it on uh, renovations because we've already looked at what the, the trap looks like. No. See, so I'm going to go back to the question because it's it's it makes sense for someone to ask if you're Omar supporter. Well, if he was if it was a long con, he would be up there every single day, especially right now. And he would be asked for money because it's an anniversary. Well, there's two things. Number one, he doesn't want to go up there right now because it is the five year anniversary. And then it would become even clearer how much progress has not taken place. It's going to look it's going to reflect poorly on him. In fact, I have videos. We're going to do this next. Just to put it all into perspective. But here's the other thing. And this is the main point. See, Umar has come up on a windfall. I explain this in, in great detail for members. Okay, if you're not a member, you can become a joining member. I'll, I'll be doing a video to talk about Umar's alien uh, talk. I will end up covering that at some point uh, uh, live. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about leaving my stuff up here because that way I can live stream whenever I want to. I was going to get a laptop that way I can leave this the, the, the tabletop down there so my son, he'd be working on music and stuff. Uh, my youngest son. All of them do, but my youngest son, he'd be, he be getting in there. But the thing is that Umar has come up on a windfall over the since the since the Joe Budden podcast interview. Understand that there are times where Umar will do a lecture for free, but he's already made it clear that he needs to get paid to do these interviews. And there are people who pay him. Obviously, Breakfast Club, they got money to pay him. Whether they pay him or not, I don't even know. Someone even said, said something about how uh, Charlemagne today or yesterday promoted the FDMG school scam, talking about y'all need to donate and gave Umar's cat. Well, you know why they're doing that? Because they want Umar back on. Watch. Because when Umar went, it, it's, 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 it's all, I see it so very clearly. When Umar got on the Joe button, he went nuts. And they only released a couple of clips and it went viral. Everyone's talking about it. Everyone's talking about it. But then you notice more and more people start having him on. They start having him on. So instead of him, have, instead of Umar have to be up there in Wilmington in the cold begging for money, he can just go ahead and continue to do these the interview circuit and get paid. And get paid nice, get paid nicely. He should be up there with them trap bandits working things, getting things cleaned up, right? If he wants to open up school. Five years. Come on now. See, it just goes to show where his priority is. Priority is where he's going to go where the money is. And wherever the money is, the easiest way to get the money is to go and they go do these. these. And then, of course, he's doing more and more lectures, like where the woman weren't, ran up on him uh, on, on a recent one. See, he's selling books. He also gets to crush the cookies. Uh, he gets more donations, et cetera. It's easy. It's a lot easier than being up there in the cold in Wilmington, Delaware. Someone go look it up, how cold it is up there right now. It, and I'm sure it's probably been some snow up there, too. Instead of being up there begging outside. Why, why not get go down south, south, southern states, maybe go down down there to to uh, St. Croix or, or the Bahamas somewhere because it's warmer. He does this every single year. That's why he's not up there. In fact, let me do this because I got the receipts. Uh, and I'm going to get to all the super chats, too. Don't do y'all please just hold on because I, 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 I really appreciate it. You guys know I appreciate it. I really do. OK, I'm, I'm going to get to all of them. Can we go back in time? Let's go to the one year anniversary of Umar acquiring these trap banners. Anybody wanted in the chat room, you want to guess what where was Umar at that time? What was he doing? Anybody want to guess? <laughs> Antonio will probably remember. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Matter of fact, let me just look back here and see how it looks. Oh, it looks pretty good. My head is, is real big, though. That's the only problem. Yeah, that's okay. Ain't nothing I can do about that anyway. <laughs> I'm too old now. I'll give me a head reduction. <laughs> hey, hey, once I make it big, I'm going to get my teeth fixed, too, like Tasha K. When I do that, boy, and, doc, and, and Dr. Boyd Walkers, when I do that, it's on. <laughs> I'm going to be on here all day then. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. No, no, he wasn't, he wasn't taking Chinese baths. Did my thing just freeze? Oh, I'm, I'm clicking on the wrong thing. Hold on one second. <laughs> no, no, he wasn't taking no child. That, this is a good guess. This is a good guess. <laughs> yeah, I said a head reduction, fam. That's all right. He was eating pizza. <laughs> Stop it. Hold on. I don't think he was eating. Was he, I, no, wait a minute now. Hold on. 
Because I remember he was sipping on some tea, but I don't remember he was eating pizza, though. That's I don't know about that. I remember that. <laughs> California. Love. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, Ed. Ed, you got it. <laughs> We we can leave it right there. We don't have to. We don't have to. We don't got to read no more. Okay. I I I think he was. <laughs> I'm not gonna argue. I ain't gonna argue that. Okay. I'm not. I'm not gonna argue. I'm not gonna argue with you on now. <laughs> I, you know, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's just not worth trying to argue. You, know I mean? <laughs> you just got to let it go. Okay, some of these comments I can't read because y'all need to because y'all need to stop. Let me pull up the let me pull up the receipt. My goodness. All right, here we go. This is from 2019. <laughs> What's up, Michael? <laughs> yeah, I know, huh? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's my wife's favorite food. Is, favorite food is uh, Ethiopian food. We went on our, was that our first date? I think our first date was at, we went to an Ethiopian spot. I think so. Uh, and, and then, uh, no, no, no. Our first date, we went to the cafe. Uh, it was owned by one of the guys from Tony, Tony, Tony in Oakland. Okay, that, that was our first date. But we we used to go to this Ethiopian restaurant. Yeah, it, it's it, that's her favorite food. My favorite food is Indian food, but uh, Ethiopian food, uh, food is probably a close second. Anyway. This was the one-year anniversary of Umar acquiring these trap battles. This is what he was doing. Hey, boy, you looking. <laughs> Anybody remember Lino Horror hit the it's one? <laughs> Thank you, D, man. I, <laughs> well, right I tell you, I forgot about the Lino Horror. John Wesley <laughs> AME Zion. That's what Umar called me. He was mad at me one time. He said, Lean on horror. <laughs> he was so mad at me. We friends now, but back then he was so mad at me. Y'all remember that? <laughs> Lean on horror. <laughs> Uh, I tell you, I, I, I forgot about that. <laughs> Boy, the memories, huh? We just got so many, so many wonderful memories. <laughs> What's up, Black and Dimes is in the building. What's happening? East B's in the building as well. Seven, eight vet cubes in the building. With <laughs> yeah, I know, boy. He, he was about to just start sniffing. <laughs> no, this ain't drop squad. This ain't. Let me let it play because we got to get going here. Hold on. Nine until nine. National Independent Black Parent Association. Know your school rights. I need some training I'm some tour. Day. Maryland, Virginia, DC. You are up tomorrow. Maryland, Virginia, DC. These are the kids' drinks. You are up tomorrow. <laughs> to school, but I'll stop no excuses. Only time you can get this training is tomorrow. Yeah, if y'all hit the like button, I appreciate it. No Thanks for the mail strategies. Thanks so much. Super Bowl is over. No excuses. Wow, this guy leaked. Jersey, come on down. This is what he was doing for the one-year anniversary. That's the hot. Oprah and Gail. Yeah, I don't think this Snoop is the peace one, but I remember that peace one. Donors, thank you to all my supporters. Thank you to all my allies, my soldiers in arms. Today is birthday number one mm. for FDMG. What kind of cookies? Every kind. Butter almond, butter go. pecan, caramel fudge, pina you colada, go. lemon. <laughs> Here you go. What is he talking about? Sweet brown sugar. Hot coffee. Every kind. <laughs> he said hot coffee. My goodness. 
Cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Umar love his cookies. Cash chocolate app, chip, dollar chocolate sign chip FDMG cookies. Oreo. <laughs> California training is March oh, 7th. <laughs> California training. <laughs> you pretty much covered all of them, did you? Chocolate chip cookies, Oreo cookies, uh, lady fingers, almond torts, vanilla wafers, Lorna Dooms. <laughs> Pecan Sandies. I used to love their pecan Sandies, especially the Keebler ones back in the day. Anyway, <laughs> he's be <pretty> wild. <laughs> it was kind of cookies, all of them. <laughs> I know. I know. He, he loved talking about cookies. He just be cookie. He just cookie this, cookie that. <laughs> he going to treat the cup. All right, let me get up out of here. He's the oatmeal cookies, a hot peanut butter. <laughs> he loves this is his favorite Vince is a cash app cookie. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't in the, back then uh, uh laces out, he wasn't into uh, zebra cakes, okay? <laughs> yeah, I, I, th I thought I misread that. Uh, anyway, okay. Let's get back to it. <laughs> it's March the seventh. Oh goodness. How's it going, Brother Jose? Any I'm evil? Why did you miss me in New Orleans? Why were you not there? Why were you not in New Orleans? Why not? Why, why, why? <laughs> Especially the cosmic cookies. All right, Uma about to take his shirt off. We, we need to get going here. Okay, so this was 2019. All right. <laughs> I just want to stay on target because we got so much else, so much else. I just want to give this uh background here. Uh, here's uh, from uh, that was 2020, excuse me, February of, uh, 7th of 2020. Let's go to fe uh, 20 February uh, 8th of 2021. Let's take a look at this. See, back in the mama closet. And actually, I don't think, yeah, no, uh, yeah, this is still the mama closet. Yeah. The lights on his his left side. That's where the window's at the black male child and they will send in child protective services and child protective services will take all of your children out of the home why did i just think he was going to say take all of your cookies <laughs> am i the only one <laughs> I, I thought he was about to say <laughs> but i should love them fudge stripes i ain't gonna lie family <laughs> St. <laughs> Paul, Wilmington, Bitcoin going up, Bitcoin cookie. Okay, here we go. It's called medical neglect. Child Protective Services will take all of your children out of the home. It's called Child Protective Services. You will lose your children playing around with ADHD. You will lose your children playing around with conduct disorder. You will lose your children playing around with emotional disturbance. You will lose your children <laughs> playing around with. Somebody said he got a Shango stick. Don't do that. That's the other video. We don't, let's not go there. Oppositional defiant disorder, brothers and sisters. Leave the drugs <laughs> alone. The Leave only drug, drug you need is the good gospel of Garveyism. That's all you need. The only drug you need is you the him. good gospel his nose. of Garvey. Probably That's all you need, his brothers and sisters. We have to come together and finish the work that the most excellent. Okay, so this is what he this is what he was doing for the two year anniversary. Stage six is pre twenty five years. Children, and you don't have to be a special ed parent in this field. I speak with authority. All right, let's get to the next one. Just want to do this real quick. I got them all lined up. The next one is from 2022, uh, February 7th of 2022. Here we go. Is he, again, he's not up at the school. Pan Africanism, peace and Pan Africanism. Peace and Pan Africanism, peace and Pan Africanism. This is King Kong Consciousness, Intercontinental Ifa Tunde. Welcome you all to Black History Month. Welcome to the 96th annual celebration of black life, humanity, culture, civilization, spirituality, <laughs> and achievement. 96 years, brothers and sisters. I, I don't want to go there because that that if you haven't seen the video, I don't even want to promote it, but if you haven't seen the video, Umar, 
I can't remember what he was talking about. No, I remember what he was talking about because he had on that real tight. Uh, I don't even know what it was, like a hat. It looked like a kufi or something, but it was so tight on his head, red. And uh, I kid you not, Umar was talking about how women, you know, they don't want you to cuddle or none of this stuff. Sometimes they just want you to crush. He's that's how he said it. he didn't want their cookies crushed. Then he brings out this object. He start tapping on it. <laughs> so I said, that's enough. We ain't got to go no further. That's enough. So that's where we get to, to the, Shango, the Shango pile from, okay? <laughs> okay. Some, some, some of y'all were there when we covered that. Dad. If you weren't there, good for you, because it was something to behold. Uh, thanks, East B, for the super chat. Shango Power. <laughs> okay. Uh, I got this one. Thank you so much, T. Rivera. Let me do these real quick. Quick course chat. Hit the, yeah, if y'all can like button, I appreciate it. Thanks so, uh, so much, Sigmund. Black Wolf says, what is mind-boggling is that all them clowns that was attacking you personally are nowhere to be found now to defend this BS of what is Umar Scam. Yeah, I haven't really thought about that. But the, yeah, there were a lot of people. Just when we look at it from a, a memory standpoint, let me get this thing. Hold on a second. Uh, because there's so many different memories i did i uh i came under a lot of uh scrutiny and a, and a lot of attacks and uh family members too by the way um uh, but there are a lot many saying gonna stay up hold on one second but there uh most of those people that were around they're not around anymore that's true that's very true there are also some of those people who were around but they realized that it was a scam because i've heard, i've seen a maybe two that they uh they have like a complete turnaround on, on this whole thing you know um yeah there was a lot there's a lot that i had to deal with uh, a lot that my my family had to deal with too stuff that you guys don't even know about i mean I, I have receipts i keep receipts on everything i have folders you know um and the kind of stuff that that uh we had to deal with in uh not just my immediate family but even some of my extended family members um yeah looking back i i, I haven't really thought about all of that you know, I haven't th I haven't thought about uh, uh, that in a lot in a long time. It's been quite a journey. It really has. But you know, the, the way I look at it is that uh, Tom always tells the truth. And I've never lied on this guy. You know, again, here we are because because the thing, Black Wolf, I remember when when he made the school announcement. That's the next video we're going to get into. We're going to get into that. It's a longer video. That'll be what we cover for the rest of the show. When Umar made the school announcement, so many people got a, got excited, but also a lot of the people who, let's say, weren't outwardly vocal attacking people who were criticizing umar that's when they got amped up you know they, they felt like oh no umar is the real deal but see here we are five years later tom always tells the truth that's that's really what the, you know that, that's that, that's how i look at all of this that if we're patient enough and then we we endure uh we, we can get through it and get to the other side we realize what it was really about and it's, it's exactly what i said it was about it's a long con you know um I have these three things. It's it's uh, love, courage, and faith. And all, out of all the stuff, and I'm not trying to act like I'm a victim here either. Don't don't get it twisted. But I have gone through. Uh, uh, it's been a heavy load and a heavy burden. Uh, that's why I've taken breaks at times. Sometimes three months. Sometimes a month. Sometimes a, a eight months. You know, I, I have to do what I have to do. But but uh, faith, um, courage, got to have courage, uh, and you got to come from a place of love. And even though I criticize Umar and I, um, I've exposed this fraud uh, and I've exposed the school scam, I still got love for the guy. I want him to do better. See, that's that's coming from a very different place uh, than you know what some of the, the, the people who used to attack me with where they thought I was coming from. No, it, it's never been about causing this guy harm. It's it's been about setting the uh, setting things straight and keeping people protected from the harm that he inevitably has caused but look at here we are five years later still no school time always tells the truth See? yeah uh thanks black wolf for super chat I, I haven't thought about that in in such a long time you know god's mission says if you're looking for dr umar aka uh cocaine consciousness you can find him on your uh at your uh, local <laughs> don't do that why you gotta do that i should have read that in advance god's mystery come on now <laughs> This lighting is a little goofy. I'll, I'll get it set up in just you know, probably uh, in a minute. I, I need to put, I got another lamp I can put right there and then 
I'll have to go downstairs to get that. But maybe once I start playing the, the, the longer video, I'll let it play for a little while and go grab that. Uh, unless it's okay. If the lighting's okay with y'all, then I'm, I'm good. Uh, okay, thanks again, uh, God's Mystery, uh, for the Super Chat. Also, thanks, uh, uh, Black Anonymous. And I want to say this, too. That, well, I don't even say it. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, Seth says, so the government prints the money, and people who have jobs receive money that's printed by the government for their labor. Yes. And gives it to Jermaine, and it's magically not government money. Amen. And this gets to, and thank you for bringing this up, Seth, because this gets to one of the, the main excuses that Umar Johnson followers have, which is just they're parroting what Umar Johnson has stated. Anytime you're repeating exactly verbatim what Umar says, understand it's called mind control. He's, he's a co-personality. He's, he's said that to you so many times that now you, you just accept it as true. You probably accepted it. Some of y'all accepted the truth the first time around. Okay. Uh, but, but he's repeated it so many times that it gets ingrained in your subconscious mind and you repeat it verbatim. There's no critical thought in it whatsoever. It doesn't even make sense. Okay. But if Umar states that, you know, and he uses this excuse, the reason why it's taking so long is because the money, you know, and I'm not going to be getting government money. I don't want government grants, so forth and so on. OK, yeah. But the truth of the matter is, is that there are people who are sending you money and the money is printed by the government. There are people who have government jobs who send you money. There are people who who are on uh, different government aid assistance and they're sending you money. So it's government money. <laughs> OK, I haven't really thought of it like that until right now, but said, no, you do have a legitimate point. You see, uh, that's just one of the excuses that Umar Johnson has used to, to perpetuate perpetuate this long con is that the money's not there, but he should be sitting on at least two million right now. At least. This guy should be sitting on. No, let me let me be fair. Let, let me be kind. One point five million. He should be sitting on one point five million dollars right now. Based on everything I've seen him do, getting an age back that he claims fifty thousand dollars, he said he said he needed to get the blueprints. I think he said fifteen thousand. Then he said twenty thousand. I think one time he said twenty five thousand dollars for the blueprints. Okay, whatever. But you, you put it in, you know, paint day, all the little things that he's done. Okay, he did have some contracts come out there to do some electric electricity stuff, some wiring and stuff like that. You put it all that. He should still be sitting on about one point five million dollars. So the excuse that he doesn't have enough money because he's not getting money from the government, that's not a legitimate excuse. He at the very least could have had an office. Yeah, how about this, Seth? Government money or, or otherwise, shouldn't Umar at least have an office up there by now? Five years in, he don't even have an office. He don't even have a website. You want John's response? How can you take him seriously? Why would you believe this foolishness? Why would you believe that he's legitimately, you know, trying to open up a school? He don't even have an office space up there after five years. Roof still, ceiling tiles fall all over the place, trash all over the place still. He doesn't even have a he doesn't even have FTMG website. Five years, fourteen years into this long con, but five years since acquiring these abandoned buildings in Wilmington, he still don't even have a website. But this is a good point right here because Umar John's followers, they parrot that over and over again where he's not trying to get the grant money from the government, blah, blah, blah. That's why it's taking, taking it makes me want to pull up that interview with the twins when they, they said he, he said they said, well, when's it going to open? And Umar was like, when I don't know, because I'm waiting for y'all to give me the money. <laughs> I kid you not. That was one of the crazy interviews. All right. Thanks, Seth, for the super chat. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, skinny boy says FDMG fraudulent damn money. <laughs> I haven't heard that one. I've heard a lot of them though. I've heard a lot of them. I never heard that one. Fraudulent damn money grab. <laughs> right. All right. Thank you. Skinny boy. Uh, skinny boy to 20 boy. I appreciate the super chat. Hope you're doing all right. Did I get everybody? Let me just make sure real quick. I got uh, segments earlier. I got, I got Pharaoh's earlier. I got just did Seth. Thank you so much. Okay, yeah, I got I got every black wolf, got chores. Yeah, if you're okay, like when I appreciate one, two, three. <laughs> yeah, and then Shango Power. Okay. All right, okay, so we're all caught up. All right, so let's get back to it. Uh, here's the video right here. Let me just play a little of this. This is from 2022. 100 years of Black History Month in four years. We will have a grand celebration at the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy. 28 days, 28 nights to commemorate the centennial to commemorate the centennial, to commemorate the centennial of Black History Month in four more years. That will be 26, 2026 will be the centennial. 2031, we will have the bicentennial of Nat Turner. There will be a Nat Turner conference at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. Brothers and sisters, I am here live 
Wilmington, D.C. Yes, Wilmington, Delaware, slave state. Now the location of the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. Brothers and sisters, we are in the building. We are in the building. Black History Month is already off to a revolutionary start. The Tiger Year. Shout out to all my African brothers and sisters around the world who are born. All right. I have the eye of the tiger refocused on completing the renovations of the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy. Refocused on completing the renovations of the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. I am pleased to announce that we have received our very first registered diamond level FDMG loyal donors club member. I repeat, our very first diamond level. Anybody know how much they pay to be on the diamond level? I don't remember. Was it like a, a thousand a month or something like that? Frederick Douglass, Marcus Garvey, loyal donors club member. We have yeah, our know. very first the, our, the diamond army, huh? level loyal donors <laughs> club <laughs> member. <laughs> For FDMG, yes, indeed. FDMG, fake diploma, meaningless grades. <laughs> what a way to celebrate the. Hey, you wild. Uh, okay, a thousand. So he, there's a person that's down. He, they donating a thousand a month. <laughs> Fifty million. <laughs> Kyle, cut it out. <laughs> Naeem says it's. A, hey, I think it was a thousand. That's a a month. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Ed. Where's the diamond? I mean, let me not say that. It's true, though. Third birthday of the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy. Tomorrow will be three <laughs> years since the purchase of the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. Camp. All right. So notice he's not at the school. He inside the car freezing. Is this a Father David interview? FDMG. Getting to technician to do this because this was both himself from this project uh mm -hmm. let me uh take possession of my 1100 pound hvac unit and let me get another hvac technician to do this because this was supposed oh. to be done, be done in november the unit is here this? we have the unit okay it's in storage it's not at the campus it's <laughs> in storage in wilmington the unit is here mm -hmm. but it ain't been put in place yet and i'm very disappointed you know because we are way behind schedule on this and I shared this with the tech. So this is the last week. If that unit mm. ain't up, I get back from Liberia, I have to uh, get my unit from him and find another tech. We cannot, Baba David. This is why the this is why tomorrow, Baba David, is the three year anniversary of the purchase of the FDMG campus. We notice he was in Liberia at this time. Every single year he does this. He goes. He travels. He's not even up there on the anniversaries. Bought that school. On February the 7th of 2019. Dang, look how this boy, this trap looking bad even then. Tomorrow is the three-year birthday of FDMG. Three. And we still don't have a single building up and running because of these types of delays. It is No, see, he wants to blame everyone else except himself. He doesn't want to hold himself accountable. It's everyone else's fault. It's all the saboteurs. It's the cookie crush chat. It, 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 it's lean or horror, you know, it just goes on and on and on. It's the white lawyer. It's, it's the, it's the snow bunnies. It's everybody except Umar. The one common denominator is who? Umar, Jermaine Shoemake. Not me. It is not the donors. It is the contractors, Bobby. Mm -hmm. We are all this contract. How are you going to be absentee on your own? I know that's what I'm talking about. Uh, D that all says, uh, I'd bet a thousand dollars that the diamond donor is no longer a diamond. Yeah, I, I, I guarantee you that that, di yeah. I mean, who's going to send a thousand dollars a month for five years? Let's say if, if they started when he first got these trap bandos. Let's say if they started in 2022. That, that's, that's just throwing money away. That's all it is. That's just throwing money away. And here we are five years later, five, we're on a five-year anniversary now, today, and there's still no school. All this money that people sent this guy, it's off and not because not one black boy has been educated. Not one child has been educated after five years. There's no excuse for that. You can't say there's no money. Because see, Umar could have simply set up a, an after-school program. 
inside one of them trap rooms. Just make one, just get one room. Damn. You know what I mean? Just get, I'm sorry. Get one room. Get make it look nice. Clean it up. Okay. Get some ceiling tiles. Get the electricity going. You know, uh, get, get get some carpet on the on the ground. Get some fur, get, get some new furniture. Don't you ain't got to beg for furniture from anybody from, from Hobo Earl. Don't do all that. Just go and get some new, some fresh, clean. You can get off Amazon. You know what I'm saying? And, and get yourself a nice desk. That same space could be your office space. Just one room after five years and, and educate one child or two or three or four or five. That could have been done. There's no excuse for that. And yet we got people sending this guy $1,000 a month. And, and here we are now five years later and not one child has been educated. There, there, there's no way that anyone can make an excuse for that. None. There's no excuse for that. It's called a scam. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> All this other stuff is irrelevant. It's a scam. Thanks, Dita. That's all for the super chat. Put a little pressure on it so it'll pop up a little more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to push it back up against something a little bit so they get a little more thrust on it. All right. <laughs> Thanks for a suit that and a thousand dollars a month is it's, it better be Leo CEO season for a thousand a month. <laughs> I wish someone would. Well, I I'll be up here eating. I, I have all kinds of snacks just laid out all over the place. I have my shirt off, everything. <laughs> I let loose, family. <laughs> all right, all right, thanks for the chat. Because it's Leo season. I don't know why Umar say that. He said all the time. I don't even know what that means. Anybody know what that means? Leo season. Okay. Okay. Did I get to everybody? Okay. I already got the shackle power. Let's get off of that one. I, anyway, <laughs> that's too much. Uh, Brother Jose said, most people don't even realize that FMG is less than five minutes away from the Howard R. Young Correctional Institute in the, is it? Yeah, it is. Isn't that? I think that's downtown, right? It's like a. Uh, let me go look real quick. I thought I looked it up before. The Howard R. But that whole area is crime and drug infested. The whole area. Uh, also, thanks to everyone who sent in us uh, cash apps last week. Uh, and someone sent in a cash app specifically for me to cover the alien video. And, and I'll, I'll do it publicly, uh, but I'll do one for members too. But uh, maybe. I'll figure out when I can do it. Now that I have this up here, um, I can. I, I'll, I'll have more flexibility on when I can live stream. It's just that my son, he likes. I, I'll probably get him a, a a laptop, or I'll get another. I'll get a laptop and then put that up here and then put all this back down there for him. But either way, I'll work it out. Uh, let's see, Howard R. Young Correctional Institution. Oh no, it's not in. I thought it was downtown. No, this. Dang, it looked like FDMG. Do I need to show this? This thing looked like FDMG. I can't, and I and there's that water tower. Yeah, I know exactly where it's at because that water tower that's on the EPA's report, and that's near FDMG. That's on the EPA uh report for the um, I have that too. I was gonna show it today, but we ain't gonna have time. Otherwise, we won't be here for like six hours. We already an hour and 13 minutes in. It's going to be a long show. I'll tell you all right now. Let me go ahead and pull this up real quick. Thanks, uh, uh, Brother Jose, for, uh, for 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 Super Chat and also for bringing this up. I'll pull it up right here for everyone to take a look. Um, Here we go. Let me do a screen share. All right. Here go right here. This is the the uh, facility. Don't look like a two story FDMG. Bob wire and everything. There's Bob wire too on the side on that fence on the side of the uh, building because I remember when I was walking by one time, and uh, there's Bob wire up over there. I'm t- it's like you walk uh, down one one of the back. Uh, I don't even know what they what they call that. It's uh, behind the building. It's still on the property, but there's Bob Wire, at least back then. Yeah, boy. yeah, this is right around the corner. And the reason why I know is because if we go back over here and you see that water tower over there, 
this water tower is close to uh, uh, FDMG. It's real close. Yeah, this uh, whole area, it's a uh, crime in, in uh, dang, but this is, I, but this is like right in, normally uh, this type of stuff is like way far away. You know what I'm saying? But this is just right there. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I can't even remember ever seeing Well, it may have been from way back in the day, though. It's probably because it looks like it's an older building. But normally they built these facilities way out away from, you know, like where regular old people live, but not over here. Yeah, this, this is not too far from FDMG. He says five minutes away. Yeah, because that that, that uh, the water tower that I showed you all, that's in the EPA report. If that's the right, if that's the same one, I think it is. There are actually two jails within the facility. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> yeah, I know the jail looks, it just sure did. It did. It looked better. The, the jail look better than FDMG. That, that's a doggone shame. Two jails in the vicinity. I, I didn't know that. I did not know that. Uh, thanks for the super chat. And thanks for, for uh, our brother Jose for, for letting me know that. Well, there you have it right there, huh? Okay, so we were playing. Let's get back to it. So I was playing um, this one right here. We as good as the contractors that we can find to do the work. And this well, is and a perfect we'll example of why we that. are here at three years and still don't even have the gym up and running because you wait on people. You follow I waited on him for three months. I waited on the previous HVAC for five months. I waited on the electrician. They wasted a year. I waited on the engineer. They mm. wasted a year. This is how we got here, and I really need people to understand that the problem is not us, Baba Davey. You have people sitting around talking about, he don't know what he's doing. And I know exactly what I'm doing. The oh, yeah. problem is, I'm not just going to give money to anybody. I'm going to bet you. I'm going to screen you. I'm going to make sure you have your paperwork in order. I'm going to well, if you did all that, why are you hiring all these people who, quote, unquote, were, didn't know what they were doing? The black contractors and all this stuff. Anyway, um, for time's sake, I don't need to pull up the other one. Just understand that the other one, he's the, the video from uh, last year, 2023, uh, the four-year anniversary, he's talking about relationships. He's not up at FDMG. Ain't none of that going on. It's, a, it's just a big old mess. I think so. You know what? Let, let me just check real quick. But uh, let, let me do this. I, I want to make sure. I want to be thorough here and also want to be fair. Um, let's see. Yeah. Oh, I know why. Because it, it wouldn't. Yeah. OK. The, the download. Yeah. There was an error when it downloaded. I remember I got the notification, but I, I can just pull it up right here. Um, she wants. Y.T. Husband. This is what he was talking about. Uh, this is from a year ago. So if you guys don't mind, I'll just play a little bit of it and I'm going to play it from um, the King Kong Consciousness YouTube page. OK, normally I download them and it played through uh, the, the interface here. But I'm going to go ahead and play it from. Um, so let me know if the, if the audio, because sometimes we have audio issues. Let me know, because for some reason, I don't know why I didn't download properly, but it, it's OK. I want to do this. I want to be fair, make sure I have all the receipts in order and then no one can say, oh, you're making that up. So let me do a quick screen share. This ain't going to take but maybe a minute and a half. We'll do this real quick and we're going to get into the, uh, the video for today. OK, and thank you all, too, again, for tuning on in. I want to quick say thanks to the mob for handling business, too. Thanks for everyone who sent in uh, Super Chats already. I appreciate it. I'll get to all of them, too. Just hold, hold on one second. Here we go. So this is from a year ago. Uh, right away, he has on a Philadelphia uh, uh, Phillies, no, Philadelphia Eagles. And he's always talking about black people spending their money on, you know, this type of thing. And you shouldn't be supporting all this. But he will wear his Philly caps and his his, his sports gear. And it's, it's OK for him to do it. Just you can't do it. Black parent teleconference brothers. and Yeah. Can you all hear the audio question about your son or daughter education or mental health? This is the black parent teleconference. I'm going to do one per month. I am promising to do one per month. I will move to Delaware and be your third wife. Okay. Sister Danny wants to move to Delaware and be my third wife. What skills do you bring to the table, Sister Danny? Let's keep it focused on the kids. What is this? Oh, Lord. What is this? Audio is low. African female being faced with showing interest in a young white male. 
I don't know how to overcome this snow puppy situation. <laughs> I will be gladly proud if you're able to answer this question. Dallas, yeah. Texas, snow puppy crisis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dallas, Texas. Uh, there was a, in uh, Starfield, there was a, a weapon called a key logger. Uh, yeah, the, these things, those things are expensive. You ain't gonna catch me buying one. Uh -uh. Okay. You want to date a white man? <laughs> this is what he was doing. Any school, including independent. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. <laughs> she cannot have your sperm because your sperm is mine. Lord have mercy. Ladies, we must stay focused. This is the Black Parent Teleconference, ladies. This is the Black what? Parent Teleconference. Somebody said, can I have King Kong? Hello, Dr. Umar. This is LG from Miami. How do I start a conversation with my girl about the benefits of polygamy? You just talk to her about it. If she's not for it, she's not for it. What's the ages of the white kid? I'm dating a black male. He sold drugs and comes from the ghetto. How do I... Try who <laughs> more funny boy. <laughs> I'm dating a black male. He sold drugs and comes from the ghetto. How do I try to change his ghetto ways? I'm an older black female. Oh, uh, we gonna cover it, Jessica. Not children. children. <laughs> Should I have him wear African clothes? <laughs> this fool <laughs> who is this fool who are funny though uh we're not gonna cover that in this video we get to it at some point <laughs> okay that's enough okay let's let's get going here I, the, the point the hold best on. route your wife is homeschooling you will have enough children for your own school rock rock if y'all gonna have 11 more babies on top of them too <laughs> you're gonna have your own school the rock school for rock's children that's what i want you to call it oh my like god school is not going to do a good job by your daughter yes somalis are black what kind of dumb question is that <laughs> oh my god. all right all right all right that's about anyway i just want to prove my point when it comes to him being up there even on the anniversary he's never up there doing anything he's talking on the phone his mama calls he out eating food eating good he's just in a car somewhere uh, and it just goes to show he's not serious about opening up a school at all. And that should be the primary time where he's showing and proving that he's serious about opening up school. Year after year, here we are five years later. And then what does he do for the fifth year? He posts on his Instagram page. This is all he do. Now, I don't know if he did another video that he's going to come out later. I don't know. But this, this is what he posted. And this is it. And he's saying that uh, February, let's see. Uh, it's, it's allegedly, it's going to begin uh, September 3rd of 2024. It's not going to happen. He, he's been changing dates since 2010. All right. Uh, he's always talking about the school to prison pipeline and has the school so close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he don't need no pipes. It is, he don't need no pipe. There ain't no pipeline right there. Walk around the corner. They right there at the right there at the prison. I did not know that. It's not a good look either. You know, I, I want. I'm not going to do it, but I want to go and look how. There's two of them. If there's two prisons in the vicinity, that's not a good look. You know, take people's money. And then in 2019, after nine years, uh, yeah, nine years, almost 10 years, really it's 10 years uh, of talking about FDMG, you're going to purchase these trap band bandles that are in dilapidated condition to two to two to date, like to right today. And then you're going to purchase them in a crime infested, drug infested neighborhood. This, the, the city that he purchased it in at the time, the year before he purchased it, was ranked sixth in the nation for violent crime. And then there's two prisons in the vicinity, one at least five mile, uh, five minutes away. That ain't right. And then here we are five years later and still not one child's been educated. That's not right. That's, that's wrong. Thanks, Louis Luck. They don't, they don't need no school to prison pipeline these days. Uh, Kimmy, Kimmy Kim says, instead, he does house calls with funky feet. Yeah, I know. Yeah. He'll do the house call with the funky feet out. You sure will. That's one of the worst videos 
th there's videos that he's done that like really got me upset and that was one of because I, I i didn't realize it we were i don't even know if, yeah no we were watching it live and we figured that if, if my memory serves me right we figured out we were watching it live and, and what kimmy kim is referring to is the video where umar is giving one of these parent conferences but he's doing it in person with this woman he's sitting on her couch and it's all dark and he's sitting on her couch like he the man of the house with no shoes on just socks on just chilling she's sitting on the couch next to him and they live stream for like a uh i can't remember how many minutes close to an hour but early on in the video you realize that the little girl that she's that the mom is talking about and he's talking about telling all her business that little girl is also holding the phone for that time period while they're live streaming telling all her business and she's standing up holding the phone that's what what kimmy kim is talking about right here i remember that that right there that that was one of the videos that really upset me no shame whatsoever none okay yeah yeah it, it does it, it bothers me yeah oh yeah yeah i just got a little different setup uh dominique uh today you know how we do family you know how we do okay so uh thanks kimmy kim and thanks lewis luck uh thanks for uh sigmund and brother jose we got a little blowed off on that but that's 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 okay i think that's a good point to make you're dealing with this prison this, the school to prison pipeline ain't no pipeline <laughs> just walk out the back door into the prison right there okay so now we're gonna get to it now i like to present to you all the video that started it all this was the video that umar released one of three we're only going to get to the first one today tomorrow if everything works out we'll get to the second one the second one is the promo video where he's walking up the steps it's short it, it, it shouldn't take too long um this one's going to take uh, quite a bit of time but i remember when umar um first released this video people were so excited and so happy and this is what happens you know he, he'll do things like this every once in a while just to keep things going just like when he he took some boards off of the windows and everyone got all excited but then you know putting the boards back up i remember he got the lights turned on and it's not all of the buildings but he got some lights so turned on and people got excited but there's still problems with the exposed wires etc still no school still had not passed any inspection when he got the water turned on same thing well, the genesis of this really goes back to uh, February of 2000, February 7th of 2019, where uh, Umar uh, purchased the buildings in two and on paper, uh, 2000, uh, excuse me, on the 6th. I can pull it up right here. Matter of fact, let, let me do that because um, I think it's it's apropos, but uh, that way people can't say, well, I'm making anything up. I know I always say that, but I, you'd be surprised. I've never lied on this guy. Um, it's just not in my character to be lying on people, just lying in general. I just, I just can't. I don't live my life that way, so I always try to provide the receipts uh, for people to take a look at. Uh, that way, um, there's no ambiguity and there's no doubt. And let me do it a different way because it's not coming up the way that I want. I'll have to pull it up right here. It's not a problem. Let me get out of this. Let me zoom in, and I'll do a screen share. Let me just read this to everyone before we get into the video. Uh, someone uh, someone sent this to me. I can't remember who it was, but they sent it to me. I was the first one to release this to the public, and uh, it started a firestorm. Let me do a screen share right here. Here is the receipt right here. Okay. Uh, I'll read this to you guys real quick, and I'll start at the upper right. Parcel no, uh, parcel uh, two six zero two nine forty dash zero two eight blah 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 twenty two six zero two nine forty dash zero two seven prepared by prepared by ward in taylor llc this is in wilmington delaware uh return to fsmg it's supposed to say fgmd it's just a, a typo uh s is right there next to uh uh d on your keyboard if you guys go look on your keyboard right now if you're on a on your uh a pc or on the tabletop on a, a laptop uh s is right next to d okay so i remember we were trying to figure that out but it's just a typo f uh should say f D wait a minute that's not right frederick no that's not no type typo F fsmg academy inc this may be this no no this has to be the first because he set up a new ein number frederick it should be frederick douglas marcus garvey 
No, it's just a typo. That's all it is. Okay, so it should it's just a D instead of an S. Anyway, this is the the PO box that he set up in Wilmington. Remember, he had one that he was promoting heavily in and that one was in um Philadelphia. He actually received a cease and desist letter for that one. So I don't I never hear him. I rarely hear him. I haven't actually I haven't heard him mention that one in a long time, but he mainly collects his donations and uh, via mail to this PO box right here. And then it says here, it says this deed made th made this sixth day of February in the year 2019 between K-12 Delaware uh, RE LLC, a Delaware limited liability company party of the first part and Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey RBG International Leadership Academy, Inc., a corporation of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania party of the second part. So it is a corporation. Uh, witnesseth that the said party of the first part, which would be the K-12 Delaware RE LLC, and in consideration of the sum of ten dollars and uh, zero, basically ten dollars, and the other good and valuable consideration, lawful money of the United States of America, the receipt that we're of uh, uh, us, uh, excuse me, is hereby acknowledged, hereby grant and convey unto the said party of the second part, which is Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey, that's Umar, uh, its successors and assigns in fee simple. Now, even though it says ten dollars, that's just it's it's more like a, a, a payment in faith. The rest of the money you pay, you end up paying, and, and all my records show that it's four hundred thousand dollars that was paid for this property. Okay, because I remember when we first looked at this, we were like ten dollars, and we were going crazy. No, it's four hundred thousand dollars. Umar never provided any receipts for how much it costs, but online records show four hundred thousand. That's what I reported on years ago when I did uh, the documentary. Uh, Six ten East Seventeenth Street. Okay, uh, and then it goes on and on. The rest of it is, is, is irrelevant. But this was the receipt. And so um, I had this actually it, before Umar made these school announcement videos. If you guys remember this, I knew in advance, okay, what was going on before Umar started putting up videos and talking about how you acquired these trap bandos uh, in um, Wilmington, Delaware. So now we get to video number one, where Umar makes the announcement. Okay, it's a long video. We're gonna take our time and we'll get through it. Thank you all again for tuning on. We got about 750 people in the building. Thank you all so much. You all hit the like button. I appreciate it. Quick chat is undefeated. Okay. Real quick, is the audio okay? And is the video quality okay? Uh, because I, I want to make sure that this, because uh, I can always move, uh, rearrange stuff to get better uh, video or audio quality, especially audio quality. That's what I'm really worried about. But if it's okay, let me know inside the chat room. Uh, that way I know it's okay to live stream right here. I actually like it. It's kind of comfortable. I'll still live stream downstairs from time to time, but I want to be able to live stream whenever I want to and, and let the family have all that space down there. Okay, so let's get to the video at hand. Here Peace we go. Love, black family. This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism. Okay, thank you so much. How's black it going, uh, Adrian? Let me give a quick shout out before we get into this video. Thanks so much, Adrian, for the uh, for the uh, the comment there. Thanks for being here too. As in the building, a skinny uh, boy, 220 boy. Athena's in the building. What's up, Jonathan? Kid is in the building as well. Big sis Candice as well. Uh, Wendy is in the building. Audio and video is good, says Billy Jean. Thank you so much. A says we Gucci. Okay, that's not some young people talk. I don't be talking like that. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Snowbird said it's good. Okay, thank you so much, Snowbird. I appreciate it. Cookie Crush that undefeated. Thanks so much, superhero. Okay, thank you so much, Ben. What's up, Ben? Ben says sounds and, and looks good, brother. Okay, thank you. Cool. Okay, this is good. Then I'll, I'll be okay with um Linda slurring your speech. I think it's too much applesauce. No, no, I'm just chilling. I'll start getting comfortable. I'll start saying, okay, here we go. Umar Johnson, the most requested black scholar in the world, the number one black school psychologist in history, the number one orator of the 21st century. As you all know, I promised you that on February the 14th, the 201st solar return of my great ancestor, the great Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey Douglas, to whom I am a blood relative, I promised no, you I would be giving you the FBI number one school announcement. I'm gonna start every well, line I'm gonna write. For people. those of you who are That's tuned in right, right now, you are getting a special treat because I am no longer going forward with the February 14th announcement. Instead, I'm making the announcement today, February the 9th. Right now, I am making the announcement. This is the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy announcement. Today is the ninth. <laughs> Nine represents the ancestors. And so what better day than to let you all know what's going on than today.
four and a half years ago, April of 2014 to be exact, I received a phone call. Remember, this video is from 2019, February of 2019. Okay, so this is nine and a half uh, years ago now, since he's what he's talking about right here, and he's talking about the whole St. Paul school scam. Right here where I'm sitting. I was told that there was a historically black college for sale in St. Paul's College in Lawrenceville, Virginia. I had never heard of St. Paul's College, but I immediately started doing my research. And my research led me to come to understand that the founder of St. Paul's College, Father Russell, had been a good friend to one of my greatest heroes and ancestors, the great Booker T. Washington. And Wait, I did what? even more research to learn he was your did, did he is he saying that booker t was his ancestor too that there was a historically black college for sale in saint paul's college in lawrenceville virginia i had never heard of saint paul's college but i immediately started doing my research and my research led me to come to understand that the founder of saint paul's college father russell had been a good friend to one of my greatest heroes and ancestors the great I don't remember him saying that either. This guy, now, that's line number two. This guy. And Booker T now too? Okay, all right. This, we, we might have put together a running list. Now, Booker T, Booker T Coleman, <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> Booker T from WWF, that's what he's talking about. <laughs> the, B Booker T Coleman is the old name for uh, Baba Khomeini, he was in the Hidden Colors. I used to be in, into his stuff for a while too, but his uh, Booker T. Coleman was his real name, his government name. So Book, Book, Booker T., Frederick Douglass, Pharaoh Ramses, I, I kid you not, and um, uh, who's the I was going to say Maya Angelou. <laughs> Who am I trying to say? Come on, help me out. Good, good question. Um, Underground Railroad, Harriet Tubman. I'm sorry. Well, I'm tripping. So that Harriet Tubman. Okay, so now we got Booker T. We got Frederick Douglass. We got Farrell's Ramsey's and Harriet Tubman. Anybody else that I missed? <laughs> he said Jesus. No, he said that Jesus was born on his birthday. That's what he said. <laughs> Angry Corner Boy is my second favorite version of Umar. No beard. Auntie Umar is number one. <laughs> Auntie, well, Umar shaved all his hair off and he turned into Auntie Umar. <laughs> I, 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 I can't say that that I, that 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 uh, Angry Corner Boy. I, I don't like the Angry Corner Boy. <laughs> what was my favorite? My favorite version of Umar. That's a tough one. I'm I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the school psychologist when he talks about he need to psychologize, because it's so fake. When he used to wear suits and stuff, that's just so fake and phony. That's the I was gonna say little Jermaine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was gonna say little Jermaine, but I think that that's my favorite. All right, thanks, Ice Man Vamp. I don't I don't really like particularly care for. Uh, Angry corner boy, Jermaine. Uh, Jermaine. I don't. I don't <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, Lewis X says Umar related to everybody. He's related to you. No, he not. No, he not. I already done my family tree. They ain't got no no shoe makes on there. <laughs> we, we we're not. We don't have. We don't come from a line of shoemakers, family. We just didn't do that. <laughs> okay. We do other things, but we don't shoe make. We don't do that kind of stuff. <laughs> I, I remember I was working on my family tree. I said, please, please don't be related to Freddie Douglas. <laughs> please. I just, well, that would be the irony of it. What if Umar was like my third cousin? Oh, man, that would be horrible. All right. Thanks, Lewis, for Super Chat. Simeon Hightower says, I saw the prisons on a satellite Google map overview. There are more facilities in that area. Research it. Wow. Yeah, I'll, I'll look into it. 
while we go through this video, I'll, I'll go ahead and look. I'm, I'm probably I won't pull it up though, but I'll uh I'll, I'll uh, look into this a little bit more. So I can put in um, Delaware Wilmington Delaware prison facilities. Yeah, that one comes up. That's the first one that comes up is, is the one, um, the Howard R. Young Correctional Facility. Oh, yeah, I'm seeing it right now. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Man, it's right there. And it is sad. That's, I had no idea about all these years. It, and it is. It's, it's literally right there. <laughs> it's, that's crazy. Man, that, that's that's wild. Umar don't care though. Uh, thanks for Super Chat. He he don't care. He he bought those he bought those those traps because um GoFundMe was they started issuing refunds. So he had to get whatever he can get. And then he ended up selling all these trap bandos. And here we are five years later, still still looking in a dilapidated state. And and it's true. There are two prison facilities right they're right there. Howard R. Young Correctional and then Plumber uh Q Community Correction. I'm a community correct. Hold on, let me make sure. Let me, no, no, that's not that. That's something else. It is Bob Wire, though. <laughs> I'll have to look into this. Maybe you're talking about something else. But there's two things that I see that's pulled up. And there's Brandywine. That's the Brandywine District because that's where they, the EPA, they did a whole analysis of this area. Let me just look this up real quick. And then, then we'll get to it. I apologize because I, I am intrigued by, by this because out of all these years, I've, I've never, uh, I didn't know this. Oh no, you're right. Yeah, Plumber Community Correction Center. <laughs> you guys, and it's Bob Wire and everything. It's a doggone shame. Anyway, so, uh, thanks. Uh, uh, who was that? Uh, I think I got. Oh, I'm, I'm. I think it was Sigmund. Where am I at in here? There's a lot of. Uh, I'm not complaining. There's a lot of uh, super chats in here. Uh, oh yeah. Okay, there it is, right there. Okay, yeah. I, I just looked. I uh, think Sigmund. Uh, Lewis, Lewis X says, Umar related to everybody. He's related. No, no, he's no, he not related to me. Uh, okay, I got that one too. Thank you so much, Ice Man. Um, Barry Lewis says, he has he claimed Hannibal as an ancestor? He's claimed, <laughs> no, I ain't never heard him say Hannibal, Barry Lewis. So far, what I've heard him say is Booker T. And I don't know why I never heard that before. Of all the times I've watched this video, Booker T. Washington, Frederick Douglass, Fre uh, Frederick Douglass, uh, Farrell Ramsey's, and Harriet Tubman. Those are four that he said that he was related to. He he never said that he was related to Jesus. He said that he was a black Christ and that Jesus was born on his birthday. Okay, but I never heard him say Hannibal. I can verify that, that we can say for sure he said these four people so far. That's that's crazy. I uh, think thanks for the super chat too, uh, uh, Bear. I hope you're doing all right. Uh, black Black Wolf says he is junkyard dog six. Yeah, I know that. I'm gonna tell you, uh, junk man dog, uh, junkyard dog. That was my favorite wrestler for a long time. Him and. Uh, uh, Coco Beware. Coco Beware used to lose all the time. He had that bird. He would come in and they would be playing that song. Uh, I got a new dance. It's called The Bird. I can't remember who did that. One of the guys, he used to, him and Prince, they, they were, but he used to come in, Coco Beware, he had a bird on a, a parrot and he used to go like this and the birds. And I used to love that when I was a kid. I used to love that so much. So it was Coco Beware. He used to lose all the time. And then Junkyard Dog, the black wrestlers, they used to make him lose all the time. But Junkyard Dog would win you know, a little bit every once in a while, but I, that was Junkyard Dog, one of my favorite wrestlers back in the day. All right, that's way back in the day. That's way, way back. That's like in the what the early 80s. Okay, thanks, Black Wolf. Uh, T Jones says FMG right now, the street from Umar's uh, future hub. Oh, yeah, I know. Um, did anyone look up there? Well, that would be ironic, huh? If he started live streaming from one of these correctional facilities, I, I, it would be sad though, T Jones. I would be so sad. It, it would be such a tragedy. Uh, let me go look up. Uh, let me go get to it. Uh, Wilmington. I, I told y'all we're going to take our time to, today. Okay. Tomorrow's show is going to be a lot shorter. Wilmington, Delaware uh, weather. I just want, yeah, it's, 30, it's not too cold. It's 39 degrees out there. Uh, it looks like tomorrow's going to be 34. By Saturday, it'll get down to 30 degrees. Uh, but Umar's nowhere to be found on the five-year anniversary. Uh, five-year anniversary. Thanks so much, T. Jones. Uh, 
And then uh, Sigmund says he claims that he may be related to Harry Tubman and Chad Ochocinco. <laughs> now he claims that he could be the Black Christ because the alien punched him in the face. So get this. Yeah. He did. He There is some, some stuff going on with, between Umar, Chad Ochocinco, and um, Shannon Sharp. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, and it's just a quick side, uh, <coughs> excuse me, it's a quick sidebar. Uh, I didn't go back to the video. Um, but Shannon Sharp on Club Shay Shay today, and it already is over a million views. So I was watching it before I started the show, and it just uh, came up. He had on, and I don't forgot who the lady's name is. You guys, everybody knows who she is. Um, Monique. He had Monique on there. And there's a segment in there, and I don't know if it's in the full interview or if it's just something that they play, but Shannon Sharp says something like, yeah, you know, they'd be saying that I only date uh, white women or blah, blah, blah. And 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 I think he's talking about Umar because Umar has been going at oh, Chad Ochocinco and Shannon Sharp about them dating white. I don't know if Chad Ochocinco got white, whatever. I don't even care if they business. But um, Shannon Sharp says, I got black kids, though. And she's like, yeah, I know. So what are you talking about? But I think that's in references, a reference to Umar. We'll see what happens. Because see, if Umar sees that, He's going to respond. He's going to say something, make some some shady comments and go and, and say something because uh, he's always crowd chasing like that. You know, um, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But I, I don't I don't think um, I never heard him said he was he was related to Chad Ochoa, but he did say that he might be related to Harriet Tubman. He did say that. And this whole other stuff, we're going to get into the whole alien stuff in another video. That's well, Umar, he, he's something else. Uh, I'll say this out of all the years and uh, all the videos that I've watched with Umar. And, and researching this guy, I've never heard him tell that story. Never. Not one time. Okay, that's telling in and of itself. Okay, we're going to leave it at that. All right. Thanks, Sigmund. Uh, skinny uh, boy, 20 boy says he related to Jay Morrison. Yeah, you, you write about that. <laughs> he related to Jay Morrison and Polite. <laughs> Jay Morrison is such a goofy. He really is. People don't even uh, follow his videos anymore. His his YouTube page is it's a it's a uh, social media desert. He be trying to do Instagram videos. There ain't nobody watching that stuff. He tricked off all that money. He, I don't even know if he gives updates about the Tulsa fund. That's just such a scam. It's just such a scam. Wasted uh, millions and millions of, of, pe of black people's money like that. He don't have no shame for it whatsoever. No shame. Uh, thanks for the super chat. Black Wolf says, oh, okay, okay, Lennon, uh, been rolling with you since you, uh, your very first Umar vid, Dr. Umar Chapter 1, way before Super Chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back then, there was, there was no Super Chats because they didn't have that function. Um, and I remember at a certain point, people said, you need to get, you need to get, because uh, uh, once it stays, YouTube started having Super Chats, they, people, people in the chat room said, no, go keep And I said, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And I finally did it. You know, and then, then I ended up getting, uh, sharing my PayPal, and then people asked for Cash Apps. And so I put the Cash App link there too. And uh, I'm glad that I did, you know, and I, I really appreciate the support and um, I really do. Uh, thank you all so much. Thanks for being here. Thanks for hanging out, having a good time. We always enjoy each other's company. People in the chat room, Cooker Chats Undefeated. But I really do appreciate the support. OK, thank you so much. Yeah, Black Wolf, that was way back in the day. Boy, that was, that was something else. The memories. OK, all right, let's get back to it. Here we go. Booker T. Washington. And I did even more research to learn that the great Dr. George Washington Carver, the mathematician and botanist and agricultural scientist that he was, actually came to St. Paul's College to pay a visit to Father Russell, the founder. So we began a fundraising campaign immediately. St. Paul's had chosen an auction company, Motley's. And Motley's auction was responsible for selling the campus. I called them up, told them I wanted it. I didn't have any money. They said, well, see how much you can get. Put in the bid. Let's see what happens. So I sent in the bid paperwork. I had a <laughs> lecture right. in St. Louis that was scheduled. I don't mean to pause it, but you're absolutely right, Ros Rosalind. You're absolutely right. There was a time where Umar was talking about putting together like a Boy Scout program for black boys. You guys know that? So it's time you're talking about an after school program. We're gonna take them out into the to nature and all this kind of stuff. And he was collecting money for that stuff too. <laughs> Boy, that would be one of the funniest things ever in history. <laughs> Find out who might relate to Eminem. <laughs> he related to Eminem, and let me stop. Not too long after that. I collected my very first public donation for the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy at my St. Louis, Missouri lecture. 
And I want to say thank you right now. Thank you to the brothers and sisters of St. Louis, Missouri for giving me that very first donation. I wasn't comfortable asking you all for money. Okay. Uh, he lying too, too because he was collecting money for different iterations of the school scams. He's, he's, he's specifically talking about St. Paul's. I want to make that point real quick. Okay, there's other scams that he was running where he was making these promises that to work with black boys. Uh, there was another thing. It was community gardens that we were going to teach the boys how to. This is not a school, but he's going to in a community teach them how to grow their own uh, herbs and vegetables, that kind of thing. Another one was martial arts. Can you imagine Umar teaching martial arts? Come on now, stop. You just such a scam. That Dr. Umar, you need to leave that situation. I had got to a certain point and PayPal had discounted. I collected my very first public donation for the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy at my St. Louis, Missouri lecture. And I want to say thank you right now. Thank you to the brothers and sisters of St. Louis, Missouri for giving me that very first donation. I wasn't comfortable asking you all for money. Those of you who were there probably remember that, that I wasn't comfortable. I had never asked for money publicly and I didn't want to because I just seen the black community get swindled and hustled so mm. often you know with public collections that i did not you know want that for myself but excuse me for one second brothers and sisters but anyhow i collected it and that money that was raised in st louis i think it was approximately 500 dollars, was used to pay an attorney in new york to put forward the bid on my behalf for the St. Paul's College. They invited me down mm -hmm. to St. Paul's. I went on a tour. I loved it. For a mere $2 million, you would get an entire historically black college for just $2 million. So I started asking people to send in the checks and money orders payable to the FDMG Academy. I immediately went to the bank. And at the bank, I started an account for the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy. And you started sending in your donations. I started getting complaints from black people that it was too inconvenient to have to mail in a check of money order. They recommended that I start some sort of online fundraising platform for people who were too lazy to go to the mailbox. Mm, so we started accepting lazy. money from PayPal that got to a certain point and PayPal had discontinued that fundraiser. The money is still there. We still have it <laughs> and we will be using it. But they said that they would need further paperwork in order for them to lift, in order for them to allow me to continue to collect money through PayPal. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, we went back to the checks and the money orders and the donations at the lectures, which what didn't come that frequently. Most of the donations had come by check and PayPal had come by shut, money listen, So once again, real quick, rambling, PayPal shut him down because of fraud. The other thing is he ended up setting up at least two other PayPal accounts to collect money later on down the line started and brothers and sisters said it's too inconvenient to keep on sending any checks and money orders if we can't send the money in through paypal then you need to start some sort of online platform because paypal is a money exchange system but it's not necessarily an online fundraising platform although you can fundraise through it so i started doing some research and i looked at kickstarter and i looked at all the different online platforms because that really was not my milieu <laughs> I'm a social Maybe. scientist, not a fundraising <laughs> expert. So Be we fun. went with GoFundMe and things started to go fine for a while. I wasn't really interested in doing GoFundMe because they take money out. I think GoFundMe gets between three and 5% of the money and then we pay, which is GoFundMe's financial management company that actually transfer the funds. They get about three to 5%. Overall, almost 10%, I believe, of the money collected That's another lie. He had untold our so I forgot I stopped counting the lies already, but that this guy just be lying. He just be lying. Okay, this isn't his mama's closet, too, right here. This is this is the the other place that they got evicted from. This is where he flipped the phone and, and showed his living conditions. Remember that? That's that's not that's not he was still living with his mama then. But the, the where he's be live streaming now for like the last what four years? That's uh, his mama closet, okay? But that's not the same as, as right here where he's at inside this video. Yeah, there's got to be five already. I, I, I'm not going to count because then I'm going to run out of paper. <laughs> right, I already know I'm going to run out of paper. I'm going to run out of paper. I don't, I don't even want to. No point, yeah. You know. So we started raising money. 
And then in 2015, a uh, make sure you guys, uh, if you haven't voted, there is a poll up because I'm going to close this poll in the next couple of minutes. The question is when, will, and I'll start another poll. When will FMG open? Uh, right now, there are uh, 914 votes. Let's see if we can get that up to 1,000. When we get to 1,000 votes, we'll go ahead and in and, and that poll. Uh, right now, tw uh, 2024, 4% say it's going to open in 2024. Uh, 2025, 4% say that FMG is going to open in 2025. 12% say it's going to open in 2055. And an overwhelming 80% say that it's going to open. FMG is going to open 3085. Okay, so if you haven't voted, get your votes in. ASAP, as soon as we get to a thousand votes, we'll close that poll out and then we'll start another one. Okay, here we go. And I thank you all so much too for tuning on in, everybody. We got about 820 people in the building. Y'all like the button. I appreciate it. Poor decision on my behalf led to a certain individual who decided to try to assassinate my character. Who is he talking about? Cookie Crush that because she did not get what she wanted from me. Who is he talking and about? So she started spreading rumors that I was spending the FDMG Academy money on her, which is quite interesting because if that were the case, that means there should be some sort of paper trail of me using the FDMG credit card or writing some sort of FDMG check to a hotel, <laughs> to a vacation company, to a restaurant, <laughs> to somewhere. Airline, there should be some track. <laughs> Exactly. Okay. He's talking about the conscious stripper. For those of y'all who don't know, Uma was dealing with a stripper. Okay. He, he they called her conscious stripper because it makes it eat more palatable, right? They, you can't just say a stripper. Okay. I don't what's the strip club, the, the the real popular one down in Atlanta? Uh Magic City. Okay. I ain't never been to no strip club, just to be clear. Script club. I've never been to no strip club. Uh, but th that's the one that people be talking about. Well, it's no different than a stripper in, in, from Magic City. They just called her conscious. Because <laughs> she know how to make bean pies. I don't know. You know, you can make women, you don't make a bean pie, you conscious. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you burn some incense, put on all the dashiki dress, and you know how to uh, make a bean pie. <laughs> you about as conscious as they come. <laughs> <laughs> they called her a conscious stripper. I said, word. <laughs> I said, what? I said, well, okay. But that's why that because it makes it more palatable to say I was just a stripper from, from, from Magic City. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, like, Umar Slick. That's what we're talking about. People dealing with that stripper. There's receipts online. We ain't, we ain't gonna bring all that up right now. Okay. The receipts are all on now. Yeah, he, bring, he gotta bring out the conscious stripper. <laughs> The, the conscious <laughs> is this the scripper and things? Yeah, she had that blonde weave too, boys. She was rocking that blonde weave real good too. I said, Go ahead. He, he blaming all the women though. See, he said she trying to he she trying to assassinate his character, <laughs> right? While well, he crushed them cookies, I guess. So, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Try with look, you know Black Mario know what I was saying. Like, yeah, I was there yesterday. I said, oh no. <laughs> I said, oh no. <laughs> He's there, yeah, isn't it? You rather talk about my right up my alley. I was <laughs> do, 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 do. I go and they start playing Mario theme song. Okay. Let me get up out of here because <laughs> y'all tripping. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I can't read that. Let me get up out of here. Y'all crazy? Well, Cook Crush Chat is undefeated. I gotta get up out of there, local. Y'all getting getting uh, huffy puffy. Here we go. <laughs> record of monies being spent from our account for her benefit, which was totally false. It was totally bogus. I was asked <laughs> to try and defend myself from those rumors, <laughs> which I chose not to get involved. <laughs> I can't read that. Y'all, come on now. <laughs> She's a highly uh, intelligent woman. Though. I'll tell you that right now. She's very talented, too, because she used to do... Um, Impersonation. She used to do Tina Turner real good. Like, Lenny, how you know that? <laughs> oh, no, it's online. Okay, cut it out.
then. Here we and go. The reason I chose not <laughs> to get involved in it is because I knew that most of you who have media outlets, be they Facebook or YouTube or Instagram, whether it be an online radio show or whether it be a regular broadcast radio show, I knew <laughs> my wisdom had told me, my ancestors had communicated to me that Dr. Umar, you need to leave that situation alone because no one is after the truth. They don't care about the truth. They want drama, they want sensationalism. And the very worst thing you can do is get involved in trying to defend yourself from people who could care less of whether you're guilty or not. They just want attention, okay? They just want to see drama. So I stayed away from it. I never listened to a single interview. I didn't participate in a single interview. He For lied. the first time, a couple of weeks ago while I was in Atlanta, <laughs> because I saw that the school purchase deal seemed to be likely to go through. So I said, you know what? We're going to get this school. So let me listen in on some of this garbage that went on a couple years ago. So I listened to an interview that was done with her. And I thank God that you I never listened back in 2015. Because had I He's listened here. four years ago, definitely, definitely, had I listened four years ago, I probably would have felt the need to respond. The lies were excessive. The lies were preposterous. And, and the lies were absolutely, absolutely ridiculous. Now, what perturbed me even more than her conduct <laughs> was the conduct of black men and women who claim to be conscious, who claim to be advocates for our people, who were interviewing this woman and not a single person dared to ask her the most important question that could be asked. And that is what proof or evidence can you produce that shows this man has mismanaged even a penny of the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy money. All the interviews that were done, not a single person asked the question of evidence. They were so happy to see that the most popular and the most powerful and the most successful and internationally renowned scholar in this country right now of our race was at the brink of being destroyed. And they couldn't resist the opportunity to run in and try to destroy me, but it did not it work. Ain't that serious. It's but not after that she serious. was done, other than- uh, Here she go right here. This is an old, old video, cause she used to do impersonations. Okay, there's other stuff I would not show. I won't play any audio, but just to go to show you, she was she's talented. She can dance real good too. This was her impersonation of Janet Jackson. You making that money? Umar back. He watching this right now, just mad. Look at this guy. He's really, just, yeah, baby. We, 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 I just uh, get a couple of dollars if I could see a little. Let me. She's real talented. She could dance real good. You know, she, she does really good impersonations. <laughs> Someone said that was Umar. That was Umar giving her the money. <laughs> if y'all don't stop. Now, this is from a long time ago. Okay. So this is what she's talking about. There's other videos, too, with her. I, would, I wouldn't show it on here. But she's uh, she's talented. She is. But they called her conscious. Rose conscious. rushed in. Many of the personalities in the conscious community, many of those who you listen to on YouTube, had something negative to say about me and the fundraising campaign. And I was amazed because many of these people I had helped, many of these people made money selling my merchandise, many of these people had brought me in for lectures, but the minute they saw an opportunity to disgrace my name and get some YouTube views, they joined in on the conspiracy of 2015. A conspiracy. But that's huh? four years ago. We need not wallow in that. I'm simply recounting some of the struggle that has taken place on the road to getting to where we are now. And that is, brothers and sisters, that is. And I am happy to say that it is, that as I <laughs> say on the ninth day of February. You guys don't do that. God, 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 come on. Good crush that, please. 
<laughs> oh, you have no idea. I got I have I have folders, dossiers on people. You guys have no idea. I mean, there's people I can go at boy I day. I it'd be very profitable too. But I'm I just I'm not about that, you know. I I've, I've always felt like you, uh, that I have to maintain I know we goof off, but there has to be some level of respectability. And um, there's a lot of people I have receipts on that I, that I could have easily gone at, but that's not that's not what I'm about. I think Umar is a, a unique case. Also, he's uh, I've done so much research into this guy, you know. Um, oh, a puppet D says Ifa Tunde's bus driver here. <laughs> I'm on my way back from Alaska, dropping the kids home. <laughs> Why is it the thing is so behind? Why is the thing so behind in the back? You see this? Do I need to refresh it? Because look at Ubar trying to give her that money. He, they, all right. Uh, I'm on my way back from Alaska dropping the kids home. <laughs> I like how you said that, dropping the kids home. I'll be back to pick him up and the others so we can be on time. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <laughs> all right. Make sure you have your snacks on deck. Plenty of monster drinks, okay? <laughs> All right. Thanks, Puppet D, for the super chat. I appreciate it. Yeah, we've already said he's going to be busting people out from different states. I said, really? Okay. Let's get back to it here. On the ninth day of the most important Black History Month in America. Yeah, we need 15 more votes on the poll so that I can end that poll. 80% say 30, that the FDB is going to open 30, 85. 12% say 2055, 4% say 2025, and 4% say 2024. Okay, we need uh, 14. No, we need 12 more votes, and I'll close in that poll and I'll set up another. Here we go. In history. And I call it that because this is the year of the quadricentennial. This August, we crossed the finish line of 400 yeah, I, I, years mm -hmm. of I'm fighting against manage. white racism and oppression in these United States of America, <laughs> counting from the day that our ancestors were first brought yeah. here in August of 1619. August the 20th of 1619, they arrived. August the 21st of 1619 would have been their first sunrise under white power. And what so on August the 21st of 2019, we will commemorate, we will remember 400 years of the struggle of our ancestors to bring us to where we are. We may not be in a great place, brothers and sisters, but we are in a much better place than where we were 300 years ago, where we were 400 years ago, and where we were, okay, uh -huh. 100 years ago. Yeah. So brothers and sisters, I am here today to let you know that we have succeeded. To all the brothers and sisters who donated, who supported me through the thick and the thin, this has been a very long four and a half years, brothers and sisters, a very long four and a half years. And I'm just glad to say that we have our school. All I right. We're here today. <clears throat> Excuse me. We just hit a thousand uh, votes. So final tallies. When will FDMG open? Uh, 4% 2024, 4% said 2025, 12% said 2055 and a whopping overwhelming 80% say that FDMG will open 3085. And that sounds about right to me. I'll go ahead and end this poll. All right. I'm going to set up another one. I don't know what, what what's the next poll we should do. Y'all let me know in the chat room. Here we go. Brothers and sisters, to let you know that we have our school. With that being said, for those brothers and sisters who swallowed some of the Kool-Aid that was being sold to you by Hotep hustlers, con artists, and, and others in our community who through whatever way, influenced you to stop supporting Dr. Umar Johnson. I forgive you. And I thank you for the fact that you did donate at some point in this four and a half year struggle to purchase this school. I thank you anyway. I would probably argue that no more than 12 people out of the tens of thousands of donations that we have received, no more than 12 people out of the tens of- He's whack. I want my money back. We should all request a refund. Yeah, did, how much did you send? Uh, get a clue, do you mind telling us? How much money did you donate? Uh, there's there's people in here too that used to be Umar supporters. Some of them donated, some of them did not. I never, um, I never uh, uh, donated to Umar. I never would unless he decided to get his life turned around. And he was serious about it. I was supporting for sure. Uh, how many lies have Umar told during the stream? <laughs> yeah, that's another. That's a good poll question. Yeah, you guys have any other suggestions? Let me know. I can just come up with one too. 
Will Umi ever replace those? <laughs> you saying fifty dollars? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's it's sad. You know, Umar he's collected uh, millions of dollars at this point, and there's still no school. Five years uh, into this uh, Wilmington school scam, specifically, still no school. Not one child has been educated in fourteen years into the long con. It just keeps going and going and going. Uh, did you see? Yeah, I, I did because everyone's been talking about. I, I didn't get to watch the whole thing, but I watched enough. And I, what came to mind? I'm gonna do a separate video for this for members, and then I'll, we'll cover it at some point uh, for everyone. But the thing is that um, he's never told told that story at all. At, that was the first time I've, and that, that's just it's it, that makes no sense. It makes no sense because he he always running his mouth. For him to only tell it one time, he does it all. What uh, two, 20 years into him being online, skimming his uh, scheming and scamming. All right, here we go. Thousands of donations that we have received, no more, no more than a dozen, had decided to stop donating, okay? No more than a dozen, okay? 99.9% .9 of all of you who supported me in the beginning supported me all the way up to the end. The letters of support, the letters of encouragement, the letters of faith, the prayers that you all sent forward on behalf of your brother, I can't thank you enough because there were a couple times there were a couple times when I said to the ancestors, this is getting to be too much. Uh, it, it, it was getting to be too much. And I said that uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to refund all of the money to everybody. Let me just give it all back. And let me just go back to being a regular rank and file school psychologist. Let me go ahead and get my license and just do what I'm going to do because this is just getting to be too much. But the ancestors said no. We chose you and you were chosen for these times. And if you quit now, you don't not only quit on yourself, you don't quit on black boys everywhere. You don't okay, new poll is up. Make sure you guys place your vote. We got 835 people. If you place your vote, make sure you like it. If you haven't liked already, I appreciate it. Here we go. By the way, we're getting close to 70,000 subscribers. Um, I don't know what, it, what we would have to do in order to make that happen, but that would be awesome. That would be very awesome. I'll, I'll tell you what, if we do 70,000 subscribers uh let's say uh, within the next two or three live streams and i'll be on here covering other topics too consistently okay here we go don't quit on your donors but you quit on your ancestors these same ancestors <laughs> that you claim that you care so much oh about, my God. these same ancestors that you want to validate and verify and honor on august the 21st of 2019 you quit on them so the ancestor said, E5 Tunde, do what you must do, and you keep on going. So through Wow, this this poll is hot. This this poll is hot to trot, family. It is hot to trot. The question is, did Umar see an alien when he was a child? We already got 90 votes, 93 votes in already, family. We got 93. It is elections. We got 95 votes in, family. Uh, we as of right now, 20% say yes, 29% say no, and 51% say ET phone home. <laughs> All right, so let's get them votes in, family. We working, we work. We had 115 votes, family. Let's go. The four years when I would go to the slave dungeons and yeah, you donated a hundred. Okay. Yeah, I never donated. I, I never would. Not not to to this uh this school project scam because it is it's just a scam, you know. Uh, I, I just would not do it. And I, I've said it. I've, I've been on record. If Umar decided to get his life turned around and he was serious about it and he set up like a GoFundMe in order to get his own place, get his own car. Uh, you know, get himself cleaned up, get whatever services he needs in order to get his life back on track. I will support it. I'll be I'll be the first post person to donate and I will donate consistently, given that he was serious about it and that the money was going towards him getting his life turned around. OK, there's times in our lives when we need help. We need people to help us out. And, and you know, we get receive that help and then we, we take that baton and we move forward. OK, that's what I want for Umar. In Ghana, in Senegal, when we would go to the different spiritual towns in uh, Togo, in Benin, in South Africa, when I was in uh, Malawi, in Kenya, in Egypt, and taking the cruise down the Nile <laughs> River this past summer through Kemet. And Big sis, it says the alien. It was a yellow bone five five thick in the thighs. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I, I but I still. It's just how I am, you know. I still, I still believe. No, I, I, let me, let me take that back. I would like to see him turn his life around. Okay, that's what I would like to see. Okay, do I think that it's going to happen? I don't think it will, but that's what I would like to see. Okay. Ethiopia, you know, I just called on all the ancestors to bring me the power and the strength that I needed to see this thing through, and they finally did it. Oh, you so did. How much, donors, uh, Ed? Do you mind telling us how much did you donate? And it's so, so many of you. So, so many donors. 
I want to just name some. I have about 20 of these books right here, you know, and, and he, this is what I mean. He, no technology. He's not tech savvy. Okay. I have a degree in cybersecurity. Um, this guy, he, there's, he has no sense. It's, it's mind boggling. Okay. He's writing donation people's, people's names and addresses, how much they donated in notebooks, literally writing in these notebooks. He said he has 20 of them. We're right now converting all of the written information to computerized information. We're putting all this in the chart because we want to properly honor all of it. doesn't make any sense when they send in a donation, it's going to be digitized anyway. What are you saying? Anyway? The donors at a special ceremony at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. So just to say thank you to a few, this isn't everyone. This is no one from PayPal. This is no one from <laughs> GoFundMe. And one of the reasons I need you brothers and sisters who donated from PayPal and GoFundMe to get your receipts is you're going to send all that to me, okay, to help me make sure that you are given credit for the donations that you have contributed. So I'm going to contact yeah, GoFundMe is, and try to he get really all is. that donor information. I'm sure I should be able to pull it up on PayPal, but you would be such a big help to me. So you donated 100 and offered to teach car carpentry trade. Here's another person i've been telling people about this for years there's so many black people professionals who reached out to, to provide free services to ubar you get five years this could have this should have been this could have been done within 10 months if he had just accepted the help But again, he he has no intention of opening up school. See, once he opens up a school, he can't ask for donations to renovate anymore. Even though he already said renovations were done. He said that in February, then he said it more recently. They're, they're not done. Then you get to the next phase of operations, and he's just going to start asking for money for operation costs. This It's it's non-ending. An operating budget is going to be anywhere between 6 and $7 million, 6 and $8 million a year. Where's he going to come up with that money? Donations? But here's another person, Ed, right here. You, you support Umar, sent him $100. So people who said, did you donate? Well, here's someone who donated. Okay. And offered to teach carpentry. Which, according to Umar, is putting in carpet. We ain't going to get into that right now. If you would start collecting all your money now so that we can keep all of that and make sure that we log it correctly in our donor database. I also plan down the road in keeping with in the tradition of the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, who had the Black Star Line Steamship Company, which he incorporated 100 years ago. So the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy is coming 100 years, on the 100 year anniversary of the birth of the Black Star Line Steamship Corporation. That was 1919, and here we are in 2019. That was 1919, and here we are in 2019. So, brothers and sisters, I want to thank Brother Moses and Sister Serena of Sacramento, <laughs> California. Here we go. You made a donation of $50 on January the 22nd of 2017. Okay. I want to thank Brother Christopher Nashville, yeah, Tennessee. You, you mind he made a donation of $20 donate? on September the 14th of 2016. I want to thank Miss Cynthia McFadden, excuse me, I don't mean to say the last names, of Maryland, who mm -hmm. made a donation of $30 yep. on May the 8th. I want to thank uh, Sister Wanda from Philadelphia, right here in Philadelphia, May 11th, a donation of $100. I want to thank Sister Antonia of Orlando, Florida, $100. I want to thank Maya of Detroit, Sister Maya in <laughs> Detroit, a $5 money order followed by another $5 money order. I want to thank C. Smiley of Ontario, Canada. Shout out to Black Canada. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know that where this school is, and I'm going to announce that very soon. Most of the vote where is this for school is, it don't just belong to Black America. It doesn't just belong to the Black people in the state where the first academy will be. It doesn't just belong to Black people in the city where the first academy will be. The DNA, the financial and spiritual and cultural and historical DNA of all African people is on the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy. We have Canada donations. We have Europe donations. We have Africa donations. We have Caribbean donations. We have donations from all over the world. And I would argue that this is probably, this is probably. Yeah, there's people who me. still send the money.
Ohms. What's going on? Yeah, this is the video. So sad. Y'all know who you talking to? She downstairs. So sad. Remember, this is the same spot where he flipped the phone, and when he flipped the phone, he was living in filth. I have the receipts on that. He was he, he was evicted from there. His mama's on the paperwork too. Now, I have the previous eviction. He's on that, and his mama on that one too. There's another guy on that one too. I got it looked into him too. You guys will be a boy. I tell you, it's crazy. And that other dude wasn't there because of the mama. She, she he was there because of Umar. That's his mama calling him. Okay, and, and I already know exactly what the conversation is because I've gone through it over and over again. And I will be brief out of respect for the mama, but someone comes to the door and they're looking for Umar and she's scared. That's why she's calling Umar. But where this school is, it don't just belong to black America. It doesn't just belong to the black people in the state where the first academy will be. It doesn't just belong to black people in the city where the first academy will be. The DNA, the financial and spiritual yep, that's what and she cultural said. Oh, that's and what he said. DNA of all African people is on the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy. We have Canada donations. We have Europe donations. Mm -hmm. We have Africa donations. We have Caribbean donations. We have donations from all over the world. And I would argue that this is probably, this is probably, excuse me, Ohms, what's going on? Okay, don't, okay. So sad. So the black guy trying to come again. He was ringing the door and Umar Tet says, okay, don't. Okay, leave that door alone. Okay, well, what are you doing now? Okay, I'm going to call you back in a few. But you good? All right, pardon the interruption. Sister Stacia of Yonkers, New York. He don't call her back either. This goes, the video goes on for like an hour and something. He don't even. Sister Stacia of Yonkers, New York, $1,000 money order on March. Yeah, he sure the does. 6th. He sure that does. That is the anniversary of the release of. See, that, that's the thing. You're living in your mama's house. The, the way I look at it is, whether it's your mama or it's another woman, if the woman's calling you, obviously she's distressed. She's worried about something. Why don't you get up off your... F well, let me tell y'all what I would have done. Hold on, I'm going to come downstairs right now and handle this. There have been times we lodged and I said, hold on, I'm going to be right back. I got to handle something. That's what I men in here. That's what we that's what we supposed to do. Right. Whether it's your mama, it's your sister, it's your wife, if your girlfriend, it could even be your ex-wife. You just out of, you know. Well, your female cousin, same thing. But what does Umar do? I'm going to call you back. He don't call her back. Of my first book psychoacademic holocaust that is also the anniversary of ghanaian independence that is also he go right back yes. and running his so mouth i was blessed on the anniversary of my book and on the anniversary of ghanaian independence with a one thousand dollar donation from sister stacia of yonkers we have a in uh uh, uh in uh, a pat a mr <laughs> and miss patterson from montclair no that's right at least do that Let's go to the woods. Who is it? <laughs> I've done that so many times. And you put bass in your voice just in case. You're right about that, though. <laughs> Someone said, leave Ghana out of there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Don't be saying nothing about Ghana. 
<laughs> Lennon, uh, uh, see, you have a great heart, it seems to me, but this guy, he seems to be... No, I, I get it. I, I get it. Um, I know what it's like to be down and out, but I guess there's a difference. There's a difference in just being down and out because you've made bad choices versus being bad, down and out because, you know, you're... you're just criminal minded. So there is a difference, you know? Um, again, I'm not saying that he he's going to redeem himself or that he's going to get his life turned around. I'm just saying that I would like to see it and it would be a powerful story. I think it would inspire a lot of people in particular black men who've lost their way. And, and, and many of us, we've lost myself included. We, there's been times I, I was just totally lost. Okay. Still not where I would like to be in life, but that's besides the point. You know, the point is that I've made changes and I'm doing a whole lot better these days. You go back seven, eight years ago, you know, it, 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 it wasn't good. You know, you go back uh, to 2008 when I started getting into conspiracy theories. That set me up. But but the difference is that I've, I've made changes and I, I want to see that with Umar. It's it's different. But but I, I, I think that that. Uh, uh, if you look at a, a, a character arc, because I tend to look at things that way when it comes to people and personalities, that it would be a powerful story arc or, uh, if Umar decided to make some positive changes and get off of this track and get on a better track and get his life turned around. OK, I'm not saying that he's going to redeem himself, Sigmund. I'm saying that I would like to see it. That's all. You know, and that goes for anybody, you know, anybody, people who've done all kind of horrible stuff. Way far beyond, way worse than what Umar is doing. Same thing. I would like to see everyone uh, get things turned around. You know, will he do it? Probably not. You know, listen. If 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 Umar reached out to me and said, "Listen, I, I want to get things turned around. Can you tell me uh, what do you think I should do? And how do you how I, I would I would literally sit down and talk with this guy and give him my very best advice." Probably do some research to get him some resources that he can go look into to get some professional services too. You know, um, but can you imagine if, if he did get things turned around and then still had the ability to speak with people the way that he does and, and captivate people the way that he does? Because someone was asking earlier, I can't believe people still sending him money. Yeah, but that's because he, he runs his mouth. That's all they do. And he, he captivates people that way. It's criminal minded when he does it, but he still has that ability. Well, can you imagine what if he, would, he did that for the good? Hey, what if he brought it to the light side? See, instead of being a Sith Lord. Thanks, uh, Sigmund, for the super chat. Uh, Geo Scott says, I've never donated to Umar, and your videos kept me from getting scammed by Umar the Goonie Goon. <laughs> well, good. That's all I'm saying. Because the thing is that it doesn't help Umar when people send him money anyway. It doesn't help him. It just enables him to continue to do what he's doing and live a self-destructive lifestyle. That That's what it does. You know, but the other thing is that that people, you know, there, there's if you want to give money to, to people or to an organization, there's plenty of people who are more deserving. There's plenty of organizations out there that are providing services to black people, providing services to black boys, black girls, providing school services to black boys and black girls that you can donate to. I mean, there's people online that that uh, are in need that that are legitimately in, in need and you can help. You know, but why? Why would it? What, what makes sense? Does it make the sense? Here we are five years since he acquired these trap bandos and not one child has been educated. Uh, and, and what what keeps coming in my mind, uh, Geo Scholar, is two. One is the video where this woman ran up on him. This was a couple of days ago while he was lecturing. She ran up on to this, ran up to the stage. But the other video was when Umar was up there at them trap banners, and I, I I'm, I'm not gonna play it here because it's sad. It's one of the saddest, if not the saddest, video that I've ever seen dealing with this guy. He's out there running his mouth, talking about FDMG this, and there's this lady that approaches and starts talking to him, and she talks about how she has a special needs child, and that she she was from Philadelphia, she moved to Wilmington because she wanted to enroll her son in FDMG. Here we are now, five years later, since he acquired these trap banners, and he still doesn't have anything up and running. Anybody remember that? Hit the one on that one. That was one of the most, it was tragic. And they listened to this woman and how Umar was spinning it like, yeah, well, we just need to do this. We're going to be ready. We're going to be ready and blah, blah, blah. Just run the same scheme. And, and this lady, she's li just listening. It's one of the saddest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, y'all, if, if y'all want to send some money, just send it to, to a, 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 someone or organization that's doing good. Because he's not, he's, he ain't doing no good. He ain't just running his mouth. That was one of the saddest things 
I have it archived too. And and just so that because I'm not gonna pull because we got still got we got a lot to um yeah, I know top top ten said this would be a number one for me. When they had the little girl holding the phone, that would be in the top five, probably be top three. So I'm not making this up. Okay, so here, right here, uh, this is being co-signed by the Cookie Crush chat. I don't lie on people. I can actually go and pull it up for y'all and show it to you. It's one of the saddest things that I've seen, if not the saddest thing that I've seen in this whole Umar Johnson saga, it's, especially because the, the boy was with special needs. What disturbs me is the intent I perceive. Yeah, no, I, I understand. Yeah, I, I totally, I totally get it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Umar's criminal minded, so his intent is always going to come from that. It's going to come from the perspective of of trying to get over on people. You know, it's nothing about being honest and being forthright. Everything is is how can I manipulate people in order to get something out of them? Okay. Speaking of, and thanks, Sigmund, uh, for the super chat. Let me make sure I got that. And thanks, Geo Scholar, too, as well. Speaking of um, Umar Johnson, uh, you know, manipulating people. Uh, to get things i'm, I'm going to play a video right here okay and I, I haven't verified any of this but this is just something that came across the uh, last couple of days it's very very short but i want to play it to y'all because i've talked a lot about how umar you know he goes and in these when he goes to speak it's not about uplifting people because most of the time he's talking bad about black people anyway whether he's doing it in a lecture or if he's doing it you know standing inside of his uh, rental car or if he's up there in the trap battles or in his mama's closet he's, he just talks bad about black people but but another thing is that it also gains access to women. That's how he gained access to the conscious stripper. She's a, and I know people say you keep saying she's talented. No, she's talented. Okay, she's talented. She's pretty. Okay, she's a pretty young lady. And the way I look at it, if, if Umar uh, didn't run his mouth and speak and, and talk all that game, you think she would have been dealing with him? No, she wouldn't have been dealing with him. He's a goofy. <laughs> I'm just telling you right now, he's a goofy. But the thing is that Umar's his whole uh, focus is either on money, it's on uh, sex, meaning cookies, or it's on turning the heat down. And all this is done through manipulation. And so there are plenty of women who have dealt with Umar, many of which, but well, I ain't gonna say many. Some, uh, some of them I've spoken with offline. Some of them I've spoken with through email. That have dealt with Umar. And I'm talking about in in personal ways. If you guys catch my drift, one woman says she went went into, into with, he stand with his mama and said it was just filth and trash all over the place and uh, dishes all over the, with uh, rotten food. I can't stand that. I, I can't stand no food being left out, even if it's just left out for three or four hours. I said no, no, no. But it said mold all on the food on the plate and all that stuff. Let me play something for y'all. This is very brief. We'll get back to it. Here we go. We got 820 people in the building. See, we got this thing, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And the white man knows you well because he's written books on you. How many books? They say the Negro entrepreneur. Who's that queen? Keep speaking, King. Keep speaking, King. Keep speaking. Here we go. <laughs> I don't know what he, I would even notice this shit. <laughs> you always noticing stuff. <laughs> Black Wolf always noticing stuff. I always, I didn't see all that. <laughs> Wrong cast. <laughs> <laughs> Raw cash has to be up there as one of the top Umar sayings of all time and thought his personality disorder. Those two. We need to do a poll on that. That's our next poll. Okay. We need to get 38 more votes for this current poll before we move on to the next one. Okay. Did Umar see an alien when he was a child? 21% say yes, 32% say no, and 47% say ET phone home. <laughs> <laughs> The next one we gonna do is we gonna do the the, the top sayings. Raw cash is gonna be on there. With all this personality <laughs> disorder, pajama mama is gonna be on there too. We got to come up with it. I think that's all we can put on. It might get up five on them. Uh, pajama mama. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was wild, huh? <laughs> it was. It was about to go down. It was about to go all the way down. <laughs> Who I was like, yeah, that's quick. <laughs> you meant, oh, okay, I'll play. Let me run that back. Y'all want to run it back? Okay, okay, I'll, I'll run it back. <laughs> People are like, what happened? <laughs> Umar is a demotivator. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because I, 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 I had this whole thing in my mind, a, a character, like a skit character, that he all he does is demotivational speaker speaking. <laughs> You're a loser. Okay. You're never going to amount to anything. You know that, right? <laughs> your mama ugly. Your daddy ugly. You ugly. You're going to be ugly, too. <laughs> you know, that's so, it's so mean. It's so mean. I'm sorry. I shouldn't even have spoken that. <laughs> okay, I apologize. Okay, where were we? <laughs> oh, let me, let me run that back. Thanks, a lady, for the super chat. Did I did I miss anybody else? Jonathan sent the super Thanks so much, Jonathan, for the super sticker. I appreciate it. Okay, let, let, let me run that back. Here we go. Look at the shoes. <laughs> what kind of shoes? <laughs> Black Wolf be noticing stuff. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, I don't know what he got on. <laughs> Look at this guy. Whoa, who are funny. Here we go. See, we got this thing, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And the white man knows you well because he's written books on you. They say the Negro entrepreneur. Who's that queen? Keep speaking, King. Keep speaking, King. Keep speaking, King. Keep speaking, King. Don't stop. Don't change the energy. 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 Don't she sure did. That's exactly what she said. She ran up on him. It looked like she tried to throw her purse at him. Listen, a woman's not just going to do that. Well, how, how does that benefit her? They don't get that mad and go up, run up, unless they done dealt with you, you done did something that you wasn't supposed to. Listen, I've been telling people for a long time that many women that Umar ran through, this just another one. And what ended up happening, he, she dealt with him last night. He probably said he was going to do something for her. He, she was texting him. He didn't text her back or whatever. She got mad. She came to the thing. When he started running his mouth, she ran up on there and looked like she tried to throw her purse at him. Now, people just don't randomly do that. And did y'all hear the conversation? Okay, again, I ain't verified none of this. So I don't know. Okay, but I'm just saying from what I saw and what I heard. Watch this. Let's go step by step. Here we go. Hey. Got this thing, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And the white man knows you well because he's written books on you. How many books? They say the Negro entrepreneur. Who's that queen? He says, Who's that queen? What, Uma? Well, listen to what she said. Keep speaking, King. She said, I was with you last night. Run it back. Who's that queen? Keep speaking, King. Keep speaking. Umar says, You wasn't with me last night. Mm hmm. She said, He said, I ain't, I ain't seen you uh, in, one day in my life. She says, Look at look him, look at my book, look in my bag. She got, she had some kind of receipt. Keep speaking, King. Keep speaking, King. Don't stop. Don't change the energy. I never seen this, don't sister, change in my life. this sister a day in my life. Boy, I tell you. Don't change the energy. Brothers and sisters, don't change the energy. Don't change the energy. Yeah, clap for the answers. Don't, boy, boy. Again, I don't I don't know what happened. It just it seems odd. I, I tend to believe what the, the woman was saying, uh, and Umar's reaction. It just reflects that something went down and he's you know, who's whose woman is that? Who's queen is that? See, we got this thing, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And the white man knows you well because he's written books on you. How many books? They say the Negro entrepreneur. Something happened because I wonder if the lady, is that the same lady who said how many books? Let's listen to her voice. Who's that queen? 
Keep speaking. That's the same lady that said how many books. She was rushing the stage when he she said that. When he said that. See, we got this thing, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And the white man knows you well because he's written books on you. How many books? They say the Negro entrepreneur. Yeah, she threw her, her bag at him. See, we got this thing, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. What a minute. See, we got this thing, brothers and sisters. It's like he's motioning to her, though. Look at look at his right hand, fingertips. See, we got this thing, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And the white man knows you well because he's written books on you. How many books? They say the Negro entrepreneur. Who's that queen? Keep speaking, King. Keep speaking, King. Keep speaking, King. Keep speaking, King. Don't stop. Don't change the energy. 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 The the hand gesture could be coincidental, but it, it's. I wonder if he was mocking her in some kind of way. See, we got this thing, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And the white man knows you well because he's written books on you. No, see, she's already moving because you see security. Look how the security, they start to step forward. See, we got this thing, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And the white man knows you well because he's written books see, on you. See, right there, right there. On you. How many books? They say the Negro entrepreneur. Who's that queen? Keep speaking, King. Keep speaking, King. Keep speaking, King. Keep speaking, King. Don't stop. Don't change the energy. Don't change the energy. Don't change the energy. Don't change the energy. I I, listen, I don't believe him because it doesn't benefit any woman to do that. Okay. I, I don't believe Umar. Maybe that should be our next poll. Okay, let's call this other poll right, right quick. Did Umar see an alien when he was a child? 24% said yes. 32 said percent said no and 45 percent said et phone home okay which is basically no but we're going we're going to get over there thank you all so much for, for uh voting on that one Let, let's put up a poll for this one and then we're going to get back to it it's just it's interesting as i'm looking at this um uh, more closely because i've saw the video but i didn't really uh look into it too much i just downloaded it let's do a poll um was umar how can I say this and, and be just to say is Umar <clears throat> telling the truth? We'll just say that truth about the bag lady. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's that's what came to mind. I don't know. <laughs> yes. And we're just going to do yes or no. OK. Should we say it that way? Um, let's say it another way. I think that's a bit ambiguous. Um, did Umar know the bag lady? We'll, we'll do that. Did Umar know the bag lady from last night? <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Did Umar know the bag lady from last night? Okay, that's it's a yes or no one. We're gonna start that poll. Let's go. All right. Wow, it's, it's 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 wild, you know. And I, I believe her. I believe her because I know how Umar is. I know what he he's, a, he's his intent is is to crush cookies. Okay, it just he got ran up on. He was shook too. He always shook. Umar is yeah yeah okay. I got thanks thanks a lady yeah. But Umar has that melanin. <laughs> yeah, that's what he calls it. I don't even know what that means. I have no idea what that means. The melanin drip. Somebody's going to explain it to me. Thanks, Sigmund. Um, uh, Bahia lady says those were cardio. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, all right. Thank you. Says uh, those are little bills. <laughs> he talking about from the show, little bill. Yeah, I still like that show because they still play a lot of jazz music. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for super chat. Yeah, Umar did have on some very interesting shoes. Okay. <laughs> Boy, the, the votes are coming in quick, on oh, quick and fierce on this one. <laughs> I was other cooks, you better get your vote in right now because <laughs> it's, it's about to get blowed off. <laughs> Someone said that lady sounded strong, she sure did. Okay, 
thank you, uh, whole Southern Cook for a super chat. Thank you, Bahia Lady, Sigmund uh, Hightower, and Black Wolf says, Linda, look at a sec look at security. They see, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. I was, I was saying that they saw her coming. So, so, so it was weird. Umar going like this, it's almost as if he's he may not even been gesturing to her, he may have been gesturing to security that's in the back. So he he knew what was going on. He he knew that. I think he knew that lady. Okay, I, I would say yes, that, that he knew the bag lady from last night. Okay. Okay, and I could be wrong, but but that's what I believe. I wish the whole video, if someone had the whole video, they would upload the whole video so we can get more context and then see what happened afterwards, you know. But yeah, she threw her bag at him. That's what she was trying to hit him. Hit him. The woman ain't gonna do something like that. That's her bag. Come on now. No, she was mad. Ain't no telling what happened with this guy. Uh, thanks, Black Wolf. Uh, Sigmund uh, Hightower says he reminds me of a corrupt street preacher. Been seeing this since the 19th century. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with this a lot. Umar he talks a lot about uh, the black church, but in essence, Umar is a traveling preacher, and I'm not the only one who said that. I'm not the first person to say that. I don't even know if I've said that before. I may have made reference to it in the past. But I'm going to say it right here as clear as day. Umar is basically a traveling preacher. It's just that he's not preaching, let's say, the gospel of Jesus Christ or, or Christian. He's not coming from a Christian vantage point. He's coming from an amalgamation of, of different uh, uh, religious, religious, spiritual systems, if, it, if you will, plus the black conscious orientation with the Marcus Garvey movement back to Africa talk, you know, with, with other stuff sprinkled and then social commentary and celebrity gossip sprinkling in between. Okay, he he really it's an amalgamation of many different things. That's what, what he does. But in essence he's a traveling preacher. You know, so out of all of his criticism, he because he criticizes the black church a lot. He he talks so I remember one time, I kid you not, he called the the he was on a Christian radio show. And, and uh, there's no video of this, but there's audio. You hear the audio. And he goes off on this Christian uh, 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 host who was kind of questioning Umar about some of the things that he was saying about the Bible. Because Umar, he he says some uh, some crazy stuff about, about Christians and, and, and any, anything dealing with the black church. He'd he be talking reckless. It's one thing to have criticism, but it's another thing where you're just over the top with it. And the host checked him on it. And he called, he called the, the host the C word. I don't like using that term. And then he called... The host, he got real mad towards the end, called him an N-word. So the irony is that he he's so critical of the black church, but in essence, he is. He's basically a corrupt street preacher, but he travels. He's not like just on that street on that corner. He's global. You know, out of all, all the talk about, you know, black church, they don't have institutions. No, well, they have buildings. You know, they provide services to people. Okay. They have after school programs. Umar, has Umar done any of that? No. You don't even have a building. He has these trap banners in Wilmington, Delaware. That's it. Okay. But you're right. He, he is. He's, he's a street preacher. It says that he's not just restricted to the street. Also, the internet gains him access to a world audience, too. But if he didn't have the internet and if he didn't have the ability to travel, and one of the reasons why he has the ability to travel is because people send him money for the school scam. Okay. But if he didn't have any of, any of that, he would be right there on the street preaching. With a collection plate, okay. I guarantee it. All right, thanks for the super chat. Okay, we got 165 votes in so far. 89% say yes that Umar knew the bag lady from last night. 11% say no that Umar did not know the bag lady from last night. That's opposed only been up for four minutes. We'll leave that up for maybe another 10 minutes or so, and we'll get another one going. All right, let's get back to the original or not the original video. The video we've been covering New tonight. Jersey. Thank you all so much. Make sure I hit the like button as you guys uh and uh, hopefully enjoy as you're enjoying the show. Okay, if you're not, still hit it anyway. <laughs> Here we go. Montclair, New Jersey, fifty dollars on uh, March the first of 2017. Brother Reginald of Choctaw, Oklahoma, twenty dollar money order on March the third. Uh, we have a uh, Yumi of Jamaica, Queens. Okay, ten dollar money order. Yeah, Sister that video, uh, Chris, Crystal. Uh, that was recent. Uh, it, it came up online uh, about three days ago, maybe four days ago. I just downloaded it and, and I figured we we cover it. Yeah, ain't no telling. Ain't no telling. You know, uh, I mean, it'd be interesting if, if she sees this show or she's in it. I doubt she's actually in the in the chat room. If you are, you want to come up to spill the beans? Now, I shouldn't say that. Say it that way. But anyway, you can always email me. Here we go. Naples, New York. Excuse me, Central Islip, New York. A two hundred and seventy-five dollar check. We have Peggy What's up, from Addison, South Carolina. 
Okay, we okay. have Amanda Smith with a $100 <laughs> no, check. That. I'm only going to read a few of these. I just want to show you the Bang type of lady, you going to hang your back. Y'all remember that? Bang lady, you're going to hurt your back. Da na 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 na. Da na 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 na. Bang lady. That we have gotten over the past four years. And brothers and sisters, we can't stop now. We have okay, to keep cool, on going. Because Thank we you, have Jeff the school, but the school has What's to up, be Rudy, renovated. Rudy, so there's out. three stages in this process. There is acquisition. There is mm -hmm. restoration. There's operations. Mm -hmm. There is acquisition. There's restoration. There is operations. There is acquisition. Okay, acquisition took him nine years. Okay, there is restoration. That's renovations. Re restoration, renovation. He's uh, five years into that now. And there is operation. We have acquired the building. We have succeeded in our first goal. It took us four and a half years, but how uh, how does he reconcile being the well? <clears throat> it's not logical or rational. <clears throat> Excuse me. What it is is that Umar again he he pulls from so many different sources. It's amalgamation of things. So. If he can see, let's say, like Shango as a deity in the Ifa uh, spiritual system, and it's and, and Shango is seen in a particular light, and Umar wants to be seen in that light, he'll say, "I'm a, I'm the son of Shango, or I'm like Shango." Similarly, but just you know, from a different, I guess, spiritual system, if he can see Christ as being, you know, a uh, a uh, uh, figure uh, that's deserving of veneration and praise then Umar will call himself Black Christ. If he's, uh, let's say Buddha, or well, Buddha's being held in high esteem, well, I'm the Black Buddha. He's called himself Moses, another example. See, so he'll pull from wherever he can. That's what I mean by the amalgamation. Anything that can make himself appear to be better than what he really is. That's how he, well, I don't even know if that's a way of reconciling it per se, because it's still a contradiction. He criticizes Christianity all the time. He criticizes the black church, but then he calls himself the black Christ. But see, it suits him to call himself the black Christ because it makes himself appear to be self-aggrandizing. It makes himself appear to be better than what he really is. I don't even know if that reconciles it at all, because it's not rational or logical at all. But that's that's what he does. But it's it's not strictly with Christianity, uh, uh, Hinduism. Uh, Buddhist or, or, or Ifa, it's whatever he can take from. I, I would propose that even him uh, claiming to be descendants of uh, Booker T. Washington, of Frederick Douglass, of Pharaoh Ramses, of Harriet Tubman, it's an example of Umar trying to uh, place more self importance upon himself, self aggrandizing. Uh, how do you reconcile this idea that Booker T., you relate to Booker T. Washington, Frederick Douglass, Harriet Tubman, and Pharaoh Ramses? It's not rational or, or, or logical, but see, for Umar, it still serves its purpose. And to his followers, it still places him in, in, in a position on a pedestal as someone who needs to be what? Venerated. And he loves that. That's the narcissism in him. He loves that. People tell him, get, tell him good things about himself and blah, blah, blah. And you're the best. And, you know, he loves that. Okay, He, he really that, that's. That's another motivating factor that we tend not to talk about during these live streams. He, he, there's the cookies, there, there's the, the turn of the heat down, and there's the money, but then there's also the need to be praised and to be accepted and to be venerated. Okay, that's another aspect. That's dealing with the narcissism part of that. Okay, uh, thanks, Sigmund, uh, for, for the super chat. Um, and then Geo Scholar says uh, she's mad because she found out he. <laughs> no, I, I don't think that that it, I don't think that's it. It, it didn't. It sound more. This is just and we're speculating here, Geo Scholar. So I always got to say it when I'm speculating. I think that they had some sort of interaction the day before and probably the night before, knowing how Umar is, and that some, there was some sort of a falling out. Okay, who and it could be anything. It, it could be that he was supposed to meet her for lunch or for breakfast or he promised that he was going to do this or do that and he didn't he didn't do it and she was texting he ain't no telling she, she was texting he wasn't responding so she ended up going to the thing and he gets to run his mouth and she's already mad and she just she goes off that's what i think okay i could be wrong but that's what i think took place something like that okay i'm speculating okay i don't think it's because she found out he was a scammer okay she know that now though before she because she probably watched his live stream okay she's like yeah he's a scammer too 
All right. All right. <laughs> Yeah, and I've heard so many stories too about it. It's not, I shouldn't say it that way, but I've, I've heard plenty of stories from women who dealt with Umar, and it's it's the same thing over and over again. Okay, he, he's a user and abuser, and, and that's it. Okay, uh, bag lady wants her, <laughs> yeah, I know. She said, Put my cookies back in my bag. <laughs> she, said, she said, If you don't give my put my cookies, let me stop. I shouldn't do that. Thanks, lady. <laughs> um, I, I, that's not funny. I apologize. Okay, let's get back to it. I shouldn't have said that. Here we go. Everything is in divine timing, brothers and sisters. We have acquired the school. So keep on donating, brothers and sisters. Okay, real quick, uh, I'm going to close this poll out. Uh, did Umar know the bag lady from last night? There were 202 votes. 89% said yes, and 20% said no. Okay, so I'm going to close this out. I'm going to give it another three minutes, four minutes, and I'll close this one out. And then, then I'm going to put up uh, another one. Here we go. Let's keep going. Do not send donations to my cash app. My cash app is not the Frederick Douglass. Yeah, yeah, Marcus no, it did. it did, it did, it did, and and just uh, let me play it one more time. And, and I'm not doing it to be petty, but it did. It sounded like she was hurt about something. She was she was upset about something. Okay, and I I felt that way for, from the first time I saw it. Something happened. See, we got this thing, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And the white man knows you well because he's written books on you. How many books? They say the Negro entrepreneur. Who's that queen? Keep speaking, King. Keep speaking, King. Keep speaking, King. Keep speaking, King. Don't stop. Don't change the energy. Don't change the energy. Don't change the energy. Don't change the energy. Yeah, it does. It sounds like she's a hurt woman. That's what it sounds like. Something happened. I wish I could hear everything she says too, because she says something else that I can't. I didn't catch. Let me, let me play one more time. I'll pause it when we get to there. If anyone in the cooker chat knows what she said, watch this. See, we got this thing, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And the white man knows you well because he's written books on you. How many books? Okay, that's her. How many books? She's already approaching the stage. Say the Negro entrepreneur. Right there. I don't know what she says right there. That's the part I think is key, but I can't make it out. Find that find about that, 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 something like that. What does she say right there? Something, something with him? It almost sounds, I thought she said, calm me down with him. That's what I thought, but that's not what she said. That don't even make no sense. <laughs> no, she did. No, she didn't. No, no, she did say that. She did say, check my bag. But but that right there, I don't know how many how many entrepreneurs. Hold on, let me, let me try one more time. No, she doesn't say. No, I can't play it. I, I'm unable to. Play. Well, I could play it in another browser. Uh, hold on, let me just try one more time. It, uh... <laughs> it's not funny, okay? You know, the dude saying, "Don't change the energy." Don't know what Ubar did. To, I know. Ain't oh, I know. You're right. Uh. How many dollars? Maybe. Let me let me listen one more time. And no, it says something with them to me. That's what it sounds like. Hold on. Let, let me let me go pull this up in uh, so I can slow it down. I, I I don't hope you guys don't mind. This is I wasn't planning on doing this, but I, I'm intrigued now. Okay, I'm really intrigued. So let me do this. I'm gonna pull it up in uh, VLC player. And I'm going to slow it down. Where is it? Oh, here it is, playback. Uh, speed, let's go to slower. This might be too slow though. Some, Sigma says, how many dollars? I, it doesn't say, I, I, that's not, I don't hear that. I'm hearing something, it, I'm not hearing how many dollars. Maybe she, uh, let me see. How many, but she says something after that. Yeah, I can kind of hear how many dollars, but it sounds like something calm me down with him or something. Bro, entrepreneur. I don't know. I, I don't know, Sigmund. Okay, so let, let me do this. <clears throat> I have it pulled up over here. 
Okay, I got it slowed down over here. Let me let me do this. And thanks for super chat. We we this we used to do this all the time too. We, we I remember Cook Crush chat way back in the day. We would find something and then we'd be trying to figure it out for like 15, 20, 30 minutes. <laughs> but it do, it sounded like she was hurt about something. I uh, thanks still range for becoming a member. Let, let me do this. Let me let me do a screen share. Let, let me know if you guys can hear the audio. I actually feel bad for this woman because it, it's not to her benefit to do something like this. Um I, I it's not. No one's just going to just put themselves out there like that. I wish I had the whole video of this whole incident, though, too. That would be interesting to see. Hope Maybe it'll appear online at some point. OK, so let me add this. Let me know if you guys can hear the audio. I have it slowed down right here. And I'm going to take myself off just so you guys can focus on what you're hearing. Books on you. How many books? They say the Negro I still don't know. I don't know. Anybody know? I really want to know what she said right there. But then we're going to move on. But I. It's, I'm telling you, it sounds like hand me down with him. I don't know. I, 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 I'm, it's going to drive me crazy. Okay. I'm going to play it one more time and we're going to move on. No, 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 no. That's not what. How many entrepreneurs? Maybe. Let, let, let's see. Okay. Let, let, me, let, me, let me hear that one more time. Maybe that's what she said. How many entrepreneurs? Yeah, you, you guys are good. I did not hear that. Someone said it earlier, I think, but yeah, that's what she said. How many? <laughs> no, I said, hand me down clothes. I was called all over the place. <laughs> I said, hand me down. Let me dance with you. Get, get on. <laughs> I don't know. I. I was like, I don't. I was coming up with all kind of stuff. Call me down here for. Oh, that sounds like what? That sounds. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me leave that up there. Call me down here for nothing. Whoa, 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 whoa! That sounds more. I think you got it, Law of the Hybrid. Hold on one more time, or two more times, or three more times. Mm. I, I think you got it right there. We're going to have to do a poll on this. We're going to have to do a poll on this. She probably contributed. That's possible, too. But she said last night, so something happened, you know, from what she's saying. Something happened. Can, can we go back? Let me go back to the beginning, okay? Here we go. It's slow, too. We're going to do it slow. See, we got this thing, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And the white man How many did, uh. well because he's written books on you. How many books? They say the Negro entrepreneur. It sound like she said, call me down here for nothing. That's what it sound like to me. <laughs> that's what it said, Nikki. That's what it sound like to me. I'm telling you that someone, okay, Nikki says she said entrepreneurs. I, I don't, I, but I don't know. Let me try, let me go, let me go one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, this show crazy. Hold, let me let me go one more time. <laughs> and here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I can't have. I just can't have one show without pitch. Come on. Well, hello, Lynn. It's been a while. I miss being on your face. It's been five years almost. I guess me nor energy is coming. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I'm gonna grow my beard back in. Okay. 
I'm a, I'm a grow it in, and I'm gonna get it dyed uh, uh, blonde. <laughs> What's up, Mister Controversy? You tripping? <laughs> you tripping hard, boy? <laughs> All right, let's get back on it here. <laughs> we got so blowed off. <laughs> I make me want to grow my beard back in. <laughs> all right. I want to grow it all the way in like this, but then I look 80. I'm, I kid you. I seriously, I look 80 when I do that. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Controversy, you ain't right. Okay. Call me down here. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Let, let's go one more time. And then we got to get going here because we're already three hours in. I said we're going to be here for four or five hours. That's why, that's why I started early. I try to start early, earlier. Who's that queen? See, we got this thing, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And the white man knows you well because he's written books on you. How many books? They say the Negro entrepreneur. Now I'm here an entrepreneur. Who's that queen? Keep speaking, King. Keep speaking, King. Keep speaking, King. Keep speaking, King. Don't stop. Don't change the energy. Don't change the energy. Don't change the energy. Brothers and sisters. Don't change. Hey, hey, I ain't gonna lie. Listen, uh, I, I, because I, I gotta be fair. I'm always, I have to be fair. The lady sounds like she's been drinking or something. Anyone else catch that? Hit the one. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But if she's been drinking, is it possible that she, she's? Well, I, I don't know. It just, it sounds too personal, though. Okay, let's do this. Just to finish this segment out, we're gonna get back to the video. I'm I'm gonna play it at the original tempo, and I'm gonna play the the uh, the uh, the other video, not the one that we just watched on on VLC um, player, but what I have here in the interface here. Watch this, and this is regular speed. See, we got this. Yeah, I know, I know. You're right about that. Yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, I know it, it could be that she's just mad. Let's listen to it at regular speed. Just and I just wanted to let's just listen to her vocal inflections and see. This thing, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And the white man knows you well because he's written books on you. How many books? They say that. Yeah, she don't sound drunk. I'm tripping. It's just when I'm listening to it in slow motion that she does. Negro entrepreneur. Who's that queen? Keep speaking, King. Keep speaking, King. Keep speaking, King. Keep speaking, King. Don't stop. Don't change the air. Yeah, she she not drunk. It's just it's just when I heard. So I, I got to and I was trying to be fair with Umar based on what I was hearing. We were slowing it down, but I, I got to be honest and fair all the way around. Uh, no, I think this what something happened. I think something happened, and she was upset. And um, I, to, I'm not clear exactly what she said. It could have been the entrepreneur thing, but it, given that she was already going off, I think she said, "Call me down here for nothing" or something like that. So it could have been someone that he invited to come down, and uh, and that and that's consistent with the conscious tripper. You guys know that, okay? Yeah, yeah. She she yeah, she was she was up really upset. She threw, I mean, she threw her bag at him. Okay, that's not someone just comes out of the blue that don't know that's gonna do something like that. Something happened. All right, all right, boy. We boy we uh, ain't no telling. I, I don't know. Uh, how many entrepreneurs? I, I don't know. East Bend. If the lady, if you watch this, you want to call in, let me know. Okay. She said, "Ham be." <laughs> Here we go. She said, "Ham beans and damn for nothing." <laughs> oh my God. That sounds more like it to me. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> okay. My wife turned the heater on. I'm getting hot. I'm all sweat, starting to sweat. That's okay. They cold down there. All right. Let's get back on track here. I apologize. If y'all don't mind, if y'all hit the like button, I appreciate it. How many books? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that does make sense. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, no, Josh K fired Aaron on the show. <laughs> her and Zora and Zora, both of them at the same time. All right. Okay, let's get back to it, everybody. Here we go. The Academy app. And, and again, thank you all so much for tuning on in. We've got 800 people in the building. Um, if we don't get through this video tonight, what we'll do is tomorrow night we'll get through this one and then we'll get to the second video of the three. There won't be no need to do the third video because that's just him giving an, an outside tour. Uh, but the second video is is short. Okay, so we'll, we're going to come back tomorrow for sure. And I'll try to start as early as possible again, like today. Right? Do not send donations to the cash app. FDMG donations must be money order or check until you hear me say otherwise. It must be money order or yeah, she check did. until yeah, she you hear did. me say otherwise. Do not use yeah, let's get my the cash app we'll for get donations. The donations sent to the cash app are for Dr. Umar's <laughs> personal expenses <laughs> and to also offset other expenses related to yeah, my it was, various it was, nation it was building personal. projects. Yeah, because okay? it, it is not for upset. the school. Do not use it for the school. That Those donations are for me. Yeah, and I got to be clear. A woman's not going to put herself out there like that. It was personal. She was upset. You know, and that much was clear. I mean, exactly what she was saying. I'm not quite sure. There's things that she said that it was clear to me where she said I was with you last night. It was personal. Right? Umar, he gets straight to lying, too. I ain't never met, met her. In my, I don't believe it. For my personal usage and travel and expenses, <laughs> yeah, it's a cause of nation building, it. but it is not specific to FDMG. Yeah, she did. Now, with that being said. Let me get the next poll with up. With that being said, I think it's time to announce the location. Here we go. Over the past two years, we've been looking all across. We've been looking all across the country for this first school. I thought the school would have been in Detroit, several schools in Detroit, but it didn't happen. I thought we were going to get the charter school in Southfield, Michigan, across the street from Detroit. I didn't get the help that I needed. I didn't get the help. Okay, we still got poll uh, people uh, voting still on the poll. It just went up from 20, 230 to 271. Goodness. Yeah, go ahead and get y'all's in real quick and let them. Right now, overwhelmingly, people, 87% say yes, that the bag lady knew Umar from last night. 12% <laughs> say no. I'm leaving it up. They're going to get it in. Go ahead. The push that I needed, brothers and sisters, you know, just didn't make it happen in Detroit. We thought it was going to be in Chicago. Had a school in Chicago, had it inspected. They told me that wouldn't work. I had a school up in Mount Vernon, New York, but the archdiocese, the Catholic Church, the denied Catholic me. Church. Uh, another Come Catholic school here in Philadelphia, they denied me. Another Catholic school in Trenton, New Jersey, they denied me. Uh, we've been looking all across, all across this country for the perfect location. And let me tell you, how we got this location mm -hmm. it was truly divine timing truly divine timing i want to go back to 2017. last week of july first week of august 2017 i took my fourth or fifth pan-african group tour to ghana togo and benin we visited the elmina and cape coast castle slave dungeons we visited the Asin Mansour Slave River. We went to Togo, Benin. Benin is the voodoo capital. We visited the hometown of Toussaint La Overture, He always got to throw a big old story. of the Haitian Revolution. We, we, we did all of that. And when we came back from Ghana, Togo, and Benin, I was due to celebrate the no, total... A, a, absolutely. That, that's been one of the, the uh, main criticisms that I've had of Umar from the jump. See, there's no... Um transparency that's the key word um if you have a nonprofit, you're because it's public you're supposed to uh provide your followers or your audience or your supporters your donors with receipts and and ideally you should have a website set up it should be uh, fdmg.com or frederick douglas marcus garvey whatever dot com uh fdmgschool.com whatever and on there, it should be everything should be archived. How much money was made in this one, or at the very least per year? Okay, that that should be archived for people to be able to see. Um, there's no transparency in these regards. So, in essence, the the idea of commingling of funds. If you have an organization, in this case, a corporation, because that's what he has it registered. He had it registered as, and there's only one person in charge. There's no oversight. There's no checks and balances. That's a key issue, too, when it comes to nonprofits. There has to be some. There's no board of directors. So the person who's receiving the money is in control of the money. Normally, that's not how things work. Normally, you have an accountant that is in control of the money. In some cases, they have this set up to where 
you can't just take money out the out the the, the cough coffers of an organization or after out of a corporation and just do it whenever you want to. There's paperwork that you have to file within that organization to request funds to be released. And then there's a whole process. The board directors, they may look over things, depending on how much money you're asking for, or you're requesting. The, obviously, the accountant has to look at things, too. And things have to be signed off on. So there's checks and balances. Do we do do we see that with Umar and what he's doing? No, he's a one man show. So this has been one of the major criticisms that I've had with Umar it, with the school scam is that ultimately all funds that are received, he he's the one who's in control of it and there's no oversight. So if the, the idea of commingling, it's not even it's not even an issue of commingling because he's the only one handling all the funds. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And and Umar doesn't the other thing, Umar doesn't know how much money he's raised to date. He, he doesn't have a clear figure. In fact, he hasn't even updated people on how much he's raised. He hasn't updated people in over two years. He doesn't even know how much money he's raised. Now, he don't know how much money he's raised in terms of for the corporation, for the FDMG, and he doesn't know how much money he's raised for himself, personal donations. He can't give people a figure because all the money that goes in, he does whatever he wants to with it and there's no checks and balances. That's one of the major criticisms and this gets back to the issue of transparency. That's why when he was on Lord Jamar's show, it'd be the last point. When he's on Lord Jamar's show, when Lord Jamar brought up the issue of transparency, that's when Umar really went off the hinges and lost it and went crazy. He went berserk because he knows that that's where you start counting that cash, that raw cash. <laughs> and once you follow the money trail, then you realize what the scam is. Okay, And this school is a scam. Get money to come in. Umar does what he wants with the money. He's not even up there on the anniversary. He out on basically on vacation uh, crushing cookies and, and, and such. Still collecting money for a school that doesn't exist. Five years into this. Oh, thanks for the super chat. Oh, thank, thanks, uh, Sigmund. No, no, this this, this is true. This, 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 Umar, he's the boy, tell you, it's a long con, and he's the only person who's in charge. The, uh, nonprofits never work like that. If it, if it's working like that, there's a serious problem. If there's no board of director, directors, there's a serious problem. If you don't have an accountant that's managing funds and keeping things separate, you think Umar has that? Come on now. No reputable accountant is going to be dealing with Umar anyway. You get Pookie Ray Ray, maybe, but no reputable one's going to deal with Umar. You know how much scandals is? Yeah, anyway. All right. Uh, thanks for Super Chat. Here we go. Total solar eclipse on Nat Turner Day. So we went down in that. Let, let me go ahead and close out this poll. So uh, we had uh, 318 votes. Did Umar know the uh, bag lady from last night? 87% said yes. 13% uh, said no thank you guys so much for your vote okay the next one i'm going to do one where we I, i'll put it up right now where we i'm, I'm going to ask what do you think is umar's uh best or, or most uh ridiculous saying i'm going to put raw cash on there thought his personality disorder uh pajama mama and another one i'm not going to repeat it on, on here but I'll, I'll put i'll put it in there <laughs> okay here we go Turner land. We went down to Nat Turner land and on August the 21st of 2017, we witnessed the first total solar eclipse that was able to be visually seen from the United States since the days of Garvey, 1918, which I believe was prophetic. Since the days of Garvey, the last time we had a total solar eclipse in this country that was contiguous and invisible consistently through the skies of America was in 19 during the rise of the Marcus Garvey movement. So a hundred years, we hadn't seen one for a hundred years. And so down on that Turner land, we watched one of the most beautiful spectacles of all time. And I started doing research on a total solar eclipse and a total solar eclipse said that this was the beginning of new things. So I said to myself, if this is the beginning of new things, that means we're going to have a school soon. If this is the beginning of new things, that means we're going to have a school soon. But a school didn't come. Now, a couple days later, right after the Nat Turner eclipse of August the 21st, 2017, a couple days later, right after the Nat Turner eclipse of August the 21st, 2017, I learned of a school that was for sale. And I went and visited the school and I loved it. It was a mini campus, not as big as St. Paul's, but in better shape than St. Paul's, although it's still going to need some restoration. But the asking price was too much. 
This was a couple days right after the Nat Turner eclipse. I want y'all to show how the eclipses are real and what they represent as it relates oh, to the end of one era and the beginning of another era is profound. So we just came back from the voodoo capital, Benin. We just came back from the slave dungeons of Ghana. We just came back from Togo. We go to Nat Turner land on August the 21st of 2017, okay, to experience that historic eclipse on the very site of the greatest revolutionary black act in American history. A few days later, I go to this wonderful school that I would love to make FDMG, but we can't afford it. So I didn't give up though. I didn't give up on that school. I said, we got to. Okay, the new uh, poll is up. Uh, Cookie Crush chat. What is Umar's most ridiculous saying? Uh, I couldn't get in pajama mamas because they only allowed four. Uh, as of right now, there's no vote. Well, there's six votes now. Raw cash is on there. Thoughtless personality disorder is on there. Some of them going to sleep. Folk is on there and S crumbs. All right. Already 36 votes, cut 40 votes in. Uh, S crumbs are already at 50%. <laughs> I didn't even want to put that on there, but they, let's keep going. Push, we we go. got to push. We got to push. A couple days later, I go to Cuba. Welcome back, guys. That present. Sunday, I go to Cuba. So What's I'm up, in money? that turn of land for the eclipse. Yeah, on I that know, Monday, that I think that wild. was a Sunday or a Monday. I go to Cuba That's okay. that Sunday. We're going to be here for a little okay. while longer. And between Nat Turner and Cuba, and of course, I was initiated into the mysteries of Ifa while in Cuba. <laughs> I was initiated into the mysteries of Ifa this while in true. Cuba. Right I here. was initiated into the mysteries of Ifa while in Cuba. So between Nat Turner and Cuba, I visit this school. This is August of 2017. 18 months ago, a year and a half. I didn't think I had any chance of getting this school. So we continued to travel the country looking for a school. So then all of a sudden divine intervention took place because we raised just under 750,000, but the asking price was much more than $750,000. So I didn't know what we were going to do, but I wanted this school. So we continued to negotiate. Yeah, right about that. Continued to negotiate. Continue the negotiations, like brothers that. and said, sisters. Guy, and finally, crazy. Finally, finally, Black History Month, <laughs> February 2018. <laughs> we finally signed the deal and closed. No, you're the right. Deal. No, so you're right about this. You're absolutely right about this. He pays for dinners for paint day out of the FMG funding. He admits it. I know. Listen, there's times, and y'all, uh, hit could crochet, hit the one on this if you guys remember this. There's times where he was out eating. And, and I don't want to bring people's names up, but I remember Tiff the Griff was there. And they're out eating, and Umar is asking for cash apps. And then he tells people that he's going to be the person that's going to pay for the food. Okay, well, that's donation money for the school, not for people to be out eating. Hit the one. Tiff the Griff was there. I, I, and I, I don't mean to be saying any names, but she was there because I remember he was, he was, uh, that's when he was scared of her. He probably still, still scared of her. <laughs> he probably still, he's probably still scared of her. No, it, was, it wasn't the, it wasn't the uh, Red Lobster, that video, not that one. No, no, he was on there asking for donations. And then he was telling people, yeah, we're going to pay. So that, that's called mingling of funds. Okay. Now, what would normally happen uh, in a, a situation where it's a nonprofit, if you're going to be spending money, um, let's say if you have an event for your nonprofit, it has to be legitimate. Okay. And it has to go to the board of directors. They have to, you know, sanction it. They have to verify to say, okay, you know, this is something that we can do because it's in the best interest of, of the organization. And then an accountant has to be the person that's going to issue a check. Now, what normally would happen is that if you're going to uh, if you're going to spend some money, then you can always take that to the accountant and the accountant would uh, can, can reimburse you, that type of a thing. But in this case, there's no checks and balances. And what I mean by that is there's no oversight. Whatever money comes in, Umar, at his own uh, behest, he can do whatever he wants to with it. And no one's going to say, no, you can't do use that money for this. You can't use that money for that or any of that stuff. He decides. Ultimately, that's a scam. See, so the whole idea of combing of funds, and I know the video that you're talking about, and people were hitting the one right here. And there's actually a, a couple of videos. There's not a lot of them, but he, it's very clear that he's asking for money because he needs the money to buy something in that moment. I've seen it time and time again. Now, 
I don't want to overstate this. It's not like there's 15 videos of him doing this, but there's enough out there that it was clear to me years ago. Wait a minute, there's coming mingling of funds. He's using this money to live off of. And here we are five years later and there's still no scoop. See, the thing is that if, if Umar was handling business and the money was going to where it needed to go, this school would have been up and running. Now, he wouldn't have money for the operating costs, but the renovations would have been completely done on both sides of the streets because he should have, after purchasing these trap banners, he should have been sitting, well, based on where projecting where he's at today and how much money he's been collecting over the years, he should he should have at least $2 million, at least $2 million sitting around. That, that's more than enough to at least get half of the side of the street finished. But but that's not what we see. So where's the money going? Well, we we don't know for sure because there's no oversight and he doesn't have public disclosure. There's no transparency. But my best guess is that Umar has he's tricked this money off. He's he's tricked the vast majority of it off with his lifestyle. I was going to say something else, but I'm going to leave it at that. And what I was going to say was. That any time you have someone who has a whole bunch of money coming in but they can't maintain their life having the basics such as their own car, their own home, being able to provide for themselves, buy their own food. How many times have we seen Umar get up here talking about he's hungry and he, he you know, I'm going to get something to eat. Where is the closest? Get on your cash app. Anytime you see that type of thing going on and it's clear that they're not living their best life, meaning, you know what I'm saying? Well, that, that's that, that's where we get into this whole issue of uh, mental health and turning of the heat down. When he flipped that phone, very telling, sniffing and blinking, very telling. So people at wonder where the money's gone. Well, that's in part where the money's gone. See, it, it's sad, too, because here, here we are again. We're on the five year anniversary and there's still no school. How does that happen when he should have had at least two? He should at least be sitting on two million dollars. That, that's crazy. I can open up a school with $2 million. Many of y'all up in here in the quick chat, y'all can open up a school with $2 million. Now, is it going to be fanciful where you're teaching them how to float ships and fly helicopters in a, in a uh, observatory on the roof? No. But with $2 million, I can set something up, even if it's in a storefront or if it's in a little small little community center that I can lease out and pay three, $4,000 a month on, have some desks and tables in there, You know, tricked all that money. That's crazy. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Sigmund. All right, let's go. All my donors, I want to say thank you. And I want to yeah, let you know. And that's what they were called. They, they were called a verified expense. I used to work with a nonprofit and it was in the hood and they had a community center and, and they, they had people coming in teaching the children. They had different services they had a food pantry in there. They had counselors that would come through to speak with the children. It was an impoverished. It was in the hood. hood. My, my, uh, uh, Aunt-in-law, rest in peace, lived around the corner. I had, my uncle stayed down the street in them apartments. <laughs> boy, I tell you, boy, it was a, was a wild area. But that's how I, I worked there. And all this stuff, it, it has to be a verified expense. And they were very meticulous about that thing. Umar, he's a one-man show. That, that's part of the scam. That's how, That's one of the reasons why he's got away with this for so long. No checks and balances. Your pennies and your dollars. No help from any celebrities, not a single celebrity donated, not a rapper, not an actor, not an athlete, nor do we care. Yeah, okay? but, but this is yeah, but this is this is why he can he has to keep this going, though. His, his the, the main things that brings Umar uh, money coming in is the school scam. It's not the lecturing. It's not the, the interviews. The thing that brings money in, and it's easy money because he didn't have to do anything. People just send it to him here, there. I mean, he could be getting someone sending him some money right now. He's not up at the school, up the trap bandos. He's not working on anything up there, but it's free money that just rolls in. That's the power of the internet. See, so yeah, it, it's true. His donor base is paying for his lifestyle. And that's why he has to keep going with this school scam because if he if that ever gets cut off, okay, well, what does he do, do now? That's the vast majority, of, overwhelming, the, the vast majority of the money that he's received, millions of dollars up to this point, comes from this school scam. So what he's done over the last five years, really over the last 14 years, but in particular, since he acquired these trap banners over the last five years, is give the illusion of progress, do a little bit of here, a little bit there, and then get people riled up to send him some more money. And then you get platforms like the Breakfast Club that keep having them come on. I think they're going to have them come on there soon, too. Watch. Hey. They're paying for his lifestyle. Ain't got nothing to do with helping black boys. Okay. 
let's go here. Uh, thanks for all the super chats. I appreciate it. Uh, and also, thanks everyone to Cook Crest Chat. Um, there's a, a vote, uh, a poll up right now. What is Umar's most ridiculous saying? As of right now, uh, raw cash is at 6%. Thoughtish personality disorder is at 19%. Some of them going to sleep full good is at 31%. And sex crumbs, S crumbs, excuse me, is at 44%. I was not expecting that. I was expecting some of them going to sleep full good to be winning. Uh, but we are only at 179 likes. We'll see how things go as we progress here. Thank you all so much. We can always hit the like button. Thanks to the mom for handling the business. Got any people in the building. Thank you all so much. Let's keep it going. Thank you all. The movement was built by everyday black people, and this movement will be built by everyday black people. But brothers and sisters, I'm glad to announce right here today on Saturday, February the 9th, 2019 Black History Month, that the location of the first Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy will be in the great state where Marcus Garvey Incorporated, the Black Star Line Steamship Corporation. Marcus Garvey Incorporated, the Black mm -hmm. Star Line Steamship yep. Corporation in the state of Delaware, 1919. And Dr. Umar Johnson with the funds <laughs> donated and invested in him by our people have purchased the first Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy in the great state of of Delaware 2019. I knew this before he made the announcement. Who am I wants peepholes at the school? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, he, he do. He said he wanted a peephole inside the front the front door. That's what he said. <laughs> I laughed so hard. I, I didn't even believe it at first. I said, what did he say? Yeah, he said he wants peepholes. <laughs> I don't understand why. Why would you have, I don't mean to do this, but why would you have peepholes at, at, at the entrance to the school? To look out, what? Why would you have peepholes? I, I can't wrap my mind around why they at this school that every day gonna have peepholes. <laughs> so what are you gonna do? The kids not gonna. <laughs> 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 what, what? 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 Oh, that's you, Tyrone. That's you. <laughs> what? What kind of sense does that make? But that's what Umar said. He said he want peepholes on the front door. <laughs> Black Wolf, Umar, wow. Marcus Garvey, Incorporated wow. Black Star Line in Delaware, 1919. Marcus Garvey, Incorporated Black Star Line in Delaware, 1919. And Dr. Umar Johnson incorporates the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy in Delaware, 100 years later, 2019. <laughs> now you know where it is. Now you We're know where it is. Family. That people I will be uploading a video. I will be uploading a video. I will be uploading a video okay. to Facebook after my live feed. So you'll be able to go to my Facebook, Dr. Umar Ifat. Yeah, we're not going to be able to get through all this tonight. What we're going to do is we're going to go for, an, I could go longer. I really could because the way I have things set up tonight. But I'm thinking we'll go 40 more minutes and then tomorrow we'll have to finish up. We'll do part two. Okay. And we'll get right into where we left off tomorrow. I won't do an introduction or anything. Okay. Well, let's see how much we can get through tonight. Thank you all so much too. Quick Quick Chat Undefeated. Tunde, my Instagram people, make sure you go to Dr. Umar Ifa Tunde. My Instagram people, make sure you go to Dr. Umar Ifa. Yeah, but the thing is that it's not mutually exclusive. Uh, one can be a scammer and mentally ill. You see what I'm saying? In fact, I, I, I and, and I know I shouldn't phrase things this way, but I have a sense that people who, who have this like criminal mindedness, that it's, it's also a mental illness, not as an excuse, but that in, in, or, that you, in order to think that way, that there is an illness that's associated with thinking that way, that a normal person who has a healthy mentality or a healthy consciousness is not going to think in, in, within the scope of someone who's cr criminality like that. That's what Umar he thinks in a, uh, in a mode of criminality with everything that he does. See? Five, okay. Two day about 30 minutes once we're done here and i'm not going to keep you much longer so you can watch the 25 minute video it is a tour of the inside of the school you don't get to see as much of it as i would have liked you to because the lighting is not on in the school we have to get that turned on i have to go to the electric and gas company on monday don't okay, don't bring that up please. brothers and sisters that we, that is another one of those moments dealing with umar where i was like this guy is sick you talk about mentally ill peoples could be uh, could relate to cuddling at the fireside chats um the 
if someone reminds me tomorrow, I can play that. I can just play that section. But Umar was talking about how he was going to have the boys come up. After school, they're going to dress up in suits. They're going to feed the boys. And then he's going to have a fireside chat by the fire. And then the boys going to come. He's going to cuddle with the kids. I rem we actually did that. It was live where we, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having me some, what is this up? It's like fruit gummies. Uh, I should take it out of my mouth, but I don't want to be rude. Uh, but this is a video where Umar is giving a parent orientation. And he's, and I remember we were watching this live or listening to it live because it's, it's only audio. And it's uh, it's a uh, part of the Big Papa podcast. And that part came up and we were like, what did he say? And we kept playing it back. It was like, this guy, something wrong with him. He said he want to cuddle with the kids. I said, nope. That was enough for me. How's your kids? How's your wife? Thank, thanks, Sigmund, uh, for the soup chat. Betty Mel Strash says, S crumbs are dried out. I don't know. I, I don't know what all that is. I, I, I don't even want to speculate on that. Linda, are you drinking tea? Four and seven, eight likes. I need to go get some. Okay, let me let me let me do that. I'm gonna let this play. I'll be right back. Yeah, let's try to see if we can get the 500 likes. Let me give you an update on the poll. What is Umar? Excuse me, I'm yelling. Uh, what is Umar's most ridiculous saying? Six percent come uh, have voted raw cash. Nineteen percent have voted thought as personality disorder. Thirty-three percent comes in strong with uh, some of them going for, to sleep for good, and forty-two percent s crumbs. I'm shocked. I didn't think x s crumbs were going. Was gonna make it there. Well, I'm gonna lead us up uh, for a little while longer. We'll come up with another one. I'm gonna go give me some tea. Thank you so much, a lady, uh, for reminding me. I appreciate that. Also, thanks, Sigmund, uh, for the super chat. Let's get back to it here. I'll be right back, everybody. I'm gonna leave my ear buddy in so I can hear him talking. Have it. And we currently have a security system that's owned by the previous owner. We're going to be transferring that over, but they were gracious enough to allow me to continue to. <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> to protect them. He lying right here too, Sigmund. Listen to this guy. I'll be right back. Lighting is not on in the school. We have to get that turned on. I have to go to the electric and gas company on Monday. Okay. Can you believe this guy? He didn't get lights turned on for like another year, almost two years. But the point is that he knew the con interior condition, interior condition of these buildings. There was exposed wires all over the place. And they had to have people come in, professional electricians, black ones that he said stole from them. To come to get uh, get the wiring in place and uh, so, so that he can actually have electricity. But he's saying it as if everything's in place. He just needs to go down there on Monday to the power company to get it turned off. This was a bold faced lie. A bold faced lie. I'll be right back. Umar everybody. Ifatunde, my Instagram people, make sure you go to Dr. Umar Ifatunde. About 30 minutes once we're done here, and I'm not going to keep you much longer. So you can watch the 25 minute video. It is a tour of the inside of the school. You don't get to see as much of it as I would have liked you to because the lighting is not on in the school. We have to get that turned on. I have to go to the electric and gas company on Monday, okay? But nonetheless, brothers and sisters, we have it. And we currently have a security system that's owned by the previous owner. We're gonna be transferring that over, but they were gracious enough to allow me to continue to use their security system to protect the building until I transfer it over, which I must do in the next 30 days. So if you live in Delaware, if you live in Delaware, if you live in Delaware, the first state, Delaware is the first state of the United States, and it will be the first state for the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. The state of Delaware will be for black America what Washington, D.C. is for white America. The state of Delaware will be to black America what Washington, D.C. is to white America. Where are my Delaware people at? If you live in Delaware, where you at? Where are my Delaware State University students are? Because I need a couple brothers and sisters in Delaware to help me push the movement. But this is not only about Delaware, although I'm looking for Delaware. Because Delaware has a new responsibility now. Delaware has a new responsibility because you are now the focus of the Pan-African world. We are now the focus of the entire Pan-African struggle. Delaware is now the capital of black consciousness. Where I go, so goes the headquarters of black African consciousness. Where I go, so goes the headquarters of black African consciousness. 
So whether you live in Dover, Delaware, whether you live in the beaches of Delaware, okay, whatever county you are in, whether you're in Wilmington, wherever you are in Delaware, you need to hit me up. If you are in Delaware and you are serious about nation building, if you live in Delaware and you are serious about nation building, whether that is FDMG, whether that is Team Pan-African, whether that is NIBPA, whether that is the Unapologetically African Movement, I need you to text me 215-989-9858. Again, 215-989-9858. Again, 215-989-9858. If you are serious, sisters, this is not about no dating. This is not about no mating. This is not about no relationship. If you're interested in Dr. Umar, don't text me. This is not about that. This is about building a future for our people. The Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy of Delaware will also be the international headquarters for Team Pan-African. It will be the international headquarters for the international movement for the independence and protection of African people. But we're not stopping there. So Delaware, let me- All of this is, is all this is made up. Okay, he, none of this is real, okay? Seven, okay, cool, yeah, get 500. He just making all this up. Put it out right now. I will be holding a private Black Delaware family meeting. I will be holding a private Black Delaware family meeting. I will be holding a private Black Delaware family meeting on Thursday, February the 28th at 7 p.m. Thursday, February the 28th at 7 p.m. <laughs> if you live in Delaware and you want to come to that meeting, Please text me and I will text you. Yeah, he only, he only said that because he wanted them to text him. That's all. Shoot the information. This is only for Delaware. This is only for Delaware. You must be an African who resides within the state of Delaware. It doesn't matter where you live in Delaware. It doesn't matter where you live in Delaware because this is hashtag BDM Black Delaware Movement. This is hashtag BDM the Black Delaware Movement. There will be a meeting from seven to nine, the last day of Black History Month in Delaware. There will be a meeting from seven to nine, a confidential meeting. It is not a lecture. It is an opportunity for me to introduce myself to my new Delaware family because I will be moving there. I will be relocating to Delaware. And for those of you who live in Delaware, if you know of some places I might wanna consider moving to, home or apartment, please text me that information. Help your brother out. Help me get acclimated to Delaware. I don't want no coons. I don't want no haters. And I don't want no opportunists. Let me say it again. I don't want no coons. I don't want no haters. And I don't want no opportunists. I don't want no coons. I don't want no haters. I don't want no opportunists. I am looking to build a strong, close-knit group Alpha of man. revolutionary pan-African nationalists in the state of of Delaware. If you are one of them, then you need to be at the meeting that's going to take place on Thursday, February the 28th at 7 p.m. If you need that information, 215-989-9858. I will not be calling you. You will contact me. 215-989-9858. Now, in addition to the hashtag BDM Black Delaware Movement. In addition to the hashtag BDM Black Delaware Movement, under Team Pan-African, there will be a special oh, initiative. Under Team Pan-African, there will be a special <clears throat> initiative. Known as the Marcus Garvey Mid-Atlantic Movement. The Marcus Garvey Mid-Atlantic Movement. It will be a special initiative to organize brothers and sisters who live in the Mid-Atlantic section of America. Okay, none of this is real. See, none of this is real. Figment of his imagination. Nothing came out of this. We are approximately speaking of Connecticut down to D.C. Connecticut down to D.C. If you live in New York, if you live in New Jersey, if you live in Connecticut, if you live in Pennsylvania, 
if you live in Delaware, if you live in Maryland, let me say it again. <laughs> if you live in the state of New York, if you live in the state of Connecticut, oh if you live in the state of New Jersey, if you live in the state of Pennsylvania, if you live in the state of Delaware, and if you live in the state of Maryland, those six states will make up the Marcus Garvey Mid-Atlantic Movement of Team Pan-African. And if you live in one of those six states, I repeat. Boy, he was hype in this video, though. He was so hype. Maryland, Delaware, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, okay, and Connecticut. Know. If you I are really interested in being a serious part of the Marcus Garvey <laughs> Mid-Atlantic Movement, which seeks to organize black folks in those six cities what, what of the, the Mid-Atlantic Seaboard, what then you the need world? to get in contact with your brother. <laughs> you I need serious about? New Yorkers, not old Teppers. <laughs> I need serious oh, New Yorkers, serious Connecticut family, serious I, well, it's, Jersey. It's, it's hard watching this guy by yourself. It, it, it's, imp it's impossible. I can't watch him by myself. I can't. I got to have a good crush chat. Yeah, I'm serious. No way. It, it would. I was going. It'd drive me crazy. I, I can't do it. <laughs> That's why I pause. We go look at something else. We I pull up another video. We we'll do it. We'll do a poll here and there. <laughs> yeah, Umar. His imagination is off the chain. He, it really is. It's incredible. The family. I need serious Maryland family. Serious Pennsylvania family. Okay, because yeah, those I six states will become the epicenter of the movement. Delaware is the capital of the black conscious movement, <laughs> but the six states will become the epicenter. Delaware is now the capital of black consciousness, but those six states will make up the epicenter. New York, New epicenter. Jersey, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Delaware. If you are in one of those states and you are serious about helping your brother, get with me. If you have previously hated, you cannot be a part of this. Oh, I can't be a Jimmy. I'm sorry, Jimmy. You can't be a, a lady. You can't, Dominique. You can't be a part of this <laughs> sports bet. It's 3 a.m. Where you at? Goodness. You must be, uh, oh, you're probably in London. You know, UK? Okay. Yeah, he's been scamming. Umar been scamming over there, too. He was over there scamming, talking about he was going to have a, uh, a FDMG uh, Wilshire and Elf. He was naming off all of these different places up over there. Hobbiton, everything. Uh, yeah, I know. I, I can't watch this guy by myself. I, I have to get with y'all to do it. There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Marcus Garvey. Let me stop. Let me not do that. I, I, yeah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> okay, here we go. Anyone who has spoken against the school, anyone who has oh, ever spoken against yeah, you me, can, you can anyone have who has ever liked the comment against me, like the comment. Anybody else watching from another country, let us know. Okay. Comment against the school. You are not allowed anywhere near the school. And I say that respectfully. I forgive you. I don't hold grudges. All right. I love Thank y'all so people. much. We but got anyone who has hated so on me or this, you, you are, are not allowed like in my school for the rest of your life. You He's such a child. This sounds like a little child. You remember we used to have forts? You can't come in my fort. That's what this sounds like. You can't come to an event. You can't come to the Pan-African Youth Conference. You can't. You you ain't in no Uzbekistan. Stop playing. You ain't in no you you no stop. You ain't in no Uzbekistan. Ain't nobody watching. They don't even have any. Let me stop. <laughs> and they ain't even got internet over there. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Yeah, I'm just joking. All right, I'm just joking. You in Sweden? Okay, okay. We got someone from Sweden. That's yeah. Okay, UK Africans in the building tonight. All right. Yeah come to the black woman's fashion show the black woman's <laughs> conference you can't come to the study groups you can't come to the think tanks you can't come to none of the formals none of the parties you can't come to the yoga class you can't come to the fitness center you can't visit fitness center what are you talking about a fitness center i don't remember him saying that the first well i wish my wife would turn this heater off i mean she had this heater's been on how long ago was that it was about four hours ago she turned it off she's gonna leave it on too they don't care. The Pan-African Library, if you have ever hated on me or my school, your ass is not allowed. And if I catch you, <laughs> you hated loitering no. around my campus, campus, campus mm -hmm. we have four buildings, brothers and sisters. It is a campus. We have four buildings, That's brothers and ridiculous. sisters. It is a campus. And I'm going to upload the pictures right Okay, there's three buildings. Okay. Right after this live feed. <laughs> now, New York, <laughs> Connecticut, New Jersey. 
Yeah. I'm talking to New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and Pennsylvania. If you are serious about being part of the Marcus Garvey Mid-Atlantic Movement, you need to bring me a resume to, to the Bronx next Sunday, or you need to bring me a resume to Hamden, Connecticut the following Saturday. The Prince of Pan-Africanism <laughs> will be speaking in the Bronx. I will be speaking in the Bronx for the first time, Boogie Down Bronx in New York, Sunday. Well, I hope so. One Ooh. week from tomorrow, you know Sunday, be, February boy, the 17th. Y'all need to stop doing this like that, okay? <laughs> Why do y'all do that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> let me stop. I'm, let me stop. But you may know what I'm talking about. Y'all be getting in the bed all smelling good, but soft skin, all like that. <laughs> Don't do that. Anyway, let's go. If you are interested in being part of the Mid-Atlantic Marcus Garvey movement, yeah, not, of Team Pan-African, if you want to be a part of NIBPA, whatever it is you want to be a part of, then you must. <laughs> Hold on, brothers and sisters. <laughs> My wife texted me, said she turned the heater off. <laughs> it's still hot up here, though. Bring me a resume. Br email it, but bring it. Because those who show up and support my events, okay, obviously, well, Umar, you're leaving a good. Uh, Umar, he's threatened me, uh, but but in terms of uh, if if there was ever a debate situation, he would never sit down with me and debate because I have all the receipts and I would just pull up receipt, receipt after receipt. The other thing is that that uh, he doesn't have the emotional maturity. Uh, that was evident in Lord Jamar, and Lord Jamar pressed him a little bit, but not like I would be able to press him, whether that's intellectually or otherwise. You know, because he can make a statement, he'll start talking in circles, and I'll bring him right back to the, to the point. I said, no, no, okay, you haven't answered the question. Okay, don't talk in circles. And I would tell him, no, the question was this. Answer this question. If it's a yes or no uh, question, like how much money did you raise up to this point? And he starts talking, no, you're, you're talking in circles. It's a yes or no answer, sir. See, and then I would be able to maintain my calm. He wouldn't be able to do that. He would go nuts. I mean, he starts yelling and screaming. I, I guarantee it. That, that Lord Jamar, that was so very clear. Uh, uh, that he just doesn't have the emotional maturity to, to be able to be questioned uh, on, on any type of intellectual level when it comes to this school scam. Uh, he could run his mouth about other stuff, but specifically about the school scam, he, he wouldn't be able to. He wouldn't be able to handle it. Uh, Gamer guy, how's it going? Says I volunteer at summer camps and know children who are twelve and younger with more maturity. Yeah, he's a uh, he's um, he's emotionally undeveloped. Um, he's like he's in a state of arrested development. He really is. His uh, his behavior is like a child. How he conceptualizes his imagination is like a child. And there's nothing wrong with that, in, you know. But if you're if you're using a childlike imagination just to come up with all kinds of crazy stuff to scam people, that's a whole different thing. You know, you know, uh, we I've seen Umar just go off. The setting rant is another example of a lack of emotional control. Well, that's child. That's childish. You know, it's just a child, a person who's, who's stuck in a state of arrest development. Um, that's what I mean by Umar needs help, and he needs help uh, with his mentality and his, his his emotional state too. That and he needs professional help. That's not going to be corrected by you know people questioning him or or people debating him. That's not going to uh, be fixed by uh, the, he needs professional help in these regards. So this is to say that that Umar is is very immature. You know he uh, hasn't developed a, a level of maturity and is and he's close to fifty years old. He especially when he's pressed or when he's questioned about things it's like you're talking to a six-year-old and yet people think that this is the guy that's going to open up a school for black boys no no, no. it's not going to happen thanks uh gamer gee um again that's that cyberpunk uh, game right there I've, I've been wanting to play it because it's i think it's yeah i think it's on xbox x i've been playing um starfield but i'm getting kind of bored with it i have it on the second highest level of difficulty but at this point i've, I've gotten too good at it i think i need to either start over and play it at the highest difficulty or, or move on to something else uh thanks gamer geek for for the super chat okay let's let's keep going here 
impression. Those who come out and show up and support my events, obviously, you're leaving a good impression. We got two lectures coming up for the Marcus Garvey Mid-Atlantic Movement of Team Pan-African. We got two lectures coming up for the Marcus oh, yeah, Garvey yeah. Mid-Atlantic uh, Movement. That sci-fi game uh, that Gamer Geek uh, pulled up, it, that, I think that's Cyberpunk. Isn't that Cyberpunk Gamer Geek? Just type it inside the chat room. Um, uh, but the game that I'm playing is called uh, Starfield. Yeah, I I've enjoyed it for the most part. I just got, it's gotten boring because I've gotten too good at it. Only other thing I can do is start over and, and uh, reset the the hard the, the level to uh, extra hard, and then I have a, a better challenge. Uh, okay, let's keep going. I'm sorry. Uh, also, let me close out this this uh, this poll real quick too. I'm sorry. Uh, the poll, uh, 300 votes. Uh, what is Umar's most ridiculous saying? 40% said uh, S crumbs. So, and that wins out. 31% says some of them go on to sleep for good at 31%. 23% says thought is personality disorder. And only 7% said raw cash. Okay. All right. I'll set up another one and it'll probably be the last one for, for this evening because we're going to go for about another 30 minutes. Thank you all so much. Everyone to cook crush chat. I appreciate y'all's attendance. We'll be back tomorrow to finish up with this particular video. Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, the whole block in Connecticut. If you, you live in the part? county you are in, whether you're in Wilmington, where that Monday, I think that was a Sunday or a Monday. I go to yeah, Cuba that this. Sunday, come to the University of Maryland Eastern Shore and start organizing the college students. Back yeah, in the 1960s, most of our movements were okay, led and organized on the college campus. Yeah, I, 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 haven't played, have I haven't played any of the cyberpunk games, but I might get into it. Any unapologetically African students at Dell State. I need to find out if we have any unapologetically African students at the Bronx lecture will be at the St. Helena's Church Sunday. Okay, I February. can't remember if we I will did be all speaking this. in the Bronx for the first time. Boogie down areas, Pennsylvania family. Okay, we are approximately speaking of Connecticut, known <laughs> as the Marcus Garvey Mid Atlantic Movement. Okay, well, I think we're right here. Let me skip through. Twelve forty-seven Whitney Avenue. Get your tickets. For the hey, Bronx, right here? get your tickets for Connecticut at Dr. Umar Johnson dot event B dot com. Dr. Umar Johnson dot event B dot com. So when yeah, you see I, the I, hashtag, yeah, I, BDM, I know he hasn't organized that's the Black anything. Delaware movement. All this stuff is just in his imagination. Uh, I thought Death Space was a shooter up, though. I'm not into shooter shooter up games. I just I never got into those. When you see the hashtag BDM, that's the Black Delaware movement. When you see the hashtag MGMA, when you see the hashtag MGMA, okay, that's the Marcus Garvey Mid Atlantic movement, okay? Yeah, Washington, D.C., you're team. automatically I'm included team. with Maryland because D.C. is made up of Maryland and Virginia. So, Washington, D.C., when you hear Maryland, that includes D.C because D.C. is partly made up of the original territory of Maryland, okay? Now, some of my brothers and sisters in Massachusetts are saying, Doc, I want to get down. If you <laughs> that serious, come on. Some of my brothers and sisters in Virginia, in West Virginia, they saying, Doc, I want to get down with that Marcus Garvey Mid-Atlantic Team Pan-African thing. If you serious, come on and get down. Ultimately, it's going to spread to all 50 states. Ultimately, it's going to spread to all 50 states. We are Pan-Africanists. We are about everybody. I just want to use those six states as a launching pad, as a foundation upon which we can organize all African people across the country and around the world, brothers and sisters. The Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy slash Team Pan-African Headquarters. The Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy slash Team Pan-African Headquarters. The Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy slash Team Pan-African Headquarters will be the Taj Mahal of Black Power. It will be the <laughs> Mecca of Pan-Africanism. It will be the Kemet of all think tanks. It will be the epitome of community organizing. And the beauty, brothers and sisters, the beauty, the whole block belongs to us. The whole block belongs to us. We're going to call that Ifa Tunde Boulevard. We're going to call that Black Power Broadway. We're going to call that Prince Ifa Tunde Avenue. That's what we're going to call that. Brothers and sisters, this is all uh, in his mind. None of this is real. I'm going to put up a poll for what was Umar's craziest rant. I got Seti, Lord Jamar, the Zora, Tasha K on here. I can add one more. You guys got any ideas? Let me know in the chat room. Cook or chat undefeated.
Delaware State University and University of Maryland <laughs> Eastern Flash. Shore. I'm still if you are a student at Delaware State University <laughs> yeah. or the University of Maryland Eastern Shore, if you are a student at Delaware State University or the University of Maryland Eastern Shore, uh, Signa says he he'll never sit down with the guys from Too Strong Channel either. Yeah, I'm, I'm not uh, familiar uh, with uh, uh, Too Strong uh, Too Strong Channel, uh, but you know there are more people who have been speaking out about Umar. And when he goes and does interviews or when he does, he sits down with people, then they, rarely do they bring, even bring up the school or FDMG. He probably tells me in advance, don't bring this up. Don't question me about the money, this kind of thing, you know. Uh, but the difference is that with Lord Jamar, Lord Jamar actually brought it up and you see how Umar, how he reacted. So this is this is the thing. There are people who may enjoy Umar when he talks about different topics. And, and I get it. If you guys enjoy that kind of stuff, it's not my cup of tea, but if people enjoy it. But when it comes to this school, this is nothing more than a long con. And the thing is that Umar knows what he's doing. And people should ask the critical question in terms of integrity. What type of man does that? Is he a man of integrity or, or, or a man who is not, a, you know, the criminal minded? Let's throw it that way. Okay. Well, if he's a person, a man of, of criminal minded, he's criminal minded and he's he doesn't have integrity. Why would you listen to anything that he has to say? And that's 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 how my approach. If if a person doesn't have integrity, if they have a poor character, I don't care what you say. Don't make me no different what you're saying. You got to live what you're talking about. And that's not what Umar does. He tells black people what they need to be doing, but he doesn't abide to those rules. See, he tell y'all y'all can't uh, uh, wear uh, designer clothes, or you all can't have uh, sports attire, and all, but he'll wear it. See, no, you, if you're going to talk the talk, you need to walk the walk. Otherwise, I don't want to hear it. Yeah, but Umar, he's not going to go on any channel that's going to uh, uh, question him. Question him. In fact, there are people that'll have him on, and they know better. They know that I'm not going to question him about that because I want to get him on here to get the views and get the likes. And so they don't even bring it up. Or if they bring it up, it's just in passing, and they may even say something positive about it. They themselves may say something positive. Oh, that's a great idea. But but they're not going to question him about the the facts of this quote unquote case because it is a case where I look at it. <laughs> okay, thanks everyone for the super chat. Money says Vlad TV been talking about Umar Lady. Yes, yeah, because Umar went on to, um, what is uh, DJ? Not Envy DJ whatever his name is. I can't remember his name. I don't even know if he's a DJ, but he went on there and was talking crazy with Ish on there and all the, the, those people. I'm sorry, I lost. Can't remember the guy's name. In his podcast, real popular. But when he was on there, he was talking trash about Vlad TV, and so then Vlad TV, he's been taking shots at Umar ever since. Okay, but Vlad TV had Umar on there. He had Jay Morrison on there too. I think he had Polite on there. Did he have Polite on? No, he did. He think he had Polite on there. Anyway, uh, thanks, money. Thanks, Sigmund, and thanks, gamer guy, and also thanks, uh, Tata, for the super chat. Okay, here we go. Getting yeah yeah Joe Button me. I want to yeah he was on Joe Button talking crazy about Vlad and then that's why Vlad been going back at him that, that's what's been going on come to Dell State and I'm going to come to the University of Maryland Eastern Shore and start organizing the college students back in the 1960s most of our movements were led and organized on the college campus I want to see if we have any unapologetically African students at Dell State I need to find out if we have any unapologetically African students at the University of Maryland Eastern Shore and Howard University and Coppin State and Bowie State and Morgan State, you are in the mid-Atlantic area. So all the HBCUs of DC and Maryland and Delaware, it's time to organize. It's time <laughs> to organize. Mid-Atlantic Movement, Inc. Man, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, okay. Organize to my beautiful black sisters. <laughs> wow. I love you. I love you. Here we go, here we but go. But you cannot be an officer in this movement you cannot be an official in this movement you cannot be a part of my inner circle if you're here it's process i just want to call it like i see it you can belong to the movement you can participate in the movement you can attend the activities you can belong to the movement you can participate in the movement you can attend the events but you cannot be an officer you cannot have an official capacity if you're not happy to be nappy if you are not happy to be nappy yeah, but he sure was dealing with that stripper with the blonde weave. You said, I mean, he has standards for black people that he doesn't keep for himself. Happy black woman, I don't care how yeah, conscious know. you say you are. As long as you still want to look like a white woman, you cannot represent the movement. Cut the damn hair off now. I got some clippers. If you want, I will come to your house. 
Dr. Umar will come to your house and shave you. If there's a black woman in the mid-Atlantic Marcus Garvey movement of Team Pan-African, hashtag MGMA. If you're ready to go natural, Dr. Umar will come to your house and shave you. I'll give you a Dr. Umar special. I give you a no Philly Caesar. All you got to do, Doc, I'm in Maryland. I've been weaving my whole life. I'm ready to go natural, Doc. Come and cut it off. Take it down to your level. Take it down to your level. Let me bust some waves like you, Doc. Sisters, I will come and bald you myself. And <laughs> he way out of line. <laughs> he said he's going to have some, some uh, what do you say? <laughs> he's going to have some curls like me. That's what he said. Who are you tripping? He be do to get the, uh, the do-rag, too. I have a video of him with do-rags on. Trying to get that thing pressed down. <laughs> he, he's trying to get that them things... <laughs> Get the, get them follicles pressed down. <laughs> you want a permanent press on that? All right. The name of Black Power. Let me give you a Black Power <laughs> Caesar to all the black women. We talk in Maryland, which includes tripping. D.C. We talk in Delaware. We talk in New Jersey. We talk in New York. Yeah, he, he, we talk in Pennsylvania. We talk in Connecticut. Mommy. Those are, and, and D.C. is included with Maryland. Those are the six states that make up the Marcus Garvey Mid-Atlantic Movement. I want to organize those six states first. New York City, he you helped to make me nothing. who I am. New York City, you helped to make me who I am. New York City, you helped to make me who I am. And just like Marcus Garvey, just like Marcus Garvey, yeah, he who is. incorporated he the crazy. Black Star Line in Delaware in 1919, just like Marcus Garvey, who incorporated the Black Star Line Steamship Company in Delaware in 1919, he went to New York City to announce and launch the Black Star Line. 100 years later, his number one disciple, Prince Ifa Tunde, is doing the same thing. We got the school in Delaware yeah, 2019, really and is. now I'm going yep. to the Bronx to launch it. <laughs> I'm coming to the Bronx. I'm coming to the Bronx, so I want my Brooklyn people in the house. I want I my know, Queens no, in the house. Is, I want my good, This is a good point too, because Umar sense of entitlement. He think he can just show up, or you know, he just gonna cut your hair off like he so he just controls things. He can just touch whatever he wants. He cut your hair off, whatever. He's sick. Long Island, my Staten Island. I want my Harlem people in the Bronx because New York must take a leading role. In the Marcus Garvey Mid Atlantic movement, I'm not talking no YouTube intellectual yeah, I, masturbation. I know you said, Cam. If you are a YouTube addict, you are no good to me because you don't. What? Are you talking about? Are you talking about me, Umar? I'm not on here that often. I wish I'd be on there more. I'm, I'm going to be on here more now, but I'll be talking about different topics, okay? Just to be clear about everybody because I put this computer. I just got to get a. The thing is, my son, he likes to work on music and he, this computer has all that stuff. So I might, I might just get a laptop to stream from up here. Uh, or I'll get one and put put the laptop down there and put all the programs on there so he can do his music down there. I'll figure it out. Uh, Sigma says Umar does have a good vision though. He just ex executed, yeah. But but the the vision is uh, childlike. There's no sense of implementation or awareness of everything that goes into doing what he's he, he's he's imagining. That's the thing. There's nothing wrong with that. The, the with having the imagination, but there is something wrong with having an imagination, selling it selling the dream because that's really all it is at, at this point and then collecting millions of dollars under the, the with people believing that you're going to bring this into fruition when you have you don't even have the capacity to see Umar doesn't have the ability he has no organization skills i mean he'll get on here and we, we covered this last week a woman called into one of his his uh parent conference shows and the first thing he does is starts asking her to do stuff for him in, in another state that he's supposed to be traveling to. I don't know whatever came of that, but the point is that he didn't even have the faculty within himself to say, you know what, let me go ahead and get on Google and let me do a Google search to find this. Let me go find a place to eat. Let me go find a place to get these sign made, made et cetera. He, ha he has no organization skills. He doesn't have the, um, what is the word? The ambition needed to pull something off like this. See? And that in and of itself is not a bad thing, but if you collect millions of dollars and you keep doing it and there's no real progress and you keep doing it and then you know that it's nothing more than a scam at the end, at he, he knew that there's something wrong with that, you see? So so you're right, it, it, it's, a, it's a great vision and there's other who people who have, black people who've had the vision and they've actually created schools, that that's happened. 
But Umar uh, doesn't have the ability to, to make things a reality. Same thing with all the different things he's saying he's going to do, the NIBPA and all this other stuff. That that's And it gets crazier, too, in, in this video. But none of it is executed. I remember we put together a list, and I, and I, I can actually put up with evidence in a PowerPoint. But there was over 100, maybe 200 things that he said he was going to do inside this video. And, I, and, and when we reviewed it, I think a couple of years ago, he had only accomplished like maybe four of those 200, something like that. It just goes to show you a lot of this is just it's it's like uh, having an idea, using your imagination, but not having the the ability to to bring anything into reality. And that's Umar. Uh, Black Dot once called it head movies, and it is true that a lot of this is just head movies that Umar comes up with. It's it's fantastic, you know the the types of things that he comes up with. A lot of it is is like sci-fi too. It's like this is great, but in terms of him implementing it and turning it into a reality, that's that's where everything stops. But the idea of him collecting millions of dollars while he's doing this and people believing that he's going to do these things, and then he and then him not doing these things, no accountability. There's something wrong with that. There's definitely something wrong with that. It'd be different if if he didn't know and he wasn't aware, but he knows what he's doing. Uh, I don't agree with all the curriculum, though. Well, the thing is that uh, Umar has expressed a curriculum, aspects of a curriculum, but that nothing is is uh, uh, clear, uh, clearly defined. You know, he'll say something like, "Yeah, we're going to have," and he calls it scientists, sciences. We're going to have agricultural science and agronomical science and all the different things. Yeah, but what does that mean exactly? And what does that look like as a curriculum? He doesn't have that after five years. He still didn't have a curriculum after five years. He has ideas. See, yeah, but he doesn't have anything that's been codified, and that's I think that's one of the big problems with Umar, you know. And he knows that he doesn't have any organization skills, so why keep collecting money for a school that doesn't exist? Well, it's a scam. See, all right. Uh, and let me say this there are things that Umar has said that I was like, Oh, I agree with that, but then there's a, most of the stuff he says, I'm like, No, nah, uh -uh. this is that's a bunch of bull job. Okay, but I always give him credit when credit is due. I do my best to do that. But he, at this point, he's just lying to get money. <laughs> That's all it is. Thanks, Sigmund, for the super chat. And also, thanks, uh, money uh, uh, as well. Okay, let's go. Want to do no work. You just want to sit on YouTube. Them Negroes ain't working. They not building nothing. They a bunch of frauds. They never was serious. Boy, Umar, you're the one who's defrauded. And you're not building anything either. Uh, we have a, a, a poll up. What was Umar's craziest rant? SETI is at 55%. I expected that. Lord Jamar is at 16%. Ta Zora Tasha K is at 7%. And the Tariq Nasheed Boyce Watkins is at 22%. If you haven't voted yet, please go ahead and get your vote in now. All right. We're going to go for another 10 minutes and then we'll be, be back uh, tomorrow to finish up with this video. What we'll do is we'll just start right into where we, where we stop here. I won't do an introduction. And we'll be able to finish uh, up this video uh, with uh, fairly quickly tomorrow. And then we'll do the second video tomorrow, too, which is, is short. I think that's like maybe 12 minutes long. Here we go. This is the movement. This is it. If and, and thank you all, too. Thank you all for tuning on in. I, I appreciate it. I want to cook rest chat. You all are undefeated. I appreciate it. Thank you for all the super chats. I also have cash app uh, links and PayPal links in the description of this video. If you want to do something for black folks and you serious, come to Team Pan-African. Come to Team Pan-African. It's time to get started. If you want to work at the school, get them resumes in. You want to work at the school, get those resumes in. Now, let me He's clarify something, brothers and sisters. I need to say something that's very important now. I need to say something that is very important now. Well, first of all, don't go packing up, moving to Delaware, expecting a job because you ain't got one yet. I want to be clear. I don't want you moving to Delaware because you say, well, you know what? I'm going to work at the school. Uh-uh. You don't choose me. I choose you. You don't choose wow. me, I choose you. Don't do that. Now, it's if you're moving to Delaware because you want to be a part of the movement, <laughs> thanks, 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 move man. to Delaware. But if you're moving to Delaware because you're expecting a, a particular <laughs> official capacity within this movement, don't do that. Yeah, but his dad thought he was too. His dad, because his dad did reference. I, I knew what his dad was saying. He, he was saying, I thought something was wrong with you. And he was speaking to uh, Umar's mental illness. And I have a sense that his, his family knows more about Umar's mental illness and his volatility uh, than they have let on, including his father. And I think they all know that because I don't want you to become a hater if you don't get what you want. If you're looking for official capacity, wait until you get it, if you get it. But if you just want to be part of the movement, then come on down because it's about to go down. It's about to go down, brothers and sisters. This is it. 16, 19, 2019. We owe it mm -hmm. to our ancestors. We owe it to our people. We owe it to Trayvon Martin. We owe it to Sandra Bland. We owe it to Tamir we Rice. Go. We owe it to Walter Scott, Freddie Gray. We owe it to our ancestors 400 years. And it's time to take the, the psychological shackles off. And we're going to do that, brothers and sisters. And let me say, once we... He ain't done nothing in five years. It's crazy. Repaired this building and restored this building. 
It's brand new on the inside. We got to restore it because it was. That's such a bold faced lie. It's brand. Did you guys hear what he just said? He said it's brand new on the inside. Then he says we got to restore it. Which one is it? Expecting a, a particular official capacity within this movement. Don't do that because I don't want you to become a hater if you don't get what you want. If you're looking for official capacity, wait until you get it, if you get it. But if you just want to be part of the movement, then come on down because it's about to go down. It's about to go down, brothers and sisters. This is it. 16, 19, 2019, we owe it to our ancestors. We owe it to our people. We owe it to Trayvon Martin. We owe it to Sandra Bland. We owe it to Tamir Rice. We owe it to Walter Scott, Freddie Gray. We owe it to our ancestors 400 years. And it's time to take the, the psychological shackles off. And we're going to do that, brothers and sisters. And let me say, once we repair this building and restore this building, it's brand new on the inside. We got to restore it because it was damaged. But brothers and sisters, modern. We don't have to worry about asbestos. We don't have to worry about lead paint. We don't have to worry about asbestos. We don't have to worry about lead paint. Brothers and sisters, the movement is going down now. I can't. All right, let me stop it right there. This is at the 55 minute mark. I'm going to tomorrow. We're going to come back and, and we'll get back into this. But, I, but notice how he says, I want to pull up a receipt and then we'll close out. Uh, no, this isn't the video where he flipped the camera. No, not not this one. Um, that occurred after this because he was saying he was going to be moving to Wilmington. OK, so it was after he had acquired these abandoned buildings. But but notice how he says uh, we don't have to worry about lead paint. We don't have to worry about asbestos. I like to pull up a document and let me I'm gonna rewind this. I'll, I'll be right back uh, and I'll pull up this document and I just want to read through it and we're going to be done for a day. But we're going to pick we're going to pick back up right here because he said that. Uh, you know, uh, they're in good shape. The buildings are in good shape tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to replay that. And then I'm going to pull up a receipt that shows the condition, um, of FDMG. No, there was no electricity on at that time. Um, and I think that'd be relevant, but I want to stick with this thing real quick. Cause we, we we're going to go for another seven minutes here. Thank you all so much uh, for, for tuning in and for your patience as well. Let me pull up this receipt right here. Uh, I've covered it in the past. I think that it's uh, one of the most, one of the more important documents uh, that people should consider when it comes to um, this uh, FDMG school scam. Let me pull this up right here. Let me do a screen share, and I'm gonna zoom in so that everyone can see uh, better as well. And this will, this will probably take about five minutes. It'll give us a couple of minutes just to close out and, and wind down. So here is a screen share right here. There is no audio for this. This is just, it's a PDF uh, file. So this right here is the Northeast Brandywine Riverfront U.S. EPA Environmental Protection Agency Brownfields Area Wide Plan. Brownfield is, is any site wherein there's toxic, toxins either on the surface. Uh, the toxins can actually be um, in the water. It can be uh, inside of a building like lead paint. Uh, it could be spilled oil. Okay. It could be in the groundwater. It could be under in the soil. Okay. And there are toxic substances that are, un, that uh, are uh, a danger to humans. Okay. It could be dangerous to animals too. But, but the point is that the EPA, the, it's a government agency, the environmental protection agency, and they did a, a brownfield area wide plan. Okay. And this is, and look at the date, April of 2019. Now, this whole uh, uh, report, they had already done uh, started working on this prior to Umar acquiring these abandoned buildings. OK, just to be clear about that. But the report didn't come out. This particular report, because there's other ones, too, didn't come out until April 2019. Understand that Wilmington, Delaware was a, an industrial town. OK, it was an industrial town. In fact, there is a quarry lake um, on the other side of the fence of FDMG. And uh, that's where they used to dig out. I can't remember what the, what the what it was that they was digging out, but what they ended up doing was filling it in with water. Okay, that's a problem in and of itself. In fact, there's there's children who actually died in that lake because uh, they they didn't have it gated. They ended up putting up a gate to keep uh, children out of there. But let, let's just I just there's a couple things I want to look at uh, here, and let me just scroll down here, and you guys are going to see very soon. Okay, let, let me just read this right here. Is it going to? Oh, it's not going to let me. Well, I, I get it would allow me to do the function, but just if you can't see it, I'll, I'll read it to you. 
says four catalyst brownfield sites were the focus of this reuse planning effort. And through the AWP uh, planning process, additional smaller scale potential brownfield sites were identified. Okay, these are sites where there's toxic substances on there. Now, a brownfield site is one thing, but a brownfield catalyst site is, is like another level. Okay. The four catalyst brownfield sites are the Diamond State Salvage Site, the Wilmington Maintenance Yard. Okay, you guys see in that top picture up there, you see up there that, that that's that uh, we had showed it. I showed it earlier. That's that uh, water tower uh, by the uh, near the. Um, uh, what was it? Not a jail, but whatever it was we had showed it earlier. Then the form, former Wiley Cork site. And then look at this right here. The Moyer School property. This is a brownfield catalyst site. Y'all seeing this hit the one. Let me let me do this. I want people to see it. Maybe go allow it'll let me zoom in, but I gotta have it this way. It's okay. That's fine. I just can't have it full screen. Let me pull it back up. Look at that. These were out of all the those that of that area of uh four, there were four specific. Uh, buildings or sites that were classified as brownfield catalyst site and look at one of those sites was the Moyer school property it actually looked better here than it did does now in 2024 the Moyer school property let me read this to y'all real quick this complex of buildings is located on two separate parcels divided by 17th street the school is closed and the buildings are vacant boarded up and blighted they are still to this day Portions of the property were previously owned by, look at this, Hercules Inc., a chemical business, which included the largest of the three buildings. Okay, that would be, see how they're saying three buildings? Are they saying four? No, they're saying three, which is accurate, but Umar says four because he has to oversell. He's a scammer. That's what they do, it, which includes the largest of the three buildings. Okay, here it says three, three buildings, not four, Umar. Although there are records of underground storage tank removal occurring on the site in 1991, that's where they stored the chemicals. There are, and that's why there is no, uh, uh, there is no basement in, in these these uh, trap bandos because because before there were uh, these large tanks. I actually did research too into uh, um, to Hercules Inc. You guys would be amazed at the type of stuff that they were create they were making out there. This whole area though, it was industrial, and there's a lot of issues with toxic substances, toxic spills in, in buildings, lead paint, asbestos, uh, in the soil, in the water, et cetera. Uh, there are no other records regarding environmental conditions. You see this? So when Umar said that the, we don't have to deal with asbestos, he doesn't know that. The EPA doesn't even know that. What you talking about, Craig? Think about this for a moment. If the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, comes out and they classify the Moyer School, Pro Moyer School property as a brownfield catalyst site, not just a brownfield, but a brownfield catalyst site, they go in and they, and this is, again, this is taking place while, while Umar is trying to negotiate. This, this report comes out in April. He purchased properties in February of 2019. This report comes out in April of 2019, but they had already been up there doing this. This is when the, paper, the, the, the final paper got uh, put, put to the public, but they had already done all their inspections. Ooh, I, I wonder if Umar knew about this. I'm sure the K-12 knew about this. <laughs> they said, let me go ahead. Let's go ahead and trick this guy, trick this property off on this guy. Clown. But think about this. As the EPA goes up, there's a government agency, and they conclude that there are no other records regarding environmental conditions. How can Umar say that they don't? there's no asbestos, there's no lead paint or anything of that nature? He doesn't know that. It says the AWP process uh, uh, proposes one possible option, which included the acquisition of the Moore School by the Boys and Girls Club, which is right next door. That long term proposal, it's a long term plan, included raising the existing buildings for a new outdoor recreational facility associated with the club, giving them one continuous campus. So what they're suggesting when they said raising the existing buildings because they are Brownfield Callis sites. They're saying tear them down. This is what the government agency was telling the city of Wilmington. Tear these buildings down because they're blighted, because they're uh, hazardous, et cetera. And let's turn this area into a new outdoor recreational facility associated with the, with the club. 
meaning the Boys and Girls Club. So it would have given the Boys and uh, Girls Club more land to operate and provide services for the black children and other children in that area. Instead, Umar comes through. He snatches up these properties thinking that he's getting a good deal. But th these these are toxic, uh, toxic. It's in the, their brownfield callus sites. And then what it what takes place now for five years, he's held on to these properties, hasn't provided not one service to the community out there, hasn't provided any kind of services to the black children out there. Where by this time, you best believe that these buildings would have been torn down and a an outdoor recreational facility would have been built for those black children out there. And they would have been benefiting from it for years now. But instead, Umar comes in and, and for the last five years holds on to the property with no real progress, continue to collect money. That's wrong. Now, y'all see. That's wrong. He said he, he's going to help the people out there. He's going to help educate them, but he's taking away from the, the Boys and Girls Club opportunity to provide more services to these black children up over there, other children too. That's wrong. And then it says in mid-March of 2019, it came to the attention of the city that the ownership of this site recently changed. Who would that be? Umar. Due to this to, due to this recent property transfer, coordination with the new property owner is not reflected as part of the area wide plan. No communication with the new property owner, Umar Johnson, has occurred regarding their intentions and no formal plans have been submitted to the city for the property. Any new plans for this property can be incorporated into future development. And we do uh, uh, not uh, do note that this is a vision plan and nothing is set in stone as to what may actually happen with any uh, of the ideas expressed through this lengthy, lengthy planning process. Yeah, this pay, this uh, report is 89 pages long. And I just want to outline uh, what they said about these abandoned buildings in Wilmington that Umar said. What did he say to close out? Let's go back and then we're going to be done. Let's close out shackles Real. off and we're going to do that brothers and sisters Listen and let me say said. once we repair this building and restore this building is brand new on the inside we got to restore it because it was damaged but brothers and sisters modern we don't have to how is it brand new what did he say it don't even make sense he says that it was damaged but then he says this he didn't say brand new, did he? He said something. I mean, in good condition, whatever it was. Let me, let me go back one, one more time. It's going back. down now. I can't say everything on this on this internet. That's why you need to come to the Bronx. I will have a question and answer session at the Bronx lecture. I will have a question and answer session at the Connecticut answer. Excuse me, at the Connecticut lecture. If you, you have direct questions, if you have, then come on down logical shackles off and we're going we to go. do that brothers and sisters and let me say once we repair this building and restore this building it's brand new on the inside oh he did say brand new on the inside we're gonna come back to this tomorrow man we got to restore it because it was damaged but brothers and sisters if it's damaged how is it brand new on the inside modern we don't have to worry about asbestos we don't have to worry about <laughs> lead God. paint. we don't have to worry about asbestos <laughs> we don't have to worry about lead paint brothers and sisters the you see this guy, but the EPA said that these things need to be burnt, need to be uh, torn down, and they don't know what's taking place in anyway. All right, okay. <laughs> Thank you all so much. So tomorrow we're going to pick up right there. We're already halfway through this video, and we'll get right into it. So it, it's, it's going to be about an hour more of that video, and then we'll play the second video where Umar is inside of these trap buildings, walking around. Okay, uh, and then that'll be our coverage for the five year anniversary. It's, it's just amazing. Uh, time has, has uh, gone by so quickly. Um, and uh, for you, Umar Johnson followers, any of you guys, if you've gotten to this point, I just want to reiterate. There's nothing wrong with, with uh, believing in, in someone. But you have to believe in the right person. The other thing is that if you're going to believe in someone, you, you have to do your due diligence and, and make sure that they're worthy of your belief and that they're worthy of your support. When it comes to this school scam that has been going on for 14 years now, and he's been sitting on these abandoned buildings now for five years with no end in sight, you have to come to the conclusion, being rational, okay, thinking critically, and being honest too. You have to come to the conclusion that this is not happening. There will be no school. So the next critical question is, 
if there will be no school, why is he still asking for money? Which brings me to the point that it's a long con. It's nothing more than a money grab. It's a scam. And it's been going on now for 14 years. Okay. At some point, we have to come to the realization of these truths, these facts, and then make the appropriate decision. If after that, you can say, okay, I'll still support him. Okay, fine. But I have to do my duty, my civic duty, to at least provide you all with the evidence, hopefully the proof. Okay, based you, it's up to you. All right, I'll provide the receipts and you decide. Okay. I uh, thank you all so much for tuning on in. Uh, Vampire in Brooklyn living in that. <laughs> that was the movie, though. <laughs> Angela Bassett was in that and uh, Eddie Murphy. That was that was an old school movie. That was a good one, though. Well, it, it was okay. <laughs> all right. And it building is horrible. Uh, thanks, money, for the uh, super chat. Uh, and then Sigma says, you know that humans cannot consume water from the water fountains in the buildings. We, yeah, uh, this is another thing that we outlined. In fact, when I don't know if it, it will appear in those videos, but we'll see tomorrow. But you guys know and this will be the last point. We'll be done. You guys know that. Um, there's a water fountain. You guys know that they're there. You guys realize there's no uh, cafeteria facility in those buildings. There's no cap. I don't know. What is this noise out here? I'm thinking it's a snow thing, but there's no snow out there. Uh, anyway, um, there's a water fountain in this one hallway. And it's like and you go walk down this hallway and it's like into the wall. And, you you know, like that, you got to walk into it a little bit. And there's a water fountain. And then I, I remember we were watching these videos years ago and there were these signs on there. And everyone was wondering, what was these signs saying? And uh, from what I remember, the person who figured out was make a change. These signs were warning people not to drink the water because the water was contaminated. Which 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 uh, makes sense based upon the EPA report. OK, again, you had by, by that time you had this building sitting for many years. Who knows what's inside of the pipe work? Who knows what type of pipe works? Uh, the pipes are broken or whatever. And what type of back stuff's coming back up in it? Ain't no telling. But but those signs were very uh they weren't clear, but but they, they were telling because it was basically a notice. And it's like uh, telling people and warning people not to drink the water. OK, that in and of itself, those signs were there uh, when Umar first inspected those buildings two years prior in 2017. So even that for him to say we don't have to worry about asbestos, we don't have to worry about lead paint. Well, you know, you got to worry about that water. He knows that he didn't mention that. See. Again, this guy, he he, uh, he lies so much and he really oversold this this purchase of these Wilmington properties, which were um, classified as brownfield catalyst sites by the Environmental uh, Protection Agency, which is a government agency. And again, what they suggested that the city do is to tear those buildings down. And instead, Umar purchased them and he's been sitting on them for five years. And today is the five year anniversary. Ain't no school. Ain't no school. And I'm going to tell you, there will never be no school. How many dollars for nothing? <laughs> OK, now, I, I'm going to I'll propose that Umar is over two point five million dollars. OK, based on on what he said in the past and projections, he's, he's well over two point five million dollars. And that's more than enough to get something started. But he hasn't done anything. OK. All right. I hope you all enjoyed the show. If you enjoy the show, please hit the like button as you exit the building. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll start early, too. We'll just get through things, run real quick. Uh, and get through uh, this video, the second half of this video, and then we'll cover the other video and we'll be done with this particular uh, coverage of the um, five year anniversary. I'm going to be doing a video for members dealing with the alien stuff that Umar was talking about. At some point, we'll address it uh, publicly for everyone, but I'll, I'll have that up tomorrow for everyone. OK, for you, for you members. Thanks, everyone inside the cooker chat. Thanks to everyone who sent in uh, super chats, uh, cash apps and PayPal. You guys bless me uh, so much today. I really do appreciate it. Uh, trust me, I really do. I don't take it for granted. Uh, and uh, now they have things set up up here. Uh, I'm going to be live streaming more up here. At times, I'll, I'll live stream uh, downstairs, too. But uh, this gives me more freedom to live stream. And I'll be doing other topics, too, okay, besides Umar. Uh, again, thank you all so much. Everyone inside the Cook Chat, you guys were undefeated. Thanks to the mods for handling the business as well. Hope you all enjoyed the show. And as we always do. No, we start from the beginning. Here we go. All right. Make sure y'all hit the like button. Thank you all so much for tuning on in. I hope y'all enjoy this show. We'll be back tomorrow. The first chat is empty. MG is coming. FDMG is coming. FDMG is coming. It's coming. 
MG is coming FD MG is coming FD MG is coming is coming It's 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 coming, it's coming, oh, it's coming, coming, FDMG is coming, FDMG is coming, thought this person now, the T be twerking, it's twerking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Thank you all so much for tuning on in. Someone had asked who I'm not taking with the Super Bowl. Well, I'm going to go with the Kansas City Chiefs. So I'd like to see uh, y'all boy win another championship. But we'll see what happens. Okay. I don't really watch uh, football. I watch uh, basketball from time to time. Okay. Love y'all. Enjoy the rest of the evening. I'll talk to y'all. So thank y'all so much. Okay. I really appreciate it. I, I enjoyed our time and I feel good. I appreciate it. I feel I was, was feeling under the weather, but I, I, I'm, I'm about to go out to the club. <laughs> I'm about, I'm, about, I'm about to go to Magic City. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Okay, love y'all. Y'all take care. Peace.